Welcome everyone. This is the ICFC week four. This is just the preseason, just the preseason. But this is week four of the ICFC. Welcome. My name is Eternal Dragon, and I'm joined by uh, an amazing couple of guests that we're gonna have, bringing you some good high-level EU competitive Tekken for the fourth week in a row. It's been really good so far. We got Abominable and Danarai. So how how are you guys doing, man? Abominable. It's been a while since we've seen you on the scene. Good to have you back, man. How you been? Dude, what are you doing up there? Get down! Normally, that, you might be the other side. I knew you'd get big boots. I knew, I knew you'd get big boots. I'm very good, thank you. What are you talking about? Just a preseason. Just a preseason. This is one of the biggest fights ever had to happen in December. This is the biggest rumble to happen two days before Christmas that I've ever known about. I just can't wait. ICFC has been a really great addition to the end of the year online gaming tournaments, and I just can't wait to see what happens. Dan, you're on. It's uh, it's going to be a bit mad. I mean, the first game that we've got coming up is somebody who I've known for a while, Mr. Fergus himself, and that is just going to set the tone for the entire day, the entire evening, the entire wherever you are. Um, of course, if you know much about me, if you don't, I'm more of a Soul Calibur commentator. However, I've been dabbling in some Tekken, and the fact that there is over 100 people signed up for this and for the other preseason tournaments just means that it's going to be insane, and I absolutely can't wait to see it. Eternal Dragon, how are you feeling about today, man? Absolutely, you're right. Consistently, after the first initial week, where everyone was just like, oh, what's this new thing? A hundred consistently. It's been amazing, and the fact that it's really shown um, good representation of EU, because we've had winners from all different regions. We had Eddie, who won the first week. He was from the UK. We had Kalak, who won last week from France, and we had the Emperor from Sweden, who won the second one. So it's good to see we're getting a lot of character representation, we're getting a lot of region representation, and we're getting to see players that maybe couldn't have traveled to their offline scenes, or, you know, maybe because of funds, now able to join consistent weeklies um, to get their name out there and just kind of show who they, who they, what they're made of. So it's great to see this. So I can't wait. And guys, we actually have a match arena, don't we? We oh, do, indeed. indeed, we I do. I can't believe you passed this mouthful to us, so please do <laughs> hit the Match Arena link and type in ICFCEUPRE4. And Daniel Wright, it's your turn to say that next time. Please do uh, <laughs> enter that code. It's a free 50 cent donation. Please do chip in for the players. They, they all deserve it. They all put on a great show every week and spend a lot of their evenings and days and nights practicing to put on a good show for you guys. So, um, just a very quick thing: the Macharinos. Is it does it roll over to the rest of the tournaments, or is this Macharino part going to be going to the winner of this preseason tournament? So, this Macharino will be going to everyone um, in this tournament. So, mm -hmm. it doesn't roll over. Each one is uh, its own uh, Macharino pot for the player. So, definitely, you want to try and get it as high as you can for this tournament and you can always see the players who start making top eight their names start to appear at the top of the match arena do donation just like oh i'm gonna get money i'm gonna actually start doing it now but guys don't wait for that actually start doing it before um but yeah that's that's right then all right it's it's all about each individual week and mm -hmm. the fact that this is a pre-season it's quite amazing to see how everyone's kind of got on board with it like abominable it's been crazy to see how from the initial week of this sort of lull now it's just exploded Totally exploded. And the thing I love about this is that, yeah, okay, COVID, we, we, we've been there, we've done this rodeo many times, but we're now starting to see dream matchups. Matchups that you thought you'd only get to see maybe once a year if you're lucky, if a tournament organizer manages to put your two favorite players against each other. We're seeing godlike matchups week in, week out, and we're seeing amazing players go up against other amazing players just in the first round of this tournament. It is so stacked. Mm, and and then the, amount, the amount of people in the bracket at the moment you are almost guaranteed to have a completely stacked tournament. And every game that you're going to see on stream today is going to be insane. I mean, look at this. You've got Fergus coming up first, a man who kind of needs no introduction. Somebody who is around the Tekken scene, has been a part of the Tekken scene uh, since TTT2, uh, played a lot of Kunimitsu and is incredibly happy that she's back now. I mean, a lot of his streams have been about that. And then we have Josie. So a character that I've, uh, I encountered a lot when I'm playing Tekken at the moment. Um, <laughs> somebody that's relatively new to the game coming up against the Josie um, is not the most fun experience in the world. She is an incredible character, but you know, if there's a game that I want to see more than this one, it's going to have to be even hyper than what I'm going to see at the moment. 
Nice. The good thing is, with DWIP, like, there's been quite a few players who play purely offline who have finally succumbed to going online. We've seen that a lot with the Pakistani scene. Don't trust that rank. We don't know how good this guy is going to be, and you know Fergus is going to test him. Absolutely. Good to see Fergus, who actually has trained my Oscar, because he uses a lot of characters, and he's actually playing a very more solid game. Great wall position there. He's got the breaker wall behind. Just kind of poke him away to death. Textbook finish there from Fergus. He'll like how he started off there. He was getting his pokes in, managed to work his way to the wall, and here we go again. He's catching him again. Yeah. See, the crouch dash. Low. Tries to get with the on back elbow. Oh, he catched him. Ooh, are we going to see Clumber video? Not quite. Fluffed it. Nice low parry there. Now will Fergus get the wall? Very so awkward. This this stage is infamous because, of course, you can get those complete stage carries uh, from breaking every single wall until you get to the outside. Is every character capable of that or, are there, or is it just a few? Uh, it's more than just a few, but not every character can do it. I mean, even if you, you have a character that um, can't carry all the way, if you play King, for example, you still get insane Oki. You can go for multiple ground throws. There are so many options that those walls uh, offer. And that, those are the kind of combo videos I like to see now, not the, the huge carry, because in this season, I mean, carry isn't isn't new to any character, but you can do some crazy setups. Absolutely. Fergus, um, two rounds up now. Just con consistent, just, you know, to back away. Doesn't really need to do much to commit. Nice. Doesn't commit with a punish there. But he's back to the wall. No, he's not falling for this time. Good interrupt and oh, excellent. Good use of the one well, moves for Oscar because he had the wall splat to the left and mm. got the conversion off that as well. So good solid round from Fergus starting off. Well, yeah, I, yeah, I like to see. I like to see players, um, really top players, play some the, some first round games because I feel that's something that I can struggle with. Sometimes I feel like I play at my best later in the tournament versus the better players. But in those first rounds where you don't know your opponent. I feel you can slip up on on banana skins everywhere. That everyone's good these days. We're late in the game of Tekken, so watching someone approach someone who may be a stranger and feed him out and work him out, I find that really interesting. Fergus did it so well. He just poked, played very slow, and the rounds actually looked kind of even. But Fergus would always make sure he closed them out. Yeah, you could really tell at the uh, at the end of that third round, Fergus seemed to be on the back foot, getting pushed against the wall. But that's the kind of composure that you kind of expect from a top competitor, understanding that you need to bide your time. And as soon as you see that opening, you smack him against the wall and then you take that 3-0. And uh, watching Fergus at the moment, I can tell that he's going to be a real threat. I mean, just before this, he was streaming and he was saying he can see all of these incredible names entering this tournament. But from that performance, regardless of who his opponent is, I'm excited to see him get through this bracket. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a stacked bracket there as well. And good to see Fergus enters up online tournaments. I know not too keen on it. So it's great to see such a known player up. And we've gone to the Kinder Gym now. So let's see how DWIP deals with um, the solid play from Fergus in this next game. Oh, you've just got to be so scared to come in on Fergus. And he's got a character that part of their game plan is to come in. So is there anything in particular that, uh, that Fergus should be looking out for? Because of course, after a commanding uh, first game, he's going to be feeling himself, the adrenaline's going to be coursing through his body. Is there anything that he should be looking out for against uh, against DWIP that could be, you know, maybe sleeping, uh, slipping in a cheeky low somewhere or a crazy little back sway launch, something like that? Um, I th think he should just be continuing to do what he what he's done before. He knows that um, he's thrown a lot of lows, low pokes, and he's not really being crushed for it at all. Um, DWIP hasn't really done any butterfly edges or hot kicks, so I think he continues until DWIP adjusts and looks at this point like DWIP, ah, maybe he's listening to us <laughs> until he changes because I mean, it's only when you start throwing out the threat of crushing some of the, this, um, these pokes where you're going to make Fergus stop. Nice catch. Let's the full unblockable rock. Absolutely, and he's using a lot of these full crouch mix up to just, there you go, Gaze gets the counter. Look at that. Nice chunk of damage for that low. And now he's just going to start mixing them up because he's really started to put the threat onto him with those full crash mix-ups. And now he's just kind of crumbling now. Oh, I mean, that's very nice. <laughs> that's an easy seven golden letter round. Damn. Hey, Fergus just ran straight through DWIP. That, that was a slaughter. Oh, man. That's true. That duck, that duck wasn't easy, though. I mean, that takes a lot of tra training and practice. I mean, still finishing in the round in that manner. 
That was styling. But I mean, the poke game was what killed him. He was just bleeding him, leading him down. Like more combat than number time. Every single hit was taking damage. It was unbelievable. Yeah, absolutely. Like you, you, and it was good to see where, because he was doing the full crouch mix-ups from early, he started to put the seed in his head. So he was just ducking. DWIP was ducking anyway, just because he was fearful of that. So, and Fergus was also, he was um, ready to just, I'm going to let you kick my legs because I'm not going to actually get, uh, have any fear to duck. So the fact that he was just standing up, you can hit me in the leg, you can hit me in the leg, but I'm going to get these big hits on you. And I can kind of, Throw you off a bit because when someone's not actually ducking, you're not conditioning them, and you're kind of thinking, All right, so he's not ducking, I'm gonna go for this. But that's when he counter hits you, and you see Fergus got a counter hit there, took him to the wall. First game we've seen on stream, Fergus takes it, and it was just a really solid breakdown. So, yes, that is um, first game in the books, and we've got a stack bracket as well coming up here. Wow, we've got names like Chicken Maru's in the bracket, we saw Fergus as well, the Phantom is there. Divine Tricks from Scotland as well, just in this bracket here, Temple Ibis, you know. Won his first match though, excellent, progressing on. Going to be taking on Kalak, who was the winner of last week. So, so, if there's a, so if there's a character that you think you may be seeing more of in this tournament, considering how many people have entered, there's one character that you maybe think you'll be seeing more of or that you want to see less of, considering there may be a top five character, who would that be? You go first, Dragon. I think um, <laughs> Kun Kunimitsu, from being a, one of the DLC characters released that hasn't been like, oh, she's super powered and overbroken um, and broken. We've seen a lot of Kunimitsus, a lot of players who've main characters uh, throughout the series and picked up different ones, obviously. We've seen a lot of Kunimitsu. So these mm. things, ICFCs have actually shown a lot of character. We have Kalak who won with Lily. When does Lily ever win a tournament? especially this stat we had the emperor one of gigas so we're seeing it's hard to predict of what characters you're going to see we're going to see the staples but i don't know if we're going to see the like the fucking runs and the leroy's to be honest i think everyone's shifted away and mm. is either trying out kunimitsu or going to their kind of consistent main so personally i want to see gigas the fact that this guy got shafted and was just neglected and now is kind of the rise of the gigas is i want to see more of, the, of this character and um He's just a, a fun character to watch, and everyone's always rooting for Gigas now, and he's a he's a he's a trick to watch. Yeah, I, I love to watch Gigas. I mean, to answer the question about which character who makes him more, yeah, Kunimitsu. Um, I, I I do think people have moved on from Leroy to a degree, but not so much back from that maybe, just from what I've seen from play, watching players. But I would say that one character that is really do dominant when you look at Western Europe in particular is Bob. There are a lot of, maybe there's not a lot of <laughs> Bob players, but there's a lot of really, really good Bob players. And mm -hmm. they, I mean, and Bob's very, very dominant this season as well. So what, so ever since season four dropped and then the new patch dropped, even people in the caliber scene have been talking about Bob because we've just seen these, these buffs coming in strong for this one character. Uh, so, for of course, the uneducated, if you could just explain in maybe a sentence what it is that Bob does now that he didn't do in season three. Abominable, you should answer this because you know the history of Bob from previous Tekkens. You actually competed in Tekken 6 and, and as well, and Tag 2. Yeah, I got blown up by Bob in Tekken 6. So I can't really help you there, mate. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, honestly, I think, I think the level of pressure that he can apply is um, a lot of Bob players play with pressure anyway, but generally speaking, the le level of pressure you can apply is unbelievable. Um, he's just got a lot more be better options and his offense has changed and people are getting a bit used to the offense they were looking at previously, so it's really mixed things up. And look at this, a nice a gym mirror, a feast for your eyes. Look at this, Tekken 3 style gin, Fireblade versus Roby. I mean, to be fair, this is the best gin costume bar none, and if you think differently, you're wrong, so. Definitely a classic, you can't really beat that. In terms of, we've got a Jin Mirror, you don't really see too much of this. Oh, nice, gets him with the electric. KO. Nice, good stuff, Fight. So, okay, <laughs> I was literally about to say, what is it you should be looking out for in a Jin Mirror? And we just saw it there, that was like double electric and his health is literally almost gone. Um, I mean, this character 
has been a staple from Tekken 3. A character that you could really never do without in a Tekken game. And right now you're kind of seeing why. He's a very fundamental character. He's got a lot of carry, a lot of damage, a lot of mix-up potential. Uh, but is there anything that a Jin could possibly could possibly do more of in order to win in a mirror? Because it seems like, you know, it seems like Fireblade in the beginning absolutely wrecking Roby, but right now Roby seems to be coming back on the offense. Um, it's an interesting question. Like, I think there's two ways to play this. Like, one way, Ooh. obviously, is just to out outplay your opponent, outpoke them, beat them in every <laughs> area of the game. And, mm. and a gin, gin mirror, sometimes it can be the first guy to blink. There, there is a, there's an element of the, you can take big risks with gin if you really want to. You can, and I, I remember watching Blue Majesty versus Fireblade at versus fighting 2018. Where Blue Majesty really demolished him, uh, if I recall, and he just took big risks. He really went for it. Um, I th the game can run away from you if you don't catch on that the other opponent's going for that. I mean, but Fireblade just looked so dominant there. You're right. With um, with like, any Mishima, you can think, are we going to see a Mishima only match where it's more about wave dashing and with punishment? But we didn't really see that. We just saw, okay, Jin also is known for being Mr. Right Leg, just literally like one button and they had a bit some nerfs there but we saw it wasn't really like a Mishima match it was looking for electrics and looking for the hook fist but they were just kind of poking away just kind of getting a little bits of damage there where some Jins can be super leaning into the Mishima style wave dash wave dash back dash back dash back dash as soon as you whiff they want to launch you and also they can very reliant on the health sweep, but we didn't see that once on there as well so interesting fireball is just a much more solid gin there as well so i think roby has to he got one big launch but those things are not going to be able to get him the win against a player like fireblade so he's gonna to have to realize okay uh this guy is a uh, much more fundamental than me so i need to just try and not get caught up in trying to do the big stuff because he will punish you hard for it yeah I mean, talking about ballsy plays, if you're feeling really ballsy, you could use your parry uh, against Fraud 4 and the electric pressure. Because a lot of, when you look at the, the uh, playbook, a lot of gym players kind of come at you with their offense and their approach. It's Ford 4, electric. They're waiting for you to press a button at the wrong point in time, and they're not really coming out with tons of lows. And um, there's always the parry option. But again, it's, you've got to make that read. And Fireblade, if he baits out the parry, he will launch you. That's right, right. We're going to a Mishima building. So uh went from no walls to quite a small stage. So there's gonna be walls in play, potential uh, a lot of damage on, on the table there. But let's see what adjustments well, DWIP is gonna make. Fight. Okay, changing up the costume. You know, I've got to admit this costume's pretty dope too, but you, you can't beat that classic Tekken region. Do you know what? I think there's a bit of a mental thing there. Like, change. You, you, one guy's stuck on the costume, the other guy changed. It's almost like you turned up at a party and you're the, you're the dude who has to go back and get changed because someone else is going to play. <laughs> it's like, nah, you do it. Oh, nice parry that. there. Oh, oh that was a beautiful it. parry. Oh, We're talking that about the nice. power of that parry. I guess in this matchup, any strings, they're both going to know. So you have to be careful at finishing them because you will get parried. Yeah. I mean, as a king player, a lot of his strings and mix-ups can be taken away. One, two, four, one, two, three. The, the, if you've got a decent parry, especially if it's unchickenable, you can do some damage against Jin. Nice, just run the strings, good. No, he's oh. gonna, oh, he's oh. You can see that coming. You can see it coming from a mile. Why try to go over the fight? The string there just ducked it. Okay, Fireblade. I mean, look, even I can see that Fireblade's getting a little bit cocky here. A little bit over there. But you know what? It's working. That pressure, that carry immediately to the wall. We're back at the same situation. Roby is just, he's shutting down. He doesn't exactly know what to do. That was a good side switch, though, like moving back into the center of the stage, trying to reset that neutral position. But it doesn't matter. They're going to get lost to the, <laughs> to the complete other side of the stage. Fireblade one hit away. And there's the cheeky load to finish it off. Nice work, yeah. Five blade hit it convincingly. You can see that that the new string he's got of the laser scraper series does a chunk of damage, and it's a uh, really good in terms of, of the ender for Jin as well. Not really good out in the open, but again, Five Blade just you. There were some instances where DWIP, even though playing the same character, wasn't always punishing or did always pull the trigger on the punish. Mm. He would just jab because he was a bit unsure. As soon as I saw the one two, I think he's going to finish the string, and when. You play the same character and they, they do a string that's like two or three hits. It, they, they're just giving you that damage. It's like, yes, 
and it ends in a high so it's a big risk and it can take a couple of games for you to get that out of your system mm. and I imagine like you said um abominable when you're playing someone that knows king and you're playing a king and they do that you're just like yes give me that give me that give me that thing because i know what's coming and you yeah. can parry it you can duck it so it looks like that's what happened there yeah no i'd, I'd be in all of that up. but i mean still it should be said that um let's just have a quick look at the maturino icfc pre4 please do donate please do donate to the players because hey it's Christmas time coming up. Everyone needs those monies. And also, these guys have trained so hard, for many in many cases, for many, many years, just to pop the show for you today. So please do use that code, ICFCEU, PRE4, and please do donate. Yeah, just I mean, going back to that, I, I just wanted to point out very quickly that it, sometimes a really good player versus a decent player, but maybe not as good, using the same character, that's a banana peel in itself. Daniel, I'm sure you see that sometimes in um, in Soul Calibur. It just translates to any game. Mirror matches are a headache. Oh yeah, of course. I mean, look, you've got different characters um, can exploit different weaknesses, and that's just how fighting games go. But when you have a character, um, if you have a character mirror where you've got an incredible character, like a top two, top three character mirror, it's about that neutral. It's about the spacing. It's about who's going to be able to take advantage of the whiffs the most, of the block punishes the most, and who's going to be able to hit those high damaging combos the most to take that game. And I mean, we were just talking about King at the moment. And what is it? What do you think about this matchup, Abominable? I think it's really even. It's it's a really good matchup. This is actually a matchup that Eternal Dragon and myself uh, have played a lot over the years. And bat one there, that is so useful against Brian. You'll see uh, Batty throw that out quite a bit. Batting, of course, being, many would say, but the best king in Europe. I'd say there are other candidates as well, Schrodinger, for example. But this guy is unbelievably good. Um, and you'll see that one quite a lot, but it's, it's an even matchup. Yeah, very true. Batty a great performance in the previous week as well. It's super solid king as well. Always a marvel to watch. And like I said, I agree it's about that even. There's not the plainest match that I think, okay, this is kind of in their favor. Hey, he gets the chains of misery as well. So what about this makes this a, a relatively even matchup? I mean, uh, Asm, AZM, 3 2 one obviously taking that first game very convincingly. The second one about to go his way, but never mind, good whiff punish. Like, what is it about these uh, these two characters that makes it even? Because, of course, one of them's very grapple heavy, the other one's very string heavy. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay, that was pretty beat. <laughs> that was amazing. Um, I, I think there's a few things thrown in there. So one of them is that King, some of King's best buttons are back one. I really like his Magic 4 as well. And um, the good thing about those buttons is that um, Ryan, barring some of his really risky moves, he doesn't really push much at all. He stands up straight and can get hit on counter hit quite a lot by uh, King's offense. Um, the other thing is Ryan just can struggle on the approach if you're playing a King that has really, really solid defense. King can always be very, very scary and, and make a Brian a second think about what he's going to do. Okay, yeah, I can definitely see that coming through in this game at the moment. No, I said that fat one again. Going through the big boys. Nice. Down jab just to stop the pressure there. Looking for the jet upper. Oh, but he's got his back to the walls of wall and this might go down the balcony. Yes, nice. it does. They don't move, but they do break. You see his go for that over and over again. He knows he can catch him. Very spicy low parry. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that worked. That was sick. Big boot and drop oh, kick. Man, the drop kick coming in. Nice back step. Do another cheeky low. It really feels like cheeky lows, which is my preferred way of calling those kind of lows. Finishing rounds is just, it's the quintessential thing that you see in fighting games. They're not going to be these hard reads, not going to be these big whiff punishes. It's going to be them very cheeky lows that nobody's going to see coming. Them 50-50 situations where you're just not sure what to do at that 0.1% health bar. Indeed, there's one thing I love about this matchup from a team perspective is uh, Brian's quite a wide boy and his movement laterally isn't that great. And King's throws now track even better than they did. So it, it's a fair, it, like, it's not like you're playing as a Kunimitsu who's going to crush the hell out of you, sidestep everything or knock this. You can get your stuff in if you find the right moment. So both characters can do that though. Both characters can get their stuff in versus each other. And that's what I like about this matchup. Then. 
I've seen so many amazing Brian vs. King matchups over the year, and it's because one doesn't really stifle the other. They actually complement each other's strengths and allow each other to get their stuff in. Yeah, that's a really, really good point. When you think about even some of the other players in other region, Jimmy J. Tran and Lil Margin, you know, they're almost like the the staple players when it comes to Brian and, and King in the States as well. And like you said, it's I guess it leans to being classic Tekken characters as well. They stand mm -hmm. up and fight, not too much crushing. So it doesn't, you don't really feel like it's skewed in anyone's favor because of that. You, you kind of know what you're getting, a lot of legacy moves that you're used to, that you're used to seeing as well. And they both have got stronger in their own dimensions as well. Absolutely. There's that bat one again. It's getting caught this time. Oh, 4 4 neutral 2. Such big damage. And good Oki if you want to go for it. That was the Oki I would have thought of. For a bit late there. Oh, no, he got the quick punish with the the launch there, but he just like, went for like one of the hard combos that doesn't even give that much damage. <laughs> that was quite funny to watch actually. We got what, Orbital and a hop kick just completely like range two. Not gonna hit anybody with that. Oh, oh no! Now, da Daniel, I'm not sure if you know this one. This is a little bit niche about a King Love back catch, but that Jaguar step two where he does an overhead overhead uh, elbow, you can actually convert that into a just frame uh, chain throw, and you can do you can take off nearly probably two thirds of a bar with the whole chain. It's insane. It's just <laughs> off a mid attack, a safe mid attack of that. It was minus nine last time I checked. So good. No, he's. He's back against the wall. Is he gonna? Oh my God! Look at that comeback from AZM. Fight. I mean, this so final game. So, this, so abominable. You're saying that this matchup is pretty even. Barty taking the first game pretty convincingly. I mean, he, he pretty much ran through AZM. But right now, the table seems to be completely turned. Uh, is there something that Barty should be doing more of, just to kind of avoid losing this and taking it 2-0? Look, I don't want to, it's, it's hard for me, I'm also a King player, and uh, I don't want to make out that I'm a better bat a King player than Batty, because I'm categorically not, but I would question why he's doing jumping neutral fours from, like, range two or three. <laughs> that, just, that just feels a little bit odd to me. Mm. He's obviously got, he, he was, he's obviously thinking of something that he's, his opponent's doing, but both times he's gone for it, he's got, he's eating some big damage. He's eating some big, big damage. So I think I'd go for a bigger stage. I'd, I'd take the wall away and I'd probably just play solid, just play a bit more solid. Because the, that first game when he played solid, he clawed back a good few games. He didn't do anything massively flashy. He just played really good king. Mm. I saw him, he was using a lot of um, AZM. He started to attack his legs, caught a sucker back three with Ryan because he thought, right, in the first game, I didn't really do many lows. So. He, he started hitting him with the lows, he got a counter a few times, and it kind of made him start ducking as well. And Brian, the quarter circle back three, it's it's such a, a beefy low, you kind of ignore it for, you know, a few, once, yeah, maybe, when you start to hit two or three, it makes a person react. So they're either gonna duck, or they're gonna try something. Excellent work from him. He punished brilliantly with the um, the forward four one launch. He, he messed up the second time, but he got that combo, and that's what sealed in the round. So I think AZM's realizing, okay, I need to pressure at the right moments, get Batty to commit to something, back away, and then with punish. This is why that back one is so good, because that low kick, like, and like a lot of low kicks, Brian stays fully stood up when he does it. And that, that allows King to get a lot of counter hits on him, high counter hit moves, such as that magic ball, such as that, that, that one. You can see there, Batty's going for that uh, overhead chop again out of Jaguar step. Oh, very nice break. I've got no punish there. No punish. Oh, they both clash. Sounds like again trying to go for that drop kick. Oh, man. Once again, just showing off that you can't be too overzealous with your Oki. You absolutely have to try and respect people sometimes. Otherwise, you're just going to get kicked in the shins and lose a round. Brilliant conversion off of that trade, though. Yeah. Very, very nice reactions there for Batty. Gets the rewards back. Nice chunk. Ends, ends negative here, but it doesn't matter. What's he thinking? He's going for something odd again. Nice. Good wall position there. He's getting nah. away from the wall there. Good nice. From both of them. <laughs> Round three. Oh, Fight. complete turnaround. Batty, two games, two rounds up. Excellent. Nice. With punish on the back one there. Let's talk about that. What's he doing now? Good. Very nice indeed. 
This is the big damage. Now, if he backs up, yeah, this is standard. A king player will normally back up and wait for a get up kick. And if he does, he gets splatted. in. He didn't that time. Ooh. Good punish on it, though, as well. Big chunks of batty gone now. And look at this turnaround. Nice. Oh, no, he doesn't get the, the taunt. Beautiful whiff punish. It's great. That, that move's absolutely fantastic. And he gets a big boy combo to take the win. That sidestep two is fantastic. It got better in season three. And it's. I'm surprised I didn't even see it get used more there but in throughout the whole game because it's one of his best buttons. I use it all the time. But again, just Batty, you can see what he's doing. He's throwing out that back one, throwing out the magic four. He's going for the Jaguar step elbow. And it all worked out for him in the end. Despite some... I don't know if he was going for some really mad setups or if he was just... It was a bit awkward in one of the early games of the tournament. Sometimes it takes a bit of time to get warmed up. Yeah, absolutely. So, Dan, looking at that matchup now, in terms of, of King, you can see sometimes with grappler characters that you, they don't, in Tekken, you don't really see them be played as grapplers, which I think is one of the great things about King. You know, you don't see, there's some players that are grappler kings, there's some players that are strikers. And in that match, you don't really see much grappling, you know. What's, what's your thoughts on that compared to, you know, uh, even Soul Calibur as well and what you've seen so far within Tekken? So, generally what I'm seeing is that, and just, uh, I guess, in general, Tekken as a whole, as a game, there's a lot more emphasis on the neutral. So, being able to backstep at the perfect time and sidestep at the perfect time is much more important than it will be in, say, Soul Calibur 6. Um, but when we talk about this matchup in particular, when you've got a King versus a Brian, um, in, like from an outsider's perspective, you have a character that could be a complete grappler maniac in that you just go for grab mix-ups over and over again. Um, but it looked like Batty was just, he was playing such a very strong neutral game. We saw a load of whiff punishes in that final game with that shoulder. Um, and even when he wasn't able to connect with the shoulder, it allowed him to get back into close range and work that king game. Um, Brian, I have trouble with personally. I think those strings are just, they're crazy. But when you get to a level where you're playing in a tournament, you kind of have to be very composed. And, Bat and Batty, sorry, was just able to uh, work the space perfectly. Even when he got wall splatted, you just have to keep that composure. Like we saw in the Fergus game, even when you're on the back foot, if you're able to hit those armor crushes, those power crushes at the perfect time, you're able to whiff punish perfectly. You take the game and we may eventually be able to see these people take the tournament. Indeed. Nice. We saw some cheekiness as well from Batty there. Did you see there was one moment where he ran in and he, he like totally whiffed a uh, Shining Wizard, like did it right way too early. And then he's like, okay, what do I do? I'll do a power crush. Because any punishment <laughs> they try and do, I'll just bang them up. I was thinking to myself, did he do that on purpose? Because if he did, that was next level. <laughs> <laughs> I love the oh, and we got our Macharino back up on the screen just to let you know if you hit that exclamation mark, I believe it's exclamation mark uh, Macharino in the chat, it will take you to this page and you have to put in that promo code ICFC EU PRE4 to add a free 50 cents to that prize pot. $113.50 so far. If you can, head over to the Macharino page and direct contribute because not only is it the season of giving, it's the season of fighting games. And uh, ICFC is a tournament or a set of tournaments, Intercontinental Fight Club, is um, something that I didn't think could ever exist. Something on a literal international scale where people from all over the world are able to compete in this one amazing tournament. And you can see there, we have the ICFC Stay Connected social media handles, twitter.com slash tenomedia, youtube.com slash tenomedia, and patreon.com slash tenomedia as well. Follow along from that. Guys, please start use that code. If um, 100 people use that code, 100 of you, there's 281 in the chat. That's free $50 just added to the price bar. $50 added on to it now. You know, we have we can't stress it enough. It's all free. Keep using that code, use it all up. And then this is only the preseason. You know, we're expecting it to get bigger when it's come to the full, fully fed season with all the stuff ironed out. So yeah, I guess shouts out to Tenor Media with, um, putting this on but yes we are progressing nicely into this tournament some kin is still yet to come up so i'm interested to see who we're gonna have next on stream i can't wait and props to Tenno media for having the same handle across all their socials what kind of sorcery is this <laughs> it is almost impossible oh, in this day and age oh, my oh, yes. this is a big one this is yes. a big one
So this, um, I, I'll start off with this. We could pass this one around. Arsene Benger versus Dante. So two UK names that Arsene Benger uh, is a guy that uh, came up through Tekken 6, really, as Tekken 7, I should say, really was quite inexperienced when he started Tekken 7, but has made a name for himself as a guy who has been almost a god killer. Has taken down some huge names in majors. Dante is a guy I know from Xbox Tekken 6 days that long ago. And he's a really, really solid Jap player, but he plays the whole roster in it. Of course, he's now on Leroy. Mm, and it's, it's basically like London versus Birmingham now, or Midlands now. So, uh, <laughs> who are you going to have to, who are you going to be supporting for this? Well, I, mean... I would support the Midlands, but he's playing Leroy. So let's go with Arthur <laughs> Benga. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, I don't know if you can tell by the way that I talk, but of course I'm from London. Got to support Londoners, regardless of who they play. <laughs> nice. Oh, big fist there from Benga. Oh, and he runs oh! it right back. <laughs> okay, that's like... <laughs> I absolutely love seeing those things. You just approach somebody trying to be cautious and they just rage drive you to death. <laughs> it was like, all right, you're going to run up here, fist in your face. Oh, do not press buttons there, sir. You will get blown up. This is Benga Tech. Oh, nice, that while standing four caught a lot of track in there. What I love about Benga is once he gets in, he won't leave you alone until you punish him or with punish him. Like, that's the way he works. He won't just suddenly back off for no reason. Real momentum player. Mm. Look at this comeback now from Dante. He's got Rage and he's still got the cane. What are we going to see? Oh! Not dead. Gets oh, him again. oh my god. You know Dante's going to be. Kicking himself after that. So close, and Ben got two rounds. There is the cane. Uses it straight away. Dude, just bang. It man on the ground. Brilliant punisher. You, you cannot test Dante's block punishment. Yeah, he's a very fundamental player. Oh, that really got away from Benga there. Are we going to see a switch in momentum? I've seen this story before. Dante is that good. He could turn him out. You know, you would say that Benga is the big favourite in this first game. I wouldn't say so based on that last round. I'm not so sure. I mean, c coming up from, uh, you know, going two, two rounds up is pretty mental frame advantage. Like, that's crazy. But oh. Dante, if he's going to be able to bring this back, even after this incredible wall carry into... What's looking like a, like a quarter health combo. Nice, he cancels it. Benga doing chunks with that and in the big oh, boot oh, as well. Oh, no, 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 no. oh, this won't be it. This is so awkward. And he gets it for the first game. Benga, one that up versus Dante. Now, both of these guys, highly rated players. But I would say that went against expectations. So this is, we've got a very interesting situation here, ladies and gentlemen. I would agree with that. Like... It's funny because you, if you not rewind like ages ago, he said Benga coming up against a strong player like Dante. No disrespect to anybody, you think it's Dante, but seeing him go toe to toe and listen, just seeing how Benga were playing, I love the fact that he did uh, Savage downfall two, safe. He stayed in stance and he knew he's going to go low, and he just low parried it. So Benga is very good at scouting lows. You know, you play mm. Benga, you hit him with a lot of mids, mids, and if it right, I'm going to go low now. He, he'll block it. So you have to really mix up your timing well because he scouts out these lows and he punishes you hard with Miguel. Miguel hits hard. We saw wall combo that he got. So Dante got a bit unlucky with the um, comeback he had with the get up kick. So you know he's going to, that's going to be playing on his mind a little bit. But as you said, abominable, he is a strong player. And I don't think it's going to be so crazy to see him to come back and switch it around. We, we'll see, we'll see. I mean, in that in that second round, uh, Benga prediction low block, and then managed to get an incredible punish to uh, to take that second round. And as soon as you got up to that top floor, it was like it was anybody's game. Yeah, it was an excellent low block. I think that was the key moment where you thought, okay, he's not just uh, uh, getting lucky here; that he's playing his heart out. This is really, really strong Tekken. Both of these guys, you know, they're going to lay it all out. We're on the infinite stage now. Let's go. Fight. More, more, more sort of fundamentals approach now. No walls in play. Dante known for his fundamentals. It's just poking away. Excellent space in there. Good step, but no punishes. Did we Dante is just he's pressing all the buttons in the world. Absolutely, just trying to rush down Benga. And as soon as he can't get that advantage, 
backing off and then taking the punishes that you can get. Oh, nice, oh, he oh, nice. knows that string. Gets a counter hit. Oh no, he just delays it too much, but he still gets a low parry. Extra low parry, slightly off axis. Then with rage. Spends it. Oh, look at this combat now. Oh, oh no! Tried to get in at that last second with the rage drive, just tapping him out. They were the big boots. Look at the damage already. <laughs> Bender just never throws away frames. He never ever throws away frames. It's just so good with momentum. Got there from Dante now, still in this. Get the order tool. Big boot. Another big boot. I don't think I've ever seen Leroy without his hair. He looks more like Kanye West from here. <laughs> he does. Oh, oh nice parry. excellent. A parry looks sick. Nice conversion as well. That was a great conversion. Holy. A lot of stars. Basically, Savage vs. Hermit stance in this. Nice, there is a low. He oh. knows the side roll. Excellent from Dante. If you stay on the ground or try to get up, you get launched. Awesome, then got absolutely not perturbed by uh, by going around down. Evening up that life bar at the moment. Them cheeky lows, great counter hit into the, the follow ups. Just the pressure oh. is absolutely disgusting. Oh my god, that was He's beautiful. Round so, well, that last round, 40 seconds. 40 seconds, and they, it was so close down to the wire. They're playing so well. Was that, was that a dropped cane combo? Yeah, hit him in the back, and he just couldn't finish it off. Oh, hello, oh, oh. the mix up. Okay. Venga looking super strong. Oh, the the and the parry. Parry. <laughs> You're not away yet, son. Fly air, Miguel. Oh, 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 oh. This oh. is squeaky bum time for Dante. Oh my god, he goes for the, the slowest oh, online oh, move. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Benga's known wow. for doing that and like, oh, he's he going to pull it out. <laughs> he's known for doing it, but he's on very low health and he needs to win. I, I used to say to him, when in doubt, you throw it out. And he threw it out. <laughs> he threw it out. Wow. So I, think, I think there's something to say about these what so-called online lows, right? In, the, in, in any other situation, you would probably be blocking that low. But in a tournament environment, when the game is close and you don't know what your opponent's going to throw out, then like I 30 plus lows are going to decide the game because your brain's going to be thinking about so many different things that that one cheeky thing that you don't think your opponent's going to throw, it will hit you and then just out of nowhere, you've lost the game. So like it's it's mind games on Yomi on mind games. And sometimes you love to see it and you burst out laughing when you see these super low, super slow lows hitting. Part of it was the tension that was building up was the solid Tekken. Right? It was just solid Tekken with both players the whole time. And then Benga just went, nah. <laughs> <laughs> and like you said, Abondal, you know when Benga's low on life, he's probably going to do He was in the lead in round and yeah. in life. And it was, uh, you know when they say online lows, when I see a top player get hit by that, oh, that's all right. They get hit by it too. There's nothing to fear because they say yeah. it. And I've seen these online lows hit the top of the top players. So I'm like, you know, we need to change the stigma of that now because if, you know, if they get hit by it, I can. But it shows about timing, even if it's slow, it's about how you use it. And like you said, the tension there was building. Um, probably if you was going to say who you think might take it, you would probably go with Dante with that. Um, not just because of Leroy by any means, but he's a solid player. He's, he's been in the, the scene for a long time, but Benga getting that win in the, the way he did, you can see all the Bengarisms with it, but that's the thing. Whether you can stop it is whether you saw. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you see the punch parry. You saw the low. It's it's you know it's great Miguel, but it's just when he's going to do it. I mean, you play Bengo, it's it's just like damn, he got me with that. So great work. Absolutely, that animation, that animation is really weird. It just doesn't look like some animations are really really slow, but they're almost too slow, and you're like. What's, what's going on here? Like, <laughs> you just wonder what the hell's happening. And that, that's the kind of animation that can catch you out. But, and I like that you said that he's still got his Bengalisms. Like, you know, we joke about it because we've played him so many times. But 
keeping the, your own play style. Like Ru Kang, that's an example of a guy who plays top level Tekken and you know his play style. You know he's going to go right at your face straight away and he's going to be full offense. And I like that about players where it's not just about, you know, placing down forward ones and poking or with punishing. It's also about playing your style of Tekken and Ben is doing that. Yeah, absolutely. Dan, speaking on that, what do you think about people hiding tech? Because that's what I... Uh, you know when people are like, I'm going to save this tech for a tournament, but then you see other players where you can... We can talk about Ru Kang's playstyle, Benga's playstyle, and they still win and, and make placings. And there's some people that might hide tech. So yeah, they might win in that scenario, but... I guess the aim, the aim is you want to get to level where you know my playstyle. I'm, I'm still going to win. So you, you know that I'm going to do this secret Discord tech, but it, it doesn't matter. That's the kind of level I think people should be aspiring to. Yeah, of course. I think this Discord tech is important because <laughs> Discord is essentially just, it's kind of like the evolution of going into an arcade and saying, I found this new combo or I found this new... Uh, I found this new setup. I think Discord tech, while it, while it, you know, you can use it as a meme, as in like it's the only thing that's ever going to work online. Sometimes you can find these really ridiculous setups that you never really see unless you're in that Discord. And then once it gets into the public eye, like you're saying, you've got these play styles that are so well known, but even though you know them, they can, they still can't be countered sometimes because you've got that Discord tech. You've got that one move, that one setup, that one break, that is just going to take you by surprise and you're going to lose your composure and then end up losing the entire tournament, set, game, whatever it is. Um, so, you know, I think it's important that sometimes you need to keep some tech to yourself because not only is it going to give you an advantage, but then when you pull it out in these tournament settings, everybody's going to go, I had no idea this existed. This is amazing. <laughs> so basically, when you're winning, you pull out the Discord tech to immortalize yourself as a legend because then uh -huh, you're yeah. going to be clipped on Twitch. It's like, what was this setup? And they'd jump over tech and all that kind of stuff. So that's what you do. Hide the tech until you're going to win and, and win in the blaze of glory. <laughs> that is that's what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You guys have got some karate kid stuff going on there. I'm not so sure about that. Yeah, <laughs> just get you in. Just get you in. And Discord tech. Like, Tekken Zaibatsu, can we just give a nod to Tekken Zaibatsu.com? Because it wasn't just Discord, yeah, right? Rest, it rest wasn't arcades and Discord, there were rip. websites, there were BBS forums, and Tekken Zaibatsu, oh, rip, rip, guys. Oh, I miss you guys already. I mean, I hadn't used you for about 10 years, but I miss you. It's like a cousin that's a bit annoying, but it's still, it's still your cousin. You don't want him to go away. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Of course. No. No. I mean... I mean, look, even as a, I mean, I played Tekken before I played Calibur and even now at this moment in time, or I guess before it got shut down, um, Tekken Zaibatsu was always that kind of thing that you aspired uh, to grow towards as an entity or as, a, as an yeah. organization that would host something that everybody would go to to learn things and to talk about things and to just kind of have a central place for your community. Um, Calibur doesn't really have that at the moment, but you know, the evolution of Discord um, has kind of made it a bit obsolete. It is a shame to see it go, but hopefully the people who are behind Tekken Zaibatsu move on to bigger and better things and hopefully they get to support Tekken even more in a, probably a more official capacity, which is what I'm guessing. Yeah, indeed, indeed. And it, the, the, the site was like, it's everywhere. I, with, um, mm. Dragon and I commentated with Xavier Woods, like a WWE wrestler, mm. a few years ago. And I was talk, I was like commentating and talking about how someone's doing a combo video. And Xavier Woods went, yeah, let's slap some Darude on that. And I was thinking, he's downloaded a Tekken 4 combo video. That's how he knows that. And like, that would have been Tekken Zaibatsu. That was the only place you could get those <laughs> videos at the time. So oh, it, it's man. been everywhere. Hell of a sight. Right, Sync versus Kalak. What a game. Ooh. Right. We talked about characters that we don't see. Kalak, Lily, one of the main representation of Lily in the, in the EU. And he was the winner of last week's tournament going up against Sync, who is a, uh, when we say up and coming, a, a UK player all the time we see him. You know, he's, he's a really young player. I think he's probably like still in his teens, but he's a really good player. He is really good indeed. He has been, it was not so long ago he was a becoming, but I would say he's made it now. He's well respected, well known. He's done things in tournaments. This won't be easy for Kalak, but it will be a test of how much Sync knows about this character, because if you don't know a lot, you get really stuffed. So is there anything in particular that makes uh, this, that makes this 
match up particularly difficult for either character. I mean, I know Lily is uh, kind of universally panned as one of the, wor uh, I shouldn't say worse, but one of the uh, not as good characters in the roster. Is there anything in this matchup in particular that could uh, make Kalik a threat? Well, from my point of view, I would say that Kalik's a threat to using any character. And this is the character that he's, he's known for a long time. I wouldn't say there's much in the, in the matchup between the two characters that I would know about that make it too, uh, make one of them play too specific. But I would say that if Sync doesn't know when to duck, uh, Alec will test that. I've, I've played him in tournament, played him versus fighting a couple of years ago, and when he knows that you don't know when to duck some of his strings or some of his moves, he will start throwing out all the time and place a ton of pressure on you. So it'll be interesting to see how Sync handles that. He's talking about the duck. He's using that that Lily like submissive heel. That's what you know. He's going to get you to duck, and that's the move he's going to start using. And we always have to talk about Lily and Matterhorn because that is the move which is uh, she's you know synonymous with excellent work from Sting. You know, you got the, the punish there. So you can definitely see that the Kalak is trying to play much more of a defensive game and take take the damage that they can and get the hell out of dodge afterwards. Because I guess there's no real reason to overextend, especially if you have a life lead like this and you can even up the rounds. Lee's not really going to... Um, unless you get a big magic four like that, then he's going to be back in this game. Low. All right, I'm just not, not even going to say nothing. I was going to say, wow, Lee's not really a character you need to fear too much when you, you know, you've know you got a life lead like that. But Sync, with that magic four, with the wall, that's how the game can change in Tekken. Nice, good back dash there on the back four, but doesn't get a punish. Kalik is 100% trying to play more of a whiff punish game at the moment. The back steps are coming in thick and fast. And when Kalik just right there, you can see that they're trying to... Uh, <laughs> nice. Same move over and over again, but that was a great punish into carry. This is going to be um, this is going to be pretty difficult for Kalik to get out of. Oh no. Never mind. <laughs> that power crush could have been costly. He gets off lightly though. There it goes. Using that summit's appeal. Sinks goes back towards the wall now. Could be dangerous. That could have been a whip punish from the back before. I think we're gonna see we're gonna see a wall bounce or something. Oh, he spins the race drive. Nice! nice. That was some top tier patience right there. It was a huge read as well, because if he actually got launched, that would he would have lost his whole bar. And I guess Sink knew that. It was a kind of a reverse uh, bluff. Kalak's going to have to make the game happen from here because the thing about Sync is if you're waiting for Sync to make a mistake, you're going to be waiting a long time. He, he's not the kind of player that throws that silly stuff very often. He doesn't make a huge amount of mistakes. You're going to have to oh. repress him. Just like that though, two big hits then. Kalak even up 2-2. Two, two. Nice. nice. Good. Goes low, no, goes by standing four. Pressure oh, here. Oh, oh, oh. Get caught. What's the at this time? Gets him. Not quite enough for them seven golden letters, but pretty well done by Sync. I mean, Kalak, that defensive play style was working out every other second. <clears throat> Gives me every other second and every other interaction. The backstepping, trying to wait for Sync to make a mistake, trying to hit him with the mids. Unfortunately, it didn't work out too well, but as you were saying, Abominable, it definitely looks like if you're waiting for Sync to make a mistake, you're going to be waiting for a very long time. And right there, as soon as Sync saw that they had the advantage, they pressed it. That wall, um, that wall carry just kept Kalak in that corner, wasn't able to even wait for Sync to make a mistake, and then just completely dominated that final round. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I've, I've actually been a, a played sync a lot over the years, over the last two years, and um, I've just noticed that if you want to get into a game of just playing really solid, like just literally waiting for that with moment to whiff punish, you know, just throwing out safe moves, it, it's a very dry game. Sync doesn't get sucked into that. He will just do the same. He, he, he always tries to play a very, very solid, solid play style, and that's the way he plays, and he does it better than most people. I think if you've got a good offense, like I know Palap has, he's got ridiculous offense. He needs to express himself. He needs to start chucking it out. Get ready for the next Absolutely. Battle. Sink also being one, a young player, for him to have that play style is quite interesting because it takes a lot of patience. And yeah. young people and patience playing a game like Tekken <laughs> and Fundamentals, you don't see it. So when I played him at Soccer of Fight Festa, I did go in a bit pre... There's some preconceived notions like, okay, he's young. It's not. I've never seen him before. 
you know, I'm not going to expect a really fundamental play style, but man, I was mistaken I because he is solid. Game. And like you said, he's not going to be the one to make any costly whiffs and doing any Round silly things one. like that. So credit to him. Fight. They're going to a infinite stage now. There's a few players uh, out of the UK who are really young and they have similar play styles. They play super solid fundamental. The moment they get their age drive, they spend it almost immediately. And I'm thinking Immortal Soul and Kane and Trench along with Sync. They just they all play a super they play beyond their years. Mm. It's really good to see that these guys are the future. I mean Kane has already proved himself to be the current and future of Tekken 7 for the UK. But Immortal Soul and Sync definitely uh, coming up behind him. Nice. nice. Ground and pound just goes for one. Oh, oh, no. oh, oh sickest tech crouch. And another cheeky load to finish off that, uh, that first round. Fight. We didn't see much crushing in, in, in this game, and that's the thing. When you play a character that can and you don't use it, it's about when you pull it out and just stole that round from Sync there with that crushing the, the high. Oh, big cheer for Kala. He needs to do a chunk. Set up, nice. Yeah, punish that. Oh, what a different game this has been, guys. Yeah, Kalo very much on the offense here, not waiting for Sync to make any mistakes, trying to force mistakes by themselves and then uh, pushing the advantage. Oh, look at that counter conversion. Is that some new season four stuff? That that looks nice size F now. Kalak wasn't sure if he was going to finish it, he didn't want to punish. Oh, brilliant stuff. Lows on, lows on, lows, good block. That nice and stuff backs up. Very patient. <laughs> Six you get a big buzz. <laughs> Just looking out for that rage drive, looking out for the rage drive for sure. Be careful with that Lily cartwheel, she can cover so much distance with that. Oh, throw! That's a great break. Rage drive expended. Sync just oh, absolutely trying to avoid any damage, but unfortunately just not able to guess right on the mix up. And damn, Kalak even up that scoreboard. <laughs> Pretty beastly. Yeah, interesting, interesting. I think. Um, if you've got a rage drive that's like, like not just a mid mid or a mid and it has a low or a high it can actually and your opponent knows that you can actually get in their head because you can see that sync was backing up waiting to do something about that rage drive but it actually gave kalak some like some a, a mind game against him where he could really use it uh kalak again it just pressured him very very hard now you've got to think sync now has the choose can choose the stage he's never going to change character surely he does have a league in him of other characters but you, you got to think he'll take it back to walls yeah yeah I, I would say so him having wall carry as well he got uh much more of his damage from the wall situations as well when he when he gets the the magic four so i think going for a, a smaller stage will go in his favor both players time. are playing a very kind of like with punish uh play style so mm -hmm. it's, it's a good to see this kind of level where they're both waiting for something but then you can see it's like who is going to turn on that little bit of um not say crushing and crazy, but more so that's what you have to be aware of. Lily, we haven't seen Matterhorn once. I know it, it's it's very unsafe if it gets punished if it gets punished and, and blocked, but you always have to have that threat, and it's kind of like the threat of it is sometimes better than actually just using the move. And chat is blowing up for sync. He's definitely getting a lot of support. Well, chat, if you're supporting Sync, if he's in this tournament, make sure you do jump over and donate via Macharino. Give him some proper support. Put some money in his pocket, potentially. And here we go. One game on Sync versus Kalak. Broken stays on the ground. Just takes that. Looking for the magic four. Step Devon doesn't get anything off it. So you can definitely see the momentum switch here. Like as soon as uh, as soon as Kalak was on the infinite stage, much more aggressive, uh, trying to force Sync to make mistakes. But now on a walled stage, Kalak has gone back to kind of this backstepping with punishment kind of style. Because I mean, I'm just not entirely sure why. It seems like if Kalak just goes straight up on the offense, they might be able to pressure Sync into making those mistakes that they weren't able to make in the first round, uh, first game. 
Mm. It's difficult. He's got a good comeback with back with back four, so coming in on on Lee can be difficult. But I say he's playing a close game anyway. Nice catches a step, but doesn't get the pick up. Nice duck nice. on the screen. Nice. Solid patient man. It's an awkward spot. Very nice. Good interrupt. Oh no, he doesn't get the full wolf splat because the distance was off. Jump move nicely interrupted. Kanak on pace to take this set. Kalak, the champion from last week, already gets the full string. Low. Nice. Goes low again. Oh, and there oh, it is. There's there the it is. Bluffs it. At a very key moment as well. Ah, but Sink gambled again. Kalak was ready. But he's... Combo, but it doesn't oh my lord. On the Oki. You win. Damn, that Matterhorn changed the entire pace of that match. It's a bit yeah, so it Yeah, it is. It is. But it's a bit like Bengis down back one. It's like, if you know that they might go for it, you know, it's always got to be in the back of your head. Mm. And, and, and Kalak does go for Matterhorn in matches. You know, it's not something that it's, it's totally rare. He just threw it out at the perfect time. What a game from Kalak there. Good adjustments as well. Yeah, like we said, he is a, he's the winner from last week, you know, doing well in this tournament, trying to defend his crown. We haven't actually had any repeat winners of this, and, you know, I can understand why. Um, guys, we got that match arena still building up. I believe now it's actually more than that. It's actually, we got $122.50. So Let's go. thank you for everyone donating. Um, Use up that code, like we said, 100 people, 100 of you do it, 350 of you in the chat, that's a free $50. Look, Danarai, look, take lead by example, that's what you do, Danarai's <laughs> name there, donating. <laughs> nice work. Don't see Abominable's name there. But, you know, no, it's no. reverse alphabetical, <laughs> right? right. <laughs> Somewhere down the bottom. That's a nice option to like there, Abominable, I like that. <laughs> no, but no, for real, like, so, when you get into these kind of tournament situations, Macharino is like the perfect way to fundraise for them. But not only is it the perfect way to fundraise for them, it's the perfect way to show every single other person out there that the FGC and FG events in general are worth supporting. So like massive props to Tenno for putting on this event because it is reaching every corner of the globe. There's so many different people who are popping up on my Twitter feed right now because of this event and because of these events in general that I never would have discovered beforehand. And also, of course, we just got to uh, have a shout out, big thanks to uh, Eternal Dragon Ab and Abominable for commentating alongside me, for dominating this commentary so far, because um, they're the Tekken experts. I'm here to learn. I'm here to kind of entertain as well, along with these two. Uh, so yeah, just a big thanks to everybody who's putting this on right now. Big thanks to everybody watching. Big thanks to the donators. And uh, let's get back into some good ass Tekken. We're getting all of Abominable's characters on stream, though. First King, now on now Marduk. I love a bit of Marduk. Bakri known to be very good with Marduk, but Crossfire is very, very strong player as well. Yeah, I'm looking Speaking forward to this. Marduk, somebody in the chat right now called TK Nibs, who's the best Tekken 7 commentator ever, he paid me to say that, uh, Marduk play himself. <laughs> he is. I played him, actually. Uh, yeah, he's a good Marduk player. He's got some good tech. Nice back four. Very hard to get out of dodge here when you're playing as Marduk with your back to the wall, but he's working as well. Back just very carefully moving out. So Marduk, King and Armor King. Grapplers, wrestlers by nature. Is there a stark difference between each of those characters? Is one of them more grapply than the other? Is, uh, is Marduk just as good of a striker as King? Um, so King... Not King has by far the best version of and grapples, uh, generally speaking. Um, now, they're all completely different. They're all completely different. So, um, King has incredible uh, chain throws, has huge, huge mix-ups, and, and his throws track very, very well. Bardic obviously has the tackle, uh, but he also has a really good uh, uh, command throws as well. Fourth World 1 plus 2 is Jackhammer throw. Um, Armor King, I would put him below the other two, really, in grappling. He's a bit more of a striker, but he can be played in many, many different ways, and like maybe Marda. So yeah, no, it's, they're all very varied. I'm enjoying okay. Marduk the most right now. It's just so, his comeback potential is absolutely insane. 
disgusting, isn't it? It is really disgusting with the tackle, the, the damage, and it's the mix-up after even he gets it with that damage of guessing wrong. Oh, it's a swift need to oh a my great God. pick up after that. <laughs> that was sick. Rokari now kind of on the defensive here. Crossfire hitting those neutral mixes like a bus. The problem is, he struggles to panic book him. His best panic book him is a good one. He's not standing one. He can only do that out of Bell Tinder's dance or duck. But Bakri, look. He doesn't mind. He played, actually, he did the right thing. He didn't try and press his way out of uh, out of, out of danger. He actually just was like, no, I'm going to have to like space this out, soak this up, and now and again make some reads. And he did all right. He got hit at the wall a few times, but he always managed to get his, get his way out of it. With Marla, when he's in his crouch stance and he's doing the while, his while standing one, sometimes you have to commit to blocking that big, ah, it just tucks you up. And it's, <laughs> it's you know, he, he didn't, I understand why you don't want to duck. Sometimes you need to just kind of commit because you launch him. He Every time he did it, his back was kind of towards the balcony. So you commit once, you get the balcony, you get to break a lot of damage. Easier said than done because you don't really want to be ducking when Marduk's there anyway. It's, it's it's a really... I've heard a lot of people say with other characters, it's, you can avoid it. With Marduk, it's a matter of when it's going to hit you, when you're going to get hit, when you're going to go and get the tackle there as well. Because even if you block it, it's a mix that comes after it as well. So. Yeah, he's a really, really scary character, but he's sick. I love watching the model on, on just on stream. He's, he's a really good character. And um, again, we get some more Lily representation. Again, we don't see these characters at all. Hardly ever see them. So good to see some Lily. I just had a look at the bracket here in this pool. Mm. So Chikimaru lost in the first round or second round to a Kaizaku Lars. Never heard that. So that is a... Yeah, so round two, um, Chikimaru actually lost 2-1 to Kaizoku Lars. Interesting. Now, there's a killer in loser's bracket. Chikimaru is one of the, the best players in the EU, and he's doing well for it. I just saw that and just thought that is definitely surprising to see him go down to um, uh, so early. So hopefully we can see some more of this uh, this last player that done it as well. Indeed. Okay, change of character. Cross five back to Bob. Do you know what? That, oh, that nice. jumping headbutt, people think it's gimmicky. It's actually got real use. It really does. It's more of a good end of game finisher, but it's a stupid move. Good interrupt there. Didn't let him go into the crack mix up. Nice. Round two. Okay, crossfire. Immediately coming back after that switch from Bob. Nice. No. Right no, no. in the corner. Look at the damage as well. And he gets scooped up. Perfect. So Marduk's while standing punishment is not great, so it's sinful when you miss one, miss an opportunity to launch someone off a low. Do you mean Marduk's while rising punishment? Oh, I'm oh not this, into guy. This. <laughs> this guy. This <laughs> guy. Who let this guy? <laughs> Nice, get the wall splat, pick up that, that, bang, doosh. Do. Crossfire some great reads then. Uh, back he was doing well, standing one is a block, and going back into the two distance to do more. Crossfire could see that he was doing that, and as a result, baited out some really good punishment. Saw that again though, he didn't launch the low. Nice, he's gonna go in the mid now, oh. side step. That. Sweet, bang. Oh, he's nice. trying to hit him with strings. Oh, much, that's the problem. Yeah, go to it. Nice. Oh, oh what? Mm. <laughs> just punches him right in the gut. You wanna, you wanna duck right here. Just... <clears throat> Think he could have acquitted himself a bit better there in those final few seconds back. But still, at least he got that round back in because there was a lot of momentum there with Crossfire. Um, Crossfire, you know, he's obviously going to be using Bob in this final game. What does Bakri do? I think he does have a Raven, if I if I recall properly. Could he change? Mm. So I think is... Go on, Dragon. No, he didn't. He didn't do too badly, but I just um, he, he wasn't punishing the the launch on Bob twice. He blocked that, so that's damage off the table. I was going to say, does Marduk have any jump over tech? Because at the end, he tried to do some jump over tech which put him in a bad situation he lost that so taking that risk there i wasn't known if marduk has much of those kind of options 
it does have some plus up tech, but it's like a stomp plus up that you can do over after some tackles and some throws. Right. Yeah, I've done it. I've done it to you quite a lot, but you should remember it. <laughs> I was waiting for this stuff. I was waiting. Oh, for this. No. <laughs> That's uh, right. So the um, so the Marduk Bob matchup. I'm guessing probably not in Marduk's favour. So you're probably suggesting a switch to Raven if possible. Yeah, but potentially. I mean, Marduk, Marduk's a really, really strong character. It's, it, mm. I, I would, I would, I would say Bob's looking very strong in season four. And just cross while I looked at home with, with Bob. He has gone to Raven, so we will see a change back on Machine with Dojo though. So let's see how this goes. Yeah, Raven known for a lot of uh, strong wall damage, wall, wall damage as well. Bob, obviously, we got buffs in here as well, and. He's kind of a character that people say does he even have any weaknesses anymore. When you think about him just like as a character generally, you can't really think of where he doesn't excel now, especially in season four. Nice. Dude. This nice. isn't like a panic hit for Bakri though, right? He, I, I believe he beat the Phantom in the Mirror with Raven uh, in a tournament uh, sometime this year. So he's known to be good with this character. Bakri on the back foot at the moment. Crossfire, just that constant pressure into the wall combo. Oh, he's going to end it, he's going to end it. Okay, it's going to work. Crossfire taking the first game. Not able to convert from the floor. Oh. Beautiful launch, here we go. Raven's got some of the sexiest looking combos I've ever seen. Take it easy, fellow, it's a long night. <laughs> <laughs> The sweet bang, sweet bang again. Tries to get him in the mid. Oh no! Oh, that, was that was dirty. Beautiful. He went sweet, two sweet bangs. Then he went for a mid, and then when he tried to punish with the low, he just hop kicked him. Oh no! No punish there. Good down jab to interrupt that. Good, excellent block punish in there. He's looking for that wall splat. He's looking for that splat. No, oh, nice. Oh, what a duck! Look at that carry. Carry back, reach, trying to turn the tide of that battle, but a beautiful punish by Crossfire. He's going to carry right back into the middle of the stage. Right to the mix it up. Back his last chance, and he gets oh, great Nice well, Crossfire, I mean, it sounds like it looks to me like Crossfire should always have just gone with Bob. He looks so sunny with him. Yeah, I mean, like you said, a vulnerable. Uh, he's not a uh, Bob picking Bob now. It's kind of like if you have a Bob and you're solid with them, is there many reasons to switch off of them because of how strong a character he was? I didn't think Bob was weak before anyway, but people always compared to him how he was before. So now he kind of has. He's got it was a new 15 frame launcher as well from, from standing. He's got the, the crouch dash that launches on normal hit as well. It's uh, it's hard to think where do you fight this character. But again, look, Macharino, money, money, money. One four nine fifty. Keep donating, guys. It's looking good. Money, 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 money. Got got VP Mark VP UK. Mark, yeah, with that 25 direct dollar contribution, this Tekken is good ass. Definitely, definitely. Take some shout outs here to some of the caliber players coming through. We've got Eyelash Wish with the two coupon code usages. Thank you very much for coming through, buddy. Let's get some of these uh, messages. Thank you, Tenno Media, for organizing this by Rekzu. Uh, Zanetsu, ready for some good ass Tekken. I mean, this Tekken is the goodest ass of Tekken that I've seen in a long time, so definitely fulfilling those promises. Take it Make easy. Sure it's it's just objectifying Tekken, the goodest <laughs> ass Tekken. Like, come on, man. Tekken worth more than the goodest, the goodest of the asses of Tekken. That is a, that's an actual sentence that I'm standing by, and I will die on this hill. Okay. Make sure you head over to the Tenno Media Twitter, YouTube, and Patreon accounts. Twitter.com/slash Tenno Media, YouTube.com/slash Tenno Media, Patreon.com/slash Tenno Media. I just want to ask, like, just as a kind of carry on from Abominable, what kind of sorcery was it that allowed you to have these URLs and not get taken by anybody else? Because you know, that's it's kind of crazy that you got three different accounts, especially Twitter and YouTube. <laughs> yeah, it's, very, it's like a bit of a meme being a caster or commentator that you, 
so on socials, it's like reading out a phone book. <laughs> you just like, yeah, right, right, exactly. stay with me, guys, stay with me. So if you want to, <laughs> if you want to mail, uh, there's a pick box. Uh, no, that's that's very very easy for us indeed. What good matches we've had so far. Yeah, I mean the matches have been so much fun. No, I'm not going. I'm getting these people in my ear telling me to just ask random questions. Uh, but yeah, uh, Tekken has been Tekken today has been so much fun, and we're like what a quarter of the way through. Um, so yeah, I'm so excited for the rest of the uh, rest of the night. And whilst we're big in up people left, right and centre, big up the TOs. They've always got a match for us, ready and waiting. And what a match, Super Akuma versus Dragon Fist. Well, arguably the, the best player, yeah, the best player in the EU, Super Akuma, um, consistently been top. We'll always ride or die with Akuma, no matter of the, the nurse he has. He's still a super strong character and Super Akuma, he actually he entered, I think, maybe the first or the second one. He hasn't got the win, which at the time, when any time he doesn't take the win, it's always going to be surprising. But really strong player. Let's see how he deals with uh, Dragon Fist Law. He actually played against Gosein in the other one, and Gosein kind of really broke him down. Nice. So, yeah, well, this is a bad match for Law. Go ahead, sorry. No, I was just going to ask, what are the thoughts on, uh, on Akuma in Season 4 at the moment? Do you know what? I haven't really looked at the season four changes for Akuma, but from what I've seen, it's playing quite similarly. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's uh, there's much difference in how you, you, know, you, you still have to do those things. You still have to try and jab around the air. Law's jab kind of high as well. We saw like the same did a lot of that as well. So I still you kind of have to play the same way. Nice work there from Super Akuma. Get the launch back, back, jump over, and he gets with the front oh. two D shenanigans. He's going to move. He's been oh my he's God. Him through the entire stage. He went from the opposite side. That's insane. Scraping him up like silly bang. Oh, first round Super Kuma. Dragon Hammer. Oh, nice. <laughs> this feels a little bit disrespectful. It was like a bit of BM. Good. He's always need to be ready to jab out the air. Raw jab, really useful. I think it's his high jab as well, and the way he does it, the way he extends, he always gonna really get to Kuma. Oh, oh no, no! Yeah, he got him in the back. Seeing the uh, the Akuma hate first hand here. I can't oh my god! god man. That was just let the man it. breathe. He's already dead. My god! In the back. What, what was that combo? Like, it was sick that he converted off that, but... Uh, nice rock. Nice rock. Great. Perfect length on that down four. Nice. Okay, with that axe kick. Very, very nice. The pokes coming from Super Akuma. Very, very nice into the low. Oh, that's the Wow, okay. Somebody stop this man. He just ran through him like nobody's business. There was a component I saw that I haven't really seen before. Law did a lot of moves that put himself in back turn that got him hit in the back. So, like I said, I haven't seen that so much. I mean, I've seen it with Feng, where I've done stuff in back turn with Feng and I'm letting him combo me in the back. So, I guess he's got to consider that more because how many combos did he get hit in the back? Luckily, he didn't, it wasn't more, but he was kind of uh, putting himself in a dangerous situation with that. It's a bit like, do you know, I think I'm getting into his head at the time. I think he knows that he's going to have to handle the jump-ins. If you're playing a solid Akuma, you know you've got to handle it. So you're thinking, right, I need to jab, I need to throw stuff out to stop it. But you do need to wait until you see it first. Mm. Like, you throw the odd jab, but throwing out full strings, he actually, as you said, he pushed him under under the setup and he actually still got hit anyway. So he needs to be a bit more patient. He kind of did, he had a bit, a few, I, I would call, false starts where he almost went before the gun went, the gun being the jump over. Just needs to get a bit more patient. Yeah, I think definitely. patience is a is a virtue uh, against a lot of these um, a lot of these 2D characters that have been put into Tekken. You know, they can steamroll you at a moment's notice at the flick of a switch at the drop of a hat. Um, it's just like you make one mistake and they've carried you across the entire length of the stage and then they wall combo you and then they're picking you up again and then they're carrying you again and then you're dead. Um, so, you know, patience is just, it's very, very important. In a game like Tekken, you know, you have to be very, very patient in general. The movement, uh, 
is a lot more deliberate in this game. And I think especially when you've got a character that can just jump over your strings, uh, you just you got you got to basically Goku Ultra Instinct every single move that you do. Otherwise, you're just going to get hit in the back four or five times and you're dead. Did Kawis pay oh, you to bring up Dragon Ball Z? Fight. Of course he did. <laughs> I was waiting. I was going to say, you do know a bomber doesn't know what Ultra Instinct is. Though. I know what Ultra Instinct <laughs> is. They're just better cartoons. Came out about 10 years wow, he called that. DBZ. Okay, can we all can we all get an abominable for calling DBZ a cartoon? That that arise exposed itself as a weeb. Oh <laughs> uh, mate, if you, if you want me to get a weeby, I can get a weeby. <laughs> nice. Four, two plus four. Oh, nice! Oh, Dragon Oh! Round two. Uh, nice. Side deck three plus four. Good start now. That's nice, it. Dude! This is exactly how I saw the same playlist match against Super Akuma. <laughs> oh my god. Watching stuff like that, it legit makes me think we're playing uh, Tekken anime right now. Nice. Dragon Hammer. Dragon Fist is just pressing a lot of sidesteps, not able to capitalize on any of the whiffs that Super Akuma oh, is throwing out nice. there, though. Oh, there we go, infinite stage carry. Just let me know when this is over here. Yeah? Okay, it's done for me. Oh, it's been a costly whiff. They're playing a really jab heavy game now, no one really committed to anything big, but it's gonna happen. Oh my god. Oh, <laughs> Jumping oh, Fist has the adrenaline the going through him. These for days. Oh my oh, god. god! He got into the Razor. Okay, that was actually pretty godlike. KO. The fact he was that he was conditioned. Round he he know he had to have something big to come back. All those lows stacked up and he got him to duck and hit him with the while standing two. Nice work. The Dragon Fist, two games up rounds against Super Akuma. Nice. This is what we're talking about. Wait until you see it, then throw it out. That's what you want to do. Oh, not quite close enough for a whiff punish. Super Akuma heavy on the attack now. Try to go for focus. Oh, but a beautiful whiff punish. It is going to be almost dead, but against Dragon Fist. What's the mix going to be? Nice and though. Every time, Come on. Oh, no, that is unfortunate. It gets a counter hit with a get up low. Shokunuts, and he's dead. Bless you. Round four. <laughs> Fight. Oh my lord. So is there okay, infinite stages elude me. I don't really understand the point of them. Is there like is there a trick to playing on infinite stages? It just looks like nobody really takes advantage of them. What are you talking about? I'll figure it out. Nice size. Go on to after this, because I need time to process that. You soul caliber player. He's too, too <laughs> clever for me. I've seen your streams. Two gigabrain. Two gigabrain for sure. Nice. <laughs> Down four. Precise then. Final round. Are you saying that people should be spacing each other out more rather than going hell for leather? Yeah, of course. You have an right, infinite I, thing. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. I'll get you now. Took me around. Big counter hit. Dive kicks. Yeah, oh, he's wow, not so getting much. That's it. That's it. That's it. He'd stop doing that for a moment, and that's when he starts to eat it. Oh, the fake. Oh, oh no. he's seen that. He's seen that all day, but nice work, though. Not Look great. at the bars, guys. Look at the bars. Look at the bars. Oh, no. He's one right down three. He doesn't. Oh, he could have spent it. Could have spent it. Oh, he's dead. Oh, there we go. Oh, there it is. Yeah. See, even I'm aware of that. <laughs> even I'm aware of that. That two bar spend on a death. Oh, yeah, you crazy. saw that down to you. Oh, he's dead. Leave it. There, he's dead. Mm -hmm. as, as soon as his, his fist touched it, you just know he's he's dead. <laughs> what I, I, what I learned, I learned recently, like from uh, actually K Wissy was talking about this before about how compared to the other Akuma players, um, Pakistan region was known for sort of. Reintroduce it in Akuma whenever and wrote him off and all the top players now nah, he's nothing. They showed him. Super Akuma is very jump heavy and people aren't pressing much because you know, obviously they're scared of getting hit. But like you said abominable, you do have to think, do you know what, he's jumping a lot. I need to watch, wait, and, and jab him. Obviously you get float combos, but 
you have to consistently do that. This same setup was when Go Same played Super Kuma. It was on an infinite stage, same characters as well. He was sidestepping, launching with down for two, jabbing him out the air as well. He was interacting with just a standing three or standing four with Law. The way his leg hits, he kind of hits at a high angle. So knowing that Super Kuna is a very sort of jump heavy Akuma, it's uh, something that you can really take advantage of. Yeah, I, I think if we had Super Kuma as that fourth square, the fourth panel, he'd probably say, no, I've got an option to beat this. But from my point of view, coming back to Daniel's question, which was a valid question, like, do, do you want to use all this space? Do you want to use the space of the infinite stage? Or, and this is my view, I'd probably want to sit, sit in the pocket and try and be at that right space to catch those jump ins and bait them a little bit more. Now, I know Super Kuma would say, oh, but if you do that, I'll do this. And then that's Tekken, right? That is the definition of a, any fighting game, whether it be Tekken, Soul Calibur or otherwise. But I've noticed that he does like to jump in. And if you're confident that you can sit in the pocket and react to them and convert all of those jump ins, you know, your quid's in. Um, and he, Dragon Fist was close in that last game. The game kind of got away from him a little bit. But don't what? let this get away from you. Same time. To do that exact same thing. Abominable. <laughs> to do that. Let them know, abominable. Let them know. Go. Oh, damn. Please do donate via Macharino ICFC EU ERE4. There, I went and said it. For a free 50 cents donation. Please do also donate. Um, Chris Keg, is that a rough deal? And then Mark uh, VP, thank you very much. Chris oh. Keg, sorry, boss. Yeah, Love you so lot. Close. But yeah, big shout outs. Like, we got a $50 direct contribution from Orithil. Uh, King. I don't know if I. King Aggie. There we go. I've been able to say it. $19.50. Thank you very much. Nice. Merry Christmas, ICFC. GGWP. Thank you very much for those direct contributions. We're getting into the next game. Let's go. Oh, Roger Maxis. So we saw him last week there. One of the few Shaheens left. And he's going to get his DBP with Bob. Oh, there we go. Crown Flash 1. Oh, a bit shy of the wall. Nice. Trying to end it with strings, but that's punishable. Doesn't Ooh. convert off it fully. Ooh, nice close round. Round two. Fight. Nice. Oh, what a beautiful call out with the launcher. That carry is going to give him so much yeah. advantage. That, that bang. Nice. Look at that. Almost 50% gone already. Stood up and he got hit by the last hit of that stream. And DVP is like, you carry me to the wall? I'll carry you to the wall. Here we go. Switch reverse. Doesn't punish. Oh, a bit slow to punish the power crush as well. Oh, good idea, but no, he didn't press. It was a bit too, a bit too early. Round three. Fight. Two good rounds for DVP. No duck. Nice, oh, good to stay in each other's face, just poking away. Good. Oh, beautiful low power here. We go, Roger Maxis. Very nicely done. Moving him to the wall. What's the OK going to be? Trying to step around him, keep him at that wall, but get belly flip. See you later. But never mind. Get swift roundhouse kick to the face. Roger Maxis making swift work of that wall combo. Fight. It yeah, jumps to the chunky one. That was solid. That was a lot of damage, but short range of the wall. One plus two. Nice, good, decent splat. Bam, bang, yeah. Staples, sweet bang. No, goes to mid. Yes, yeah, punish that. Low parry though. DVP making as much oh, no. as he can. See, he done the same scenario and then went uh, mid, so that's why he went low. Excellent work from Roger for reading that. Doesn't get the round though. DVP just poking with those mids, making sure that Roger Maxis stays stand blocking, and then that cheeky low once again. We'd love to see it. You do. There's so, something that Ru Kang said to me like a year ago. He was talking about why he likes to play Bob on Sue, uh, and he said that if you know the way the walls are, you can. You, and you've got your back to the wall. You can throw out more risky moves, and even if you get launched, you'll do a side slap. But he was thinking about, so his whole risk reward changed. Wow. He wasn't going to get a massive splat. He wasn't, mm. so he could throw out more health sweeps. And I was thinking, wow, that is next level. That and is. I, 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 now, now he told me that. When he told me that, I've started to see other players 
I've started to see it more in other players where they've got the back to the wall, they'll go for something more risky because they know their risk reward has changed because they're so <laughs> close to the wall. Mm. So interesting. Ru Kang's in the chat like, damn, why are you telling people? Like, But that is so true. I've, just, I've never thought about that. Just, you know, obviously we know the side walls mess up combos and when you're back to the wall as well. So that's true. Like some, something can so be so obvious, but you think, do you know what? If I intentionally, you know, do this unsafe move. Yeah, I launched him, but then they have that kind of brain fog where oh, actually the wall's there. And then they think about the wall, they try to adjust and they do nothing. And then you're like, well, I'm going to do it again. And then... Wow, all right, I'm writing that down. That is going in my Discord tech because that is uh, <laughs> something I never thought about. That's just, that just kind of shows the level of competitiveness that a fighting game can allow or can, can cater to. Because like you get a launch, you're going to try and follow a combo route, you're going to try and follow the optimal combo route. But a person who can see and acknowledge where they are on the stage, how far away they are from the wall, and how that will change the combo that they need to work towards is what makes somebody a top tier competitor and a champion. Indeed. Indeed. Something that Bubsy always likes to call out with his comments today. He also says, good awareness, good awareness there. And I think that is a huge thing. That is a, that is a really important uh, element of a good Tekken player. Bang, bang, he's dead. Wow. DVP just steamrolling Roger right now. Fight. Ooh, trying to go for that current dash again. Poking away, that's it. Trying to interrupt. They didn't respect the frames there. Punish that, nice. Good break. That's great. Lows on lows. Oh, nice side step. Oh, no. Oh, it doesn't get the punish. And to pu punish them slides. If you, some of them are easy, but some of them you have to know exactly what move and how to punish it. And he doesn't get it. Nice. I'll stand a launch there from Bob. You're going to do big damage. Back, 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 bang. Doosh, doosh. Look at that. 50% gone already. Oh, wow. That was less than 10 seconds in, and DBP's already at an incredible life advantage. Oh, just throws it out. Gets yeah. in. Oh, look at this complete turnaround now, just off of that power crush. Oh, look at that. Jabbed him in the face. Oh my uh, god. Below. DBP was in the lead. He did the power crush when he didn't need to. It got standing punish, nothing big, and then he got hot kick and he lost the round because of one move he didn't really need to do. Now, this can all change. No warps now. Yeah, Roger, Maxis seems... Roger Maxis is looking very adaptable, though. Like, that, that, uh, that round that we just saw, second round, or third round, sorry, uh, Roger Maxis is doing a lot of them double back steps into trying to whiff punish and then mix ups. But in this one, trying to almost go all out, like, not scared of a single thing, but that is going to get him low parry, and DVP drops the combo! Which means he's not going to be able to kill just yet. Oh, there's a swift mid punch. And Roger takes it. He's looking nice. good. I don't know a huge amount about Roger Max, but he's going toe to toe with DBP. He's known to be one of the best Bob players in Europe, and he's looking really solid. Absolutely. I, I didn't know he, he this person existed until a few weeks ago. So, yeah, it's good that you're seeing new players. And again, Shaheen. Who really plays Shaheen? He's, he's, I was told he's one of the last Shaheens, like, in, in EU as well, people kind of just left him. He's, he doesn't really appeal to too many people. There's a key moment that I, I, I saw in that where DBP was just banging around. He got he launched him while standing launched by Bob. Now he did the Ru Kang, uh, I'm not saying Ru Kang strategy, but he's known for Power Crush when you've got the life lead and you're trying to steal your turn back to get the wall splat. Now Power Crush is unsafe and he did his standing punish and he, he, he got the damage. But then from that, he tried to sidestep and he got hop kick. Then he lost two rounds. So that can show you just thinking, I'm in the lead. Do I really need to do that unsafe move to just go for the wall uh, splat? That turnaround, that momentum shift can cost you the game because that hop kick, the momentum shifted completely just because of one power crush. And Bob's one is the animation that we talked about can be deceiving, where he puts his belly out in front, you know, it's easy to block punish. So I think he might have to dial that back a little bit because he kind of let that run away from him. I would agree with you. Wherever to Mishima Dojo, this is a, so many players' favourite stage. Any, any reason why? Just aesthetically pleasing? It's a, it's an even-sized uh, stage, mostly, and I, I think it 
you, you see a lot of combo videos on it and originally when there wasn't an absolute crap ton of wall carry um it's on the <laughs> stage where you often would get wall to wall um but the thing is one thing i have noticed is when players do pick this as their stage you know their favorite stage to pitch a win it's for the other guy's favorite stage as well mm. uh, yeah, yeah, but, yeah but who's who's is the more favorite that's what's important you're going next uh, level on me. You're going next level on me. That's the, that's the Ultra Instinct tech. <laughs> You've done it again. He used the Power Crush there, got him the round, stole his turn back when he had the life lead. Oh, wait. Gets him with a sweet bang. Oh, a bit slow on the launch there. Another one. Good step into punish. This is going to be some... Oh, they has got the follow-up, though. With that belly block. There we go. Uh, no, it doesn't get it. Doesn't. Yep. Ooh, I was going to say, this isn't. This might not be the end for Roger Maxis because we saw in the previous game he was able to come back from a, like a 60% uh, 60 combo, but unfortunately, uh, DVP just keeping composed. This is here. Nice, good punish on the hot kick there. There we go. There's the new move from Bob. Crushes over the low, launches on normal hit. Goes to tackle. Just trying to catch him coming in. Timing was off though. Get sweet. Oh, very, very nice low parry. This could well be it. No, what happened there? Oh, the low parries on low parries. Roger Max is maybe able to bring this back if he's able to get this wall combo. No! Oh no, what's Just going on? Drops. It was the whiffs on whiffs on whiffs, but there's the oh. very nice round four. Himself in there. All right, now good start for him now. Make this count. Nice bat, 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 bang, nice. Maxis back with his own wall combo. Pretty hefty damage. Wow! It's a hot kick. This two scumbag moves. Final round. That felt very disrespectful on Roger's part. Very big. This is absolutely critical now. Final round. Nice. Push him back. Boot. Nice. Get the... And picks him up, but no, doesn't get the splat optimal. Absolutely critical now. Oh, Roger Max just doesn't get it. DBP with the belly. Wow. Very nice done good. by DBP. Very, very close game. Roger Max is looking really, really strong. I mean, are we going to talk about DBP's choice of costume? I mean, that was absolutely shocking. I'm going to have nightmares about that. <laughs> really disturbing nightmares. I mean, from, from, what I, from what I hear of Bob players, they're all degenerates. So, you know, it's par for the course, really. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you may well be right, though. <laughs> so, with, um, with that, Roger Max is excellent work when he tried come back in that in that second game complete turnaround how much do you think the wall played into this Dan because we talked about how people choose this stage and how small it is looking at that in your opinion was you think the wall was in play in that or the stage or do you just think DVP just kind of got a read of his play style this is going to sound a little bit disrespectful but the wall played a big part in not being utilized that well because there were quite a few dropped wall combos that could have ended games and ended rounds. Mm. Um, and of course, it could be for a plethora of reasons. It could be because the launch that you thought was going to give you a proper wall splat only gave you a low splat. It could be because you thought that you weren't going to splat at a specific time, so you tried to you tried to MacGyver this kind of weird combo out of nowhere that you didn't think was going to happen. Um, so. Yeah, so uh, I mean, I'm only 27 and I know about MacGyver. It's a weird reference that just popped into my head. Um, but yeah, I think generally uh, when you have a wall there, you need to utilize it as much as possible. If you're a character that has incredible wall combos, like we saw uh, DBP, BDP, BDP, uh, utilize in the previous game, like a 60% combo is going to put you in incredible uh, life advantage, but also mental advantage as well, because when you're at 20, 30, 40% life, you're going to probably be a little bit more reserved if you don't think you can bring it back. Uh, so yeah, I think a wall is incredibly important, especially on a stage like that. One thing I do notice is when um, when Bob, when it's a Bob match, he gets a lot of low wall splats where he doesn't get to follow up. 
You notice that boot. The boot just seems to end end the war game. Uh, it's, it, you get a lot more awkward war spats with Bob, I've noticed. But we have a hell of a game coming up. Crossfire versus Mistress Storm. That's our oh, Mistress Storm. So he's a. I mean, who knows who he use? He's got a few characters, but I know him as being a fantastic Nina player. You don't see a lot of Ninas these days. Um, but I'm told I believe Nina's Mistress... bad. So. Uh, she's. Uh, <laughs> he's got. <laughs> so I want she's it. Got, yes. She's I think got it's limitations. A... It's people like it's the work to benefit ratio with her. I, yes. I think people uh, are like, do you know what? Do I use this character and potentially mess up, you know, Flapping Bird and and you know any other um, her stuff, or use someone else? It's like what, certain characters in this game are like, unless you love them, why pick someone that takes so much commitment and maybe execution when there's people that do what they do easier? And I think kind of Nina's uh, unless they've used them for years or they really love the character. You look at the character and think, you know, it's a lot of stuff to do, so I'm just going to not even, you know, bother with it. I feel that pain, man. I feel it. And it's going with the sister. It's going with Anna. I'll say, the other thing about, like, if you look at Farang, like, the better you get with Farang, the more you can do with him. And he's, But he's good from the start. He's a good character from the start if you're just picking him up. Whereas of Nina, she only really yeah, gets very, very, very strong, I believe, as you get really, really well, good with her. Mm -hmm. But it's not Nina we're looking at. We're looking at Anna. So what are the main differences between Anna and Nina? They're hugely different. They, they, they've they diverted more and more over the years. Um, uh, Anna's a lot more simple to play, but um, it's probably a bit more cool. Cool animations. Um, but Nina's got just way more buttons and uh, way more complex uh, uh, movements that you have to do. Hayashida step, for example. Okay. Nice. It took the work. It, Italy, wow. Italy there. So I believe Mr. Strong was actually, he won the online challenge as well. So really strong player. Okay, he went into the Chaos Judgment and then get launched. That's good pressure there. Balcony's right behind. Oh, he's got lucky with that and he gets the balcony break too. Nice. There's another thing that we should note is that characters have a knack of falling out of Anna combos. It's been a competitive Anna players for a while. You can see it a bit there. Yeah, nice work. And this should take it, and he's going to get the wall as well, the balcony. Sorry, the, the wall. Nice. The booty takes it. <laughs> take it easy, gentlemen. It's early. <laughs> <laughs> Two days till Christmas. We've just got a corrupt you now, Abominable. Me and Dragon have both uh, mentioned asses. <laughs> Or, you know, arses, or ass, ass. Arses, you know, good enough. Nice launch. Nice stay on the ground. Oh, he just took her head off, man. And this. Oh, a bit shy of the wolf. Is he going to go low? No, he goes with a fine knee. Also, one well, thing with Anna, the full crouch mix up more prevalent, you know, with uh, Anna. Nice work. Yeah. Really be dirty. And you want, <laughs> you want to win the stages as well, ideally, to use that kind of pressure. Storm an incredible life lead at the moment. Definitely don't want to try and throw that away, but Crossfire hitting him with the lows, the mix up, trying to keep Storm right at that wall, but a nice. good Ooh. counter. Storm. Very, very nice. Maneuvered. Rage Drive blocked. Oh no, we didn't pull the trigger on finish the string. Didn't believe in himself. Oh, he tried to use the backing blow. Final round. Commit or die. Fight. And crossfire die for that. Good down jab to interrupt, stop the pressure, and nice. Ooh. Can we get carry all the way to the wall? Should do. No, not quite. Oh, look at the tracking on that. Some incredible oh, hip -hop oh, oh my, okay. You win. My Crossfire had all of the momentum in that game and just managed to flunk it in the last two rounds. Not entirely sure how, but I mean, Storm managing to come back. Very, very nicely done. I mean, yeah. Looking good, looking good indeed.
I'm kind of sad. Like I, I've got no horse in this race, but I did kind of want Mistress to lose that first game, so he would go and pick Nina. <laughs> okay. Just so, he, just because I could, so I could see his Nina, because his <laughs> Nina is unbelievably good. There's only yeah. a few amazing Ninas in and around Europe. Saber Deva, uh, Mistress Storm, uh, Mister T in the UK back in the day, and a couple of other UK players. Obviously, Bonus Gin. But there's, mm. oh. Oh my lord, that was really well played, really well played for Mana. And he, he just played it very, very solid, very patient when he had his back to the wall. He was eating up a lot of pressure from Crossfire, but it just soaked it all up. Yeah, he didn't really use any of, until the, the very end, he didn't use any any full crouch mix-ups. But I believe it either whiffed or he got blocked. And because he either whiffed or he got blocked, he tried to punish it with the hop kick and he blocked it. And that's how he did able to get the win. So again, I think we we're going to see something similar where because he hasn't used any of these mix-ups where she can um, launch you from crouch, from full crouch, is that later on it's going to play, uh, it's going to play a big part because he hasn't done it yet. He just played fundamentals. He just space, just used the water's advantage. He got a few, he got some lucky moments because Elisa has these back swing blows where they pressure you at the wall. She boosts back and then she'll hit you. So he tried to do that a few times and just got caught. So um, yeah, just kind of got lucky on there. Well, we'll see what adjustments will be made. It's only the first game that's been won. Oh. Fire systems. Another stage that people quite kind of pick. It's not like huge. It's not too small. But I think it's probably the shape and just where they where they line up. People think that they've probably got enough space to move, but the walls are always there when you need that bit extra damage. I'll say something else. I reckon Round one. when you hear, you hear the music on the stage, there's a bit of energy coming from uh, the Tekken World Tour music because this is one of the songs you hear a lot on the Tekken World Tour videos. So you just kind of it just gets you in, gets you in the mood, gives you the energy. Gets okay, you in the mood, does it? Take it easy. There you go. <laughs> oh no! No, he did not make him pay for that spring kick. Chainsaws. Super oppressive, but still managing to get out of that vortex of chainsaws. Carrying right. right back into that yeah. middle of the arena. Mm. He tried to scout the low uh, when he was in the stance, but um, just got caught in the air. Oh, oh my god. god! Straight up jabbed out the rage drive. Very nice. Just slapped the robot out of that. Just, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. yes! Oh. What a Again, no, I'll catch the counter hit low. You turn around, back in it now. That even on life, just for that. Oh, no, oh, you have it. Oh, excellent. Very young Dora, so. Oh, he tried it. He was worried about that rage drive, I understand, but it's sometimes you could spot yourself up mentally just getting worried about the rage drive, and it looked like it might happen there. Mm. Pressure to crossfire. Using stance. We said a difference as well. Anna had that chaos judgment stance that can really destroy lows when she's in that, as we saw. Oh no, Ooh. he did make him pay for that. It's hard to think how much pressure she's such a big hitbox, you're worried that you might get hit. KO. Okay, crossfire Round looking four. super dominant in this game. Fight. Thank you, Tim Otano with the raid as well. One of the Spanish, the best Spanish players out there. Thank you, there, Timotano. Oh, he did stays crouching, but oh, nearly got in there with the one standing. Just pressure. He's waiting for his time. Oh no, he didn't carry a block, and he got hit by the second. I hit. love that, Joe. There's the Ray Drive expended. Just on the power of the jab. One. Fight. Good yeah. whip. Oh, no, you don't. It's a right in the corner, not just to the wall corner there as well. Really needs this pressure. Excellent work. He tried to scout the low in the Chaos Drive stance. Good block punish. Oh, no, oh the side dead. switch into. Okay. That was god tier movement from Crossfire. Elisa has um, really good movement, and it's her stance as well, as was kind of recently talked about 
And you just think, how did this go not spoken about for many years? And in terms of how her stance is, she kind of stands more upright. So her movement compared to her idle stances when she backdashing, she mm. can avoid a lot of things and her movement is good. Where some other stances, look at those sort of more, the, the classic characters, they have a wide martial arts stance and their legs are getting caught when they're trying to dash. So at least her, how she stands in front of her movement, you, you saw an example there. Excellent spacing, good movement, got the wall splat and then sidestep to adjust to get the full combo. Good work. Oh, we're gonna see Nina. Come on, mistress. Mm. Oh, give us Nina. I want to see it. I want to see the Nina. <laughs> I hope we do. Like I said, we don't see that many Ninas, and when this is, I imagine this is his main. Is his main? So I want to see the Nina. He actually won the online challenge, I believe, with Nina um, in the final game as well, and he, he's known for that. So there's probably an element of stuff that these players before both being from the Italian scene as well yep. there is some there are some weird interactions that I'm seeing like why would you do that there that was coming in my mind but I'm seeing okay they probably know each other as well but yeah so you're talking I... about a commentary there you, dragon <laughs> <laughs> why are you saying it's that just... what a fucking idiot what I, like that. <laughs> I think that. I think that's I think that's generally something that um that when a fighting game has been around for so long uh you get more of these player mashups than you would character mashups so whether or not your character is a top five or a bottom five, if you know each other so well, you're going to be playing very differently to if you were to find somebody in tournament or even in rank who you don't know that well because you don't trust them to make the same kind of decisions. Um, so, you know, I think that's part of what makes fighting games great is that you can get these player matchups where things just don't really seem like they should work, but they do because they've done something that nobody else would ever do. Round one. And look right. at that, that's all I do, something no one else would do. Look at that what outfit! Oh, that is an abomination. Can we, can we, can we ban, please? Nice damage. Can we get the Nina as you wanted, Abominable? She's, nice. so, I, she's so good to watch. She's got so many options. I mean, and Storm is running through Crossfire right now. Yeah, Nina is super sick. Imagine playing against Mistress Storm and then you know you get past the Adder and you know you've got the Nina to face. Yeah, it's tough it's like, when they have a main character and then they haven't even pulled them out yet and they're still difficult to deal with. It's like Anna's the uh you know the, the side bosses, the mini bosses, and then once you get to the uh once you get to the gates of heaven, Nina is the main end boss that you have to get through. Black and Decker time, no, puts them back away. Nice, just poking away low. Try to use the, the homing move there, stop the, the side step. Oh, hop kick <laughs> in the power crush. Both spacing away from the wall. Cameraman is on a written warning on this stage. You never know when the wall's going to hit you. Oh, beautiful step with punish. Close out oh, the oh, 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 very nicely tech. That is the one thing that is such a big disadvantage for her that when you break her chain throw, she takes damage. So that is just unfortunate. He did it with such low life, fully committed to it. Can we get that in, in Calibur? If you break it, <laughs> the, the other person takes the damage. That would be no, great. I, I'm with you on that. I am with you on that. Not, not the other way around. <laughs> You broke it in your minus and you lose life. Like, okay. Is this going to go to a final round or will Crossfire take it? No, it's with yeah. punish. This should be it. This should be a final round if he just finishes his dinner. Damn, that, that carries you. <laughs> Very nice. Version. Final round, ladies and gentlemen. Winner goes through winners. Oh, oh no. we get caught pressing button. Crossfire got that nice life advantage at the moment, but it doesn't matter because Storm is going to be pressing buttons into your buttons and going to get carried to the opposite side. Oh, that doesn't Ooh, pull it. Got doesn't there. Commit. Once again, Crossfire not committing to that whiff punish. Not able to get full combo from it. Jump punish. Just poking away, keeping all this pressure. Oh, he's the timing! No! Crossfire takes it. And it just, whoever was pre pressing buttons was winning. That's what it yeah. felt like. You saw Mistress Storm, like, put his offense on, no problems. But 
I, what a bold move as well from Crossfire to go for that huge low right at the start of the game, the, that final round. And it wasn't even at close range. It was at a, a big distance, but caught him, and then that started all the momentum for him. Yeah, for sure. I think there's something to be said about uh, throwing out those really big moves and just taking advantage of the uh, of the spacing that you can create. I mean, we saw in the uh, in some of the previous rounds that they were trying to space away from the walls because if you're going to get launched near a wall and the other person's got their combo game on lock, you're going to get almost destroyed. So it was nice to see them spacing out quite nicely, putting themselves back into that neutral space rather than one person trying to rush each other down. And like you were saying, Abominable, um, whoever was pressing buttons was winning. But the buttons that you should be pressing, the more important buttons, the button that matters the most is that contribute button once you're signed in to then push in some more buttons, more specifically in the case of the buttons of ICFC EU PRE4 to add a free 50 cent donation to the prize pot. Big thank you to the people who have direct contributed so far. Let's just have a really quick refresh. Uh, Orothil with the $50.50. .50. Uh, VP Mark, GGWP's boss. This Tekken is good ass. Uh, King Aggie with the $20. Merry Christmas, ICFC. Uh, thank you very much to everybody who's direct contributed so far. If you can keep getting it on, we can keep putting these on for you. And we're also $200-ish away from around 420, which is what I want to see. But also stay connected with the Intercontinental Fight Club that's going to be going on throughout 2021. Twitter.com slash Tenno Media, YouTube.com slash Tenno Media, and Patreon.com slash Tenno Media if you want to directly support the efforts of the Tenno Media crew. Nice. We are progressing steadily into uh, the late stage of this tournament. Just quickly, we have some results in terms of who's made it into top eight. So we can see that Super Akuma and DBP have made it into top eight winner side. They're going to be facing off in the first one of the first games. And we have Crossfire. So we've only got mm -hmm. three so far, but we're getting towards the end of these brackets. And I just want to have a quick look at some of the uh, some of the other ones because there's some killers that are in this tournament that we haven't seen appear so far. So we've got Fergus. He's going to be facing Kalak in winners finals. That is going to be a really good match. Winner of that match will then make it out into winner's side top eight. Then going on the loser's side, we have the Phantom versus Kaizoku Lars, the Lars that took out Chicken Maru. So speaking of Chicken Maru, he has been eliminated by that drunken master, which is obviously a lay, a lay main. Nice work, and um, Phantom going to be taking on that Kaizoku Lars. So yeah, we've still got some good matches coming up. So if there's a couple of characters that I want to see in this top eight, uh, definitely Lei, because I think Lei is one of the coolest characters in Tekken. Uh, but I think Fergus, if he doesn't play Kunimitsu, I'm going to have a word with him. I'm going to send him a cheeky DM and tell him that Kunimitsu needs to be on screen, or I'm going to unsub from his channel. Uh, but unfortunately, no, we're going with the Asuka, so unfortunately you Fergus got is going to be... Going to be something. losing this support. <laughs> right, but, but you know, Asuka is his main. He's been playing Asuka since the beginning of Tekken 7. It's been his been his waifu through thick and thin. And it makes complete sense, to be honest, that he'd be picking her in, uh, in ICFC. I thought he might have gone with maybe Julia as well. I'm not sure how much he's played her. But, I mean, Julia's a strong character. And I know that he um, is excited for her as well. So... Good to also though, though to see him stick with the Oscar. That's what everybody knows him for, and it, it, you know that's what in a way you want to see. True, 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 true. Chat, let us know who do you want to win. Who do you think is going to win, Fergus or Kalak? Four two. Wall's right there behind him. Goes with the knee. Poking away. And Fergus doing the exact same thing that he did the first time we saw him on stream. Pressuring people to the walls and just playing incredibly patiently. Oh, wall bounce. Splat, splat. Just wants to mix up. No, just backs away. Oh, no, he could have walled me splat. Doesn't break the grab. What's the Oki going to be? Oh, runs up and just catches me. him. Round two. Oh, oh really fell away from Fergus then. He had so much momentum, but he just lost it uh, when he got back to the wall. Interesting, in about 15 seconds it just all went away and now we got launched. This won't reach the wall. Okay, and he's gone. <laughs> no, it doesn't break the balcony. I mean, why am I even questioning wall bouncing in this game? Season four. Why am I even saying that? I mean, you you simultaneously commentators cursed both of them. <laughs> 
Damn. Nice Hello. move of evil. Stomps on his toes. Completely running through Fergus at the moment. Somebody said in chat that Calic has never lost to Fergus, and it's looking like that streak will continue. Just Fergus is able to pull something out of the bag. Calic is going to be dominating Fergus, and it will, will continue to dominate Fergus in this first game. That feels like something you just tell your mate to put on Twitch chat, just so, just, just in case I lose. <laughs> tell him I've never lost to him, ever. Yeah, just right. Kind of stumped at how he's going to break his defense there now. Kalik just doesn't really need to do much. Okay, once safe. Again, yeah, once again, Fergus is playing a very, very, very slow game. Whereas Kalik is just picking his points perfectly and is able to pick apart Fergus's offense and defense. Beautiful block punish. But Fergus is going to get his first round on the board, putting himself in contention. Fight. Slaps. Nice work. No throw break so far. Command and regular. Oh, he's going to convert off of this. Nice. Even on a trade, a really good conversion. No wall break on this one. Fergus wants to keep her where he wants her. Great position, though. That that throw break worked in his favor. Because the balcony's there. And yeah, he's dead. There we go. So, would, would that have been optimal? I mean, it might have been unavoidable. But would it have been optimal to kill with the wall break? Or would it be advisable to kind of keep the wall break for the final round if you're able to make use of it. I don't think in this particular matchup there's a huge amount of difference in it. Um, but that can depend on the character. Okay. Let's punch that ground. Oh no! Oh. Even if that wasn't intentional, that was very, very spicy to watch. And it looks like Kalak, according to the chat, We'll be continuing his streak, not losing to Fergus. That was uh, we will see. The, the camera and just the, some of the moves that they interact together, they just move off to the side. So unlucky there. Like what, what you, from what you said, Dan, right? And what Abominable said, it, it does really depend on the character. And I guess the player, how well are you at using the, the balcony and the walls? Does your game revolve around it? If they're gonna kill, you probably just might not even care and just and just hit him anyway because you could be the one getting combos after but then if you play a character that you know can really excel at the wall you might think you know i think that probably made more plays into um, a factor with floor breaks than probably wall breaks to be honest because floor breaks characters that don't launch on regular hit now have launches characters that can launch and, and do big damage get even more damage on floor breaks so i think people probably think more about that i should save this when it comes to, to floor breaks as opposed to uh, like balconies and walls it, there, there is, there, it also does depend on the stage because if you're playing on Jungle Outpost, you may genuinely want to stay upstairs because it's so much smaller than downstairs, especially when downstairs is fully open up. Mm. On that stage, upstairs is kind of relatively slim and long, but not that small, whereas downstairs is pretty big. Anyway, you see where I'm going here. It goes into to mind games big time. Shima Dojo back at it again. I mean, random pick as well. Hmm. Okay, so here's here's my theory, right? In every tournament, the game decides what's going to be the most picked random stage. Like, there's no RNG to it. I genuinely think there may be a ghost in each fighting game that says this is the stage that's going to be RNG selected during random. Because we've had Machine Dojo so much. Uh, it's both kind of with random and in the pick, so... It's lost its appeal for me to being so good, you see it so much. <laughs> wall looking like Kalik now. Good lead, just keeping him there against the wall. Excellent, good punish there. All right, first break now from Fergus. By okay, so is there something that Fergus needs to be doing more of? Because right now it seems like he's trying to enforce his own game plan. And Kalik is just saying, no, I'm going to do what I do, whiff punish you, pressure you, and just combo you at the perfect opportunities. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, he's That's playing great. very fundamental, but I think Kalik is taking a little bit more of those risks and getting the bigger damage. You're not seeing too many like big moves from uh, Fergus, which... You know, I'm not saying that's wrong because you want to stay fundamental and safe, but all this poking. All right, there we go. Now is a big launch, and this is what he needs. Just bang. Good, good, good. 
The shirt doesn't spend nice. it while you throw it with. Kicks are right in the chest. <laughs> nice little boot. Double <laughs> <laughs> oh. Very risky with those kind of mix ups and cancels there as well. Someone could just disrespect with the hot kick. Oh, no, with punish. punish. That was so many. Fr I could count the frames of those. Nice, Good Lord. Lord. Fergus getting launched for that Round terribly four. timed low. Fight. Good interrupt. <laughs> yeah, that big knee in it. I mean, I'd probably react the same if I was going to kick me in the, in the private part, so. All right, you got the conversion. There'll be a mix up here. Get that sick stuff. Oh, he's so lucky. That was an air, an air hit. Oh, another trade in the air. Might not be lucky at this moment in time, though, Dragon. Is he going to be subject to the mix up? Yes, he is. Work from I mean, he had another life. If that was Matterhorn, he would have been dead already. He would have been dead if it hit mm. normally. So he had another um, a life uh, lifeline when it hit him in the air. But even though it didn't kill him, the situation after was still not his favor. So, you know, Kalak just playing very solid there. And what I was saying is the uh, not so much always big in terms of damage, but he got the float combos. He got the he took the big risk with Lily's stomp, the, the knee that ends in the low. A big mm. chunky damage move where Fergus was poking away, get less damage, but then each time went for something big, Kalik was blocking it and punishing it, and he wasn't really outside of the full crouch mix ups and also the uh, the forward two councils, he wasn't um, doing much to kind of throw off Kalik, but you know, great work. Fergus did in it, he's dropped down into losers, so I think he just needs one more game to make it out in losers' side to top eight, so we might be seeing more of him anyway. Absolutely. You can overanalyze these things. It's just a versus two, but it did look to me like Kalak had his timing. And I think if you've got an Asuka player's timing, a character that is built to catch counter hits, it really messes up Asuka's game plan. It really is a struggle for her. And it, uh, it seemed, just seemed to be the case. And if, if um, Kalak's friend is to, to, be, uh, to be trusted, yeah, I can see that if he does have his timing, it's going to be a horrible matchup for Fergus. And we're going to show you some highlights of a recent event. Roll VT. This, this is IFC uh, Asia. Yeah, indeed, indeed. I think I managed to catch a little bit at the end of this um, uh, the last time it was on. And so, so what's interesting is that it feels like in every region, everybody plays slightly differently, right? Like some, some regions prefer more aggressive play, some regions prefer more mix-up heavy play, some regions prefer more neutral play. Uh, and I definitely feel like the individual um, individual regions, especially when you have a player that likes to play a character a different way. So, say for example, you've got. Okay, I saw this. I saw this. I saw this. This was horrible. Delete <laughs> Julia. <is> disgusting <laughs> to watch. Heroes of Might of Magic Three. What a name. What a name. I mean, you you got to kind of love the creativity of the Asians. They are they are some of the most creative players in the FGC, regardless of the regardless of the game that they play. I mean, you can just oh. <laughs> the no, unblockable, oh. just straight up owning people again. Perfect, Chanel, super strong Eliza. Oh, we got a right the first one that we've seen all day, and it's not even our tournament. <laughs> right, okay, guys. Why does a master of taekwondo with an amazing range of kicks and throws for some reason also have a really decent down forward too? Tell me that. Yeah, Just tell yeah, me that. That, that doesn't that don't sit well with me. <laughs> Didn't sit well with his opponent uh, either. What a whiff punish. Oh, oh look oh, at beautiful that. Beautiful timing. You know, I, I do have to commend... Uncle Ben. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, those, those timings on those slow-mos are so sick. This new Cooney stage is so vibrant. I love it. Oh, it doesn't get the dash up with that. The, what, the second hit. stay ducking. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, very nice. Back on infinite stages. Oh, Julia Mirror again. Inadvertently promoting Twitch channels. Tut tut tut. Nice, yeah. That's nice. how you punish nice. a spring kick. 
Brilliant punish there from Lan. You, you can see he then switches to the Eliza. Oh, what a punish! Oh my god, is, are we going to see a sidestep into more? Oh, nearly. Nearly had some Tekken 4 combo there. Is the kick? Oh, he's dead. Damn, so much of Lan on stream. Damn, okay, this, the mix-up game is just incredible. Like, Chanel isn't dropping a single thing and it's unblockable again. Is that unblockable setup real or can you just roll it? It's, um... You stay, stay down or if you've got a character that's got a quick enough punch parry, I believe you can uh, parry it. King can um, do it. Okay. It seems like that shouldn't be landing on a lot of people. Mm. I, I guess if it's like if it's a mix up or something then But if you stay down you're gonna eat you can genuinely eat something else if your Chanel guess is yeah. right. Okay, fair play. She can pick up from the dive EX dive kick, so staying down against her is uh got really bad in season three and Oh my god, look at this. How it's good is horrible. he? Horrible. How it's, good is he? Oh my god. Beating around gosh. the ring. <laughs> Screw the rest of the tournament, guys. Just put that video on loot. Just I'm this done. is the combo video, right? Abominable. These are the combo videos. Just straight oh, up watch Chanel, Chanel play so ticket. Good. Oh man. Oh, that power crush. Nicely done. All the hell. No. Okay, so this is. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm gonna do a quick comparison here. Yoshimitsu and Calibur and Yoshimitsu and Tekken are very vastly, vastly different. Uh, I have to say, watching Yoshimitsu in Tekken is so much fun because not only is he just as creative as the one in Calibur, but he's a squid. And I love seeing squids beat people up. It's great. He's going to say something insightful. You just thought, like that he looks like a squid. <laughs> <laughs> just, insightful. Just, just. Down, right? Not in the same <laughs> sentence. Not in my commentary. <laughs> not on my watch. Well, oh, I, I love that. that. Okay, they, oh. That was beautiful. Yeah. Yoshi Mitsu players, let's go. Big up eyelash wish. And big up eye. Oh, uh, my, oh my god. Okay, that oh, the glue. Okay, so in Calibur we the say glue. The, glue, the glue sniffers. And you need to adopt that in Tekken because that is so true. They are hundred percent glue sniffers. What OBK stands for? The chat knows, tell us. Stays on the ground oh, okay, catch no, it's near again. Oh, so that's that's the mix. Okay, yeah. gotcha. If you stay, <laughs> oh <laughs> no way! Just Get like out of the here. That was the perfect spacing. Wow. <laughs> oh. Oh, that was good. Kind of disgusting. That's the thing with Eliza. People were saying for a long time that she's bad, and then this wave of actually she's better than what we thought. It's the same that's happened to a few other characters. I mean, she did get buffs, and. I think some little nerves, but that one is such a key way. If you stay on the ground and you've got EX dive kick, it's no longer I'll just eat a, a move and I'll slide on the ground. You can get relaunched. So you're constantly thinking stand up or stay on the ground. And that's why that unblockable hits. Jeez, two, two, three. Two, Look at that. two, three dollars. But guaranteed some of them aren't using that coupon code. I, I bet they're not. Do you want to tell them what the coupon code is right now? Thanks, mate. ICFC EUPRE4. <laughs> Imagine Very if like, done. imagine if you're playing Scrabble and you get those letters, you'd be like, oh man, what what word can I make from that? I can't <laughs> even see. <laughs> I think legitimately, I think you might have a legitimate claim if you were in Scrabble, right? And this tournament was running at the same time and you got these letters. You could legitimately say to your opponent, this is a word. This is actually a word. Thank you very much. I'll take my 400 points. We've all been there on Christmas Day. You sit down the board game, they bought your PlayStation. You just don't want to play. But you do want to check out all of the socials. Please do join Twitter.com, uh, Tenno Media. Do follow them. YouTube.com, Tenno Media. And Patreon.com. Guess what? It's Tenno Media. No, you're joking. Tenno Media? Can't be. Couldn't be. Not in my FGC. Right, follow us guys this is the week four so it's pre-season it's over but we're going to be coming back in a in a big way when it comes to 2021 all this stuff that we've done before at the guys at tenno ironing out things here and there a little tester so when it relaunches in 2021 there's going to be not just the continental format there'll be another format too where within the region they if it stays how it is now there'll be continent where everyone plays each other and within the regions there'll be tournaments so I guess UK tournament, France, and 
like that. So it's always constantly evolving. And oh, again, Orophil with the twenty-seven dollars direct Ooh, contribution. Seventy-seven dollars fifty. I just saw that appear just right in front of me. So we got two hundred and fifty-two dollars in the Matcherino. Shout out to the EU because usually our prize spots haven't historically been big as the the US scene. Yeah, but we're getting there. We're getting there slowly. People are realizing that a couple of clicks gives you free money. Now. Let Thank you show. very much indeed for that. Yeah. And look who we've Round got here two. in winners, top eight, Fight. Super Kuma versus DBP. Let's go. Someone has to take that win streak away. Look at that, 30 bits. Nice. Yeah, so this is our first game in top eight. <laughs> Damage from three hits. Pretty nuts. DVP doesn't care though. The rush down. Straight up into that first round. Very nicely done. Fight. Get that dash into the low. Wonder if Super Akuma. I was going to say, Wonder if Super going to be waiting for that double bar. Uh, double bar down to some. Uh, oh, doesn't matter. Get the focus attack armor. Let's go. All of the damage. All of that carry. Super Green was going to be stealing himself right now. Good. Cancel the one selling two into the... Uh... Oh, I could have got loads more of that. Mm. Oh, <laughs> got sniped. Guys protected. Get sniped. Got to run up and do a mix of no, he doesn't. Backs up. Oh, wow. Just raw mix up. Like, rolling in his face. Fight. Do, do you like him playing? <laughs> and so Bob, uh, Bob is actually, I like Bob in some ways. He's, he's sick, but he's just annoying. Annoying is a perfect description. It was funny that he came out around the same time that Rufus did in um, Street Fighter 4. It's like, yeah. now and again, similar characters come out at the same time. Mm. He's taking a real good jump over, some dive kicks. Oh no, doesn't finish the string. Didn't think he was going to hit him. And he catches him duck in with a crouch lift up. One bar of a super meter. Oh, no. locked and loaded. Oh. Gonna... Nice. A bit too slow on that last running honey. Fight. Oh my god, he jumps through the grab. Great conversion. Good meat spend. All of that carry. Not that it means much on infinite stage, but a Ooh. great drop. Now that's going to be a factor. That's his new move for season four, and that high um, hitbox with that kick as well is going to be really good for sniping him. Will no, he so be able it. to take that 13 win streak away from Super Akuma? Maybe not if he gets hit by more of these focus attacks. Needs to capitalize. Does this should be it? Yeah. Ooh. Nice. Drops that Kevass right on him. <laughs> Takes nice. away the wind streak. <laughs> that crevasse, a gaping Bob crevasse. I have, to, I have to give my props there to Welsh commentator Bebop. I stole crevasse from him. I will continue to use it, but thank you, Bebop. <laughs> Fair enough. I feel, I feel too bad. It's been too many times now. <laughs> Hello, I'll, I'll continue you. to use it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's taken the win streak away, but you've got to think that how close was that? I, mm. you, 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 Super Kuma still has to feel like he's very much in this. I like how he used. Um, we talked about using a jab and hit him out of the air. That new move from Bob is, um, you know, it's, it's a it launches a normal hit. So the way he is the, doing the jump spinning kick. So the way he did it so like immediately. It, now I think, okay, it's going to give him more damage than just jabbing up here. Now that Bob's mm -hmm. had that new move, that's one of the moves that people are saying that did he really need? Because one of the weaknesses that is that he didn't have a move that my frames aren't my best thing, but 15 frame launcher from standing. He didn't have that. So people were like, you can do, you take more risks with him. Now I've seen a lot more Bob play in season four. I can definitely see why, where the weakness that kind of defined him in this game is taken away a little bit. And now having such a strong anti-air in that way as well, I can see it being a good um, counter for the jumps for Akuma in this one. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, I mean, he looks like a very complete character. He, you'd argue he was always competing and competitive anyway. He was doing, mm. he, he was never dominating tournaments and that's, that's just never been the case. But 
always been a very fearful character to play against and always done okay. Now he's looking like he could be really a, a character that you just don't want to play against. But so is Akuma. He always has been very difficult to handle. And Super Akuma, I mean, a couple of drops in execution there. A couple of adjustments to make. I still feel like he's got a very strong part to play in this game. And then he probably needs to be more uh, more aggressive on that meter spend because there were a couple of situations there where uh, Super Akuma was just... He had that bar locked and loaded, ready to go, wasn't using them in combos, and uh, unfortunately, DVP was able to take it over that. But I guess if you get a little bit overzealous with your bar, you, you spend it and you waste it, then you have really nothing to extend your combos, nothing to really hit confirm with, and you're, uh, and you're dead anyway. So you've got to track that very niche balance. Indeed. Now, got caught straight away, but Super Kuma didn't have that bar to spend to convert it into a ton more damage. Don't mind that then. Like, it, it, it can take more risk with him when he doesn't have that bar, theoretically. Oh, and the jump over oh, once again. Yeah. Kind of very similar thing that we saw against Dragon Fist. Just straight up jump over into smacking him from behind. Trying to use, use his moves to get him out the air. There it is! I stood up that floor while he was doing it. Fully charged. Trying to get that wall bounce. Jump over once again. Not successful. DBP pressuring Super Akuma at every single instance. Oh! No, wow, that was an expensive way. Look at that! Oh my god, this matchup. Is this finishing the strings? Look at the matchup now, it's changed just from that. I haven't seen this before. Dude. Super Akuma thought he did something boss and just completely uh, gets countered for it. Nice. You definitely see DBP will be very confident now about any jumpings from Super Akuma. Nice. Chasing down with a sweet bang. You can feel like he, that's what he's waiting for. Jump at me at a distance and that is going to happen. Oh no, he's going to get the wall with this though. Oh, oh and I've cursed him. i curse. <laughs> it's all your fault, Dragon. If he loses this. <laughs> oh. Nice. Curse averted. Round four. Fight. He's still got one more round to go though. Oh, oh that's slow. Oh. Nice. He's done with the slow curse. I think he went airborne just the last second, which saved him to a degree. There it is. Look, oh, he didn't even. Oh my god. Look how late that was. Wow. This, this matchup has just gone. Good gotten... break. Super Akuma now trying to hit him with them cheeky lows. Wow, look at that. Nice. <laughs> Awkward again at the balls. It happens so much of the time. Oh, oh my god. This is going to do. Yeah, damage. Complete. Oh, no, no. Turn drops a combo once again, doesn't manage to confirm nice it. Here we anyway. go. Nicely done, Super Akuma putting himself back on the board. Using that bar as intended. Very nicely done. I got a, I got a sense that now this game is revolving around it's always the jump ins of Akuma, and mm -hmm. we said a Super Akuma jumps a lot. So him using that the new move from Bob. It's about, it's, it feels like he's waiting for that move. So now if Akuma, Super Akuma realizes that, he goes, well, I'm not going to jump anymore. So now oh, that messes up your timing because you're waiting for me to jump and I mix up the timing. And someone rightly said in the chat, the difference with this anti and others is the fact that the screw compared to like other other hop kicks and other kicks and the initial screw, the damage is, seems like it's a, it's a much better reward than someone doing just jabs. So great. Match up, great option for Bob, but as you said, Abominable, a Super Akuma is like, well, I've got this counter for it. I probably know, he probably knew that day one. So it's like, well, I've got that counter for it. So you've got this anti-air, and now I can use that against you. Yeah, yeah, he's so dangerous like that. And Tekken is made to be like that. Any good fighting game, there should always be a way out to escape a situation. And uh, it, it looks like Super Akuma has an answer for everything. Now, one thing that I think could play a part in this is the map the stage picks now versus a normal akuma if i get a stage that's good for me first and i win that first game i'm super confident he's going to pick whatever you know combo video stage he, he likes to mash buttons on and he can have that that win whatever and then it's back to my stage again after um but i think okay that works versus most akumas but super akuma is so good that it, it's going to have a part to play but not as big a part yeah i think there's 
definitely uh, stages where you're more comfortable is going to be a big factor when it comes to top eight, top four, top six. Mm -hmm. Because when you feel more comfortable in the spacing of where your combos may drop, where your combos may be extended, certain splats like we saw in one of the previous games uh, on the in the Mishima Dojo stage where it just wasn't working out, um, stage picks are vitally important. Mm. And we go with Mishima building for DDP. Oh, oh god! <laughs> oh, here we go again with the, the clown, the clown baby outfit. Like, <laughs> yeah, bang! Okay, she's in ducking now. The high splat! Oh my god! He's still getting him. Cross up. He blocks it. No, oh, tip range. Gets him again. <laughs> Best feeling in the world when they whiff and you get to put him back in the air. No, and he gets the round as well, and he hasn't built a bar yet, so he can probably get some. A bit more risky in these early seconds of the first game, but he's going to build that. With one more hit. Play nice block on that Good. sweet bang. Gonna get that carry. Is he gonna spend more meter here? No, doesn't need to. Getting a hell of a lot of damage without extra spendage and a good nice punish go. by DBP. Nice sweep back and good. Dapper wanted to sweep. Oh, he buffs the combo there and spends the, the meter. If he can get a kill here, great situation. No EX as well. He had no me to do EX show you can. And he's down two rounds with only no bars built so far. Brilliant situation with DBP. Ooh, turn around. Oh, he died. I love that oh. play. You never see it. Damn, that looked like some back turn Soul Calibur stuff. Oh, oh avoid the. Super Kuma's had enough. Powered up. Going I would have no bar. Oh, oh, nice Knows that string. Ducks at the perfect time. Fight. Oh, interesting. He didn't jump that much in the other game. Now he's jumping jump quite a lot. Yeah, I was going to say, Super Kuma, like uh, Abominable mentioned before, Super Kuma loves to jump, but. You know, very recently in these last two rounds, we've not been seeing that much of it because DVP is just waiting. Oh, no, no, oh yeah! Ten. Very nicely done. Back ten, John. DVP absolutely capitalizing on that, but a focus attack is probably going to allow Super Akuma to get this round. He plays his cards. No, not just enough. Air hit scaling. Oh, 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 he tried to do his comeback. No finishing this streak. Oh. Final round. Oh my god. No bar, thankfully, to really capitalize on that. Oh no, man. It. Yeah, that is, oh, that is going to be costly. Can it be from the combos? Yeah, he gets the punish. Only jabs. Ooh, lucky. Oh, I float the, uh, yeah, he'll get the bar now. And he'll get the wall. What's the mix up? Gets it. Oh. He's dead. Surely this is not it, is it? Flat. Oh. Oh, my God. God. Just 400 hit combo. My Lord. Okay. That's pretty okay. mad. I mean, Put in, put in faces, but we've seen it all before, and God, Super Kuma is <laughs> sickeningly good. To be fair as well, there was a few opportunities where he, has, he dropped a combo, he dropped two combos, He um, his block punishment kind of faltered a little bit towards the end, he was given Super Kuma these chances, and then Super Kuma stood up and launched him with a Shoryuken for it, so, you know, just a few combo drops there. But that was our first game in top eight, so he's still in loser's side, maybe he'll sort of uh, have yeah, another... Do we are we third? Are we best of five in top eight, or are we third, first to two? I think it's still best of two. Only, Only five. five. Okay, cool. Cool. Um, yeah, no, I just um, it, it was interesting to me that going into that final round, Super Kuma had no bar for most of that round. He was probably only about yeah. thirty seconds in. He had a bar, 
and he still managed to win it. Uh, that just shows how good he is. It was, I mean, he is notably weaker when he doesn't have a bar to spend, and uh, yeah, he still took it. Good, good games to him, and nice. good games to all of you, Macharino. Thank you so much for donating. Direct contribution from Vasenkov. I just need to stop reading off the off the image and go actually the page myself. <laughs> Indeed, yeah, Vasenkov with the five dollars fifty direct contribution, small investment to great future. Indeed. Ooh. Thank you. I think that kind of that comment is very accurate because Tekken, uh, and I guess by extension Soul Calibur, the Bandai Namco 3D games have incredible legacies and uh, the future is only bright for this uh, for this game and Bandai Namco 3D FGs and we can't thank everybody enough who does donate if even if you put in a coupon code and you add a free 50 cents to the prize pot with the coupon code uh, ICFC EU PRE4 reading it off from the memory banks right there uh, yeah if you donate using the coupon code or you donate with a direct contribution all it does is further the cause of fighting games so definitely get back into it if you can $258 so far and we're just getting into our top 8 so if you have any spare change to spend maybe you drop some down the side of the sofa definitely donate that but if you can't we have that coupon code and also of course we have the social medias twitter.com slash tenor media youtube.com slash tenor media patreon.com slash tenor media follow sub and donate thank you it's, it's more special when people that have given their real money considering these covid times you know interfering with people's job and income so special shout out to people that you know use their own money but we're going to get into this game so we have kalak we've seen with uh, Lily on stream against Crossfire. So Italy versus France, I believe. Classic match in football. Classic match. Unfortunately, Zidane is not here to play Tekken 7. That would be amazing. <laughs> 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 who, who would Zidane play if he played Tekken 7? <laughs> I was going to say Marder or something. Yeah, he's probably got a head Marder, yeah. He's got a really good head, but... <laughs> <laughs> football references. Football. Wow, good start, but now bad situation. Just look at that. Okay. We've been seeing Kalak be absolutely dominant throughout this tournament. He's been on stream a fair bit. Mm. And right now, he seems to be holding that reputation. Good life lead against Crossfire. Nice. Oh, doesn't. No, it doesn't punish it. I find that really interesting because I feel like that's a punish that everyone knows. Yeah. Wow. Especially when you see, you know, really slow player don't. You think, is it intentional? Are they not punishing it to then go for maybe a more damaging throw or something like that? But no, it didn't punish it. Oh, got him. Sleep the legs. Looks like this round may be crossfire, but it's not over yet. Kalak has come back from worse oh situations. Oh my god. Oh. What was happened there? Dirty. Someone the... explain. Some weird Axis stuff just completely messed it up for him. I feel for him for there. The Axis of Evil. Dodgy Z. Nice yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, nice, block. he jabbed and then still had enough time to block. Brilliant advice there, man. This movement. It's fire. It's just one of those guys where he's not afraid of pressing big buttons at like zero range. But he's just very confident in his play and in his timing. It's very interesting to watch. Got him. That'll be it. If you don't mess it up, screwed up with the blocking deckers. Oh, no scout for low. Low block, crossed fire. That nice prediction, low block into the punish. Looking all cross fire right now. We both stand there just looking at each other. Nice disrespect that just gets a bit of the hot kick. Does not want to respect any of the chainsaw stances there. Ooh, I've noticed Crossfire's been doing <laughs> hop kick into power crush. He's done it in the other games. If, if the first hit whiffs, he'll go power crush. 
what Bastard did earlier with that with Johnny Wizard. It's kind of a get out of jail card if you want to go for it. Mm. Kalak is sidestepping really, really well, but not able to get any of these punishes going. So this could be it. Crossfire gets a nice Oh, very bold. Never mind. Drive. Almost got just 10 seconds left. Oh, the load is not going to be. Oh, it's no. Back reset. Oh. French reset. Allez, Francais. Kala nice coming man. back from the jaws of defeat, but making it two rounds apiece. Chunks of damage, though. Crossfire trying to go all offense, but Kala with that very nice low parry. Pushing back against the wall of robotics. Again, just hop kick. He's so ready for that. Anything, if you delay it too much, you will get hop kick. Looking up for plus fight at this point. Working his way back in. Kalak just needs one hit. Oh my lord. Oh my god. Oh, oh, combo. Crossfire's not going to be happy about that. Got that uh, perfect punish. And he just straight up drops the combo. Could have closed it out. Could have taken Kalak down a peg, but nope, not able to close that out at all. That was a that was a costly choke there. Very costly. You can't do that versus Kalak. You can't get away with that in any tournament these days. Four seasons in, but versus Kalak, he's going to make you pay, and he did it. Uh, mm. Kalak just looking so. Both of them looking really confident in what they're doing. Neither of them really holding back, and it made for a really nice tight game. Few, few instances where they both went as optimal, like we said, he didn't punish the at least a hop kick. Which, it, when you see both hits block because it's mm. a two hit move, you think it's easy, it's an easy punish. Didn't didn't get it, but then also we saw um, same situation, uh, a, a punish that was kind of e easy, didn't actually get it. So a bit uh, he dropped the combo. Sorry, so a bit shaky from both of them. We'll see it clean up, but first round of this was crazy. Both characters, I think, just the way their moves are. At least so much she can use her, her boost and, and travel across the screen and it leaves crushing. They're both kind of missing each other a lot of options there. The camera's going off, off axis. Um, we saw the movement as well. Lily completely sidestepped and got to the back. It looked like an eight-way run, basically, in Soul Calibur, by the way. She <laughs> sidestepped and she got all the way to the back after um, Elisa's power crush. So we can see how for both of these characters, the movement is uh, just so important. Yeah, there were a couple of situations there where the sidesteps didn't really lead to much aside from just, I guess, no damage. I mean, you can you can argue that a sidestep that leads to nothing is good, but I think there were a lot of situations where Kalak tried to actually get these perfect sidesteps, just wasn't able to capitalize on them, um, and then unfortunately dropped combos too. But you know what? We're not over yet. We've got the second game to get into. Kalak versus Crossfire. Who's going to take this? Mm, go either it. way. Yeah. Both really strong players. Twilight Conflict, Balcony in play. I just, I just want to see how this is going down. Both super strong. Their ratings are all S plus, A plus, A plus as well. Round one. Fight. All right. The second game between these two. That submissive heel there, standing there. Good move from both of them. Oh, oh yeah. again. He loves to move. Oh, sidestep that. I, I don't know if that, that move, she's spinning around. That looked like... It is sidesteppable. I find that really odd. That's when that the animation stupid. doesn't match the hitbox. Yeah, he punished it this time. That is stupid. I should say it's side walkable. Side walkable. Mm -hmm. Someone's spinning around as a disc and he's like, yeah, I can walk that. Okay. <laughs> Excellent wall position there. Doesn't get much. What's he doing? What, what is that? Some weird drops there. Nice work. There's a lot of these, uh, a lot of these low block punishes that Kalak's been doing, and they've they've put in a lot of work in this set so far. I mean, Crossfire's tried to hit with like four or five lows uh, from the boost, and Kalak's just been ready for them and been able to perfectly punish them. Great, so it's a great punish. Don't you don't get a chunk off that, but it's not a small amount. Gets the ball now. 
Nice. I like the way he ended it early with the jabs just to get the perfect wall punish. Oh, oh my god, he blocked that. I can't believe he blocked that, but mm. still didn't work out for him. Kalak now one round away. When you've got no life, a big risk. And look oh, at the jab. The wow, power that's really of the jab. Well. Lily's jab. I don't know if it's Lily's jab specifically, but he's really good at reading her movement with the jab to stop it. Oh, interesting hitbox. Ole! In the crevasse. Nice thing interrupted. Not even trying to go for a block punish there, just straight up interrupting. It's like he's got all his timing. Wow, I've never seen someone interrupt. Lily's stuff when you're interrupting, she's flying at you, so from a like standing position, she can just fly at you quickly. So the fact that he was jabbing it and then he did the flying knee at the end, he must have some really good spacing and, and good matchup knowledge to know, do you know what? If I throw out this jab at this range, her trying to come in, because a lot of Lily's will be at range, they fly at you, you're in a mix-up. Oh, am I going low? You're going to go after duck. And that's one of the frustrating things about this character, that even when you're spaced out, she flies at you and you can't deal with anything. But, well, it doesn't seem that you can't, but he was able to jab it at the perfect range and, and get these float combos. So good work to Kalak moving on. He's actually on track to probably be the only person to win a tournament back-to-back -back as ICFC. He's still in winners. He won last week as well. He's doing really well. May do, but it's also possible you, we never have a repeat winner. There are so many mm. good uh, players in this tournament that you could you could literally go the pre-season and the main season and have a different winner every time that the EU is so stacked. It's a very exciting time to be uh, a commentator for EU Tekken, and uh, we've just got so many good players still left over. Mm. I think going back to what Dragon was saying in terms of timing, timing is one of, like I guess, three things that you need to have down to be able to perform well in a fighting game. Once you're able to get somebody in your timing, um, I don't know if anybody's familiar with, I think it's Enter the Dragon, where Bruce Lee's fighting Chuck Norris. And um, Chuck Norris is losing the fight. So he tries to get into Bruce Lee's rhythm. And as soon as Bruce has him in that rhythm, he just dominates him. And I think it's so important in fighting games as well, because if you're able to get somebody in your rhythm, you're going to get counter hits, you're going to get launches, you're going to get block punishes, you're going to essentially just dominate the entire game. Uh, and it's probably one of the most important things that you need to understand in fighting games is when to pursue, when to calm down, when to be defensive, and how to get into somebody else, how to get somebody in your timings. Mm. Yeah, just have to say, Chuck Norris wasn't an Enter the Dragon. That was Way of the Dragon. Not uh, into the, way, it was way of the Dragon, my bad. Yeah. How could you forget from Enter and Way of the Dragon? I'm they're so, they're so distinct. Like, I know. On, I'm, I'm tired. Okay, <laughs> it's been a long day. Something of the Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> Something of like the Dragon. Something of the Dragon. Yeah. The, the cat was an underrated actor in that that final fight. By the way, do you remember the cat? <laughs> they're just waiting for the cat to scream before they fight. It's a bit weird. Exactly. Do you remember it? Cool. The dragon yeah. movie, exactly that one, that the the one with the dragon and the man with the fists and the watcher, that one. <laughs> good film though, good reference to be fair. So Mistress Storm versus Fergus, we've got that coming up. Oracle versus Batty, Batty did make it through. Nice. This top eight is looking hello good. Mm. I can't wait. Nice King in top eight as well. That's mm. right. Oh, and uh, Fergus. Uh, oh yeah, so my Fergus made it out and loses top eight. We'll be taking on Mistress Storm. Mm -hmm. Nice. So I'm just looking at the country. We've got Italy, we've got Spain, Italy, Germany, Italy, Ireland. Uh, Fer Fer Fergus is Fergus is winning. It's Britain, Britain and Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have to claim claim. Yeah. <laughs> UK, Fergus. UK, UK and Ireland represented by Fergus. Oracle's French, isn't it? Batty. Poland. <laughs> oh, it's you, you heard it here first. Fergus is British, but you can't get away from that fact. <laughs> UK and Ireland. <laughs> All right, so we are getting into this next game. Batty, he's, I think he's doing quite well in all of these tournaments. I'm pretty sure he's, he's made top eight in probably two of them, maybe, or he's done well. I've seen him on stream quite a lot. Oh, my God, mm. he's on Forgotten Realm. Abominable. It's a good stage for, for King. There's no doubt about it. I will say that if someone knows how to play against King, 
or knows King's options, it can make the King a little bit predictable if they're not careful. But this is Batty, I'm sure he won't be. It's all about what, ha what Oracle knows how to avoid taking some very, very disgusting damage. Oh, convert oh. it. Okay. Oh. oh, no, he went for a combo video. Oh, good duck. Counter hit. Oh, nice. Good break right there. Break. Into the wall flat and doesn't manage to get anything from it. Interesting choice of move. Batty desperately trying to get back into the middle of that nice. arena and he successfully does it with a knee to the face. Very, very, very close to the wall there. Nice. Doesn't go through the floor as well. Very too Batty. Fight. Oh, no launch on that. That was a big whiff. Batty going for that, that Jaguar step two. This time he does follow up with a throw after cap caps of punishment, but doesn't get anything. Okay, no this will break. hit the wall. Whee! Jeez. Big damage. That's incredible damage, yeah. I love how Batty uses a lot of moves from King. He does. Now the thing is that that, that is an interesting choice of throw. And I think that so with King, if you do a tombstone, or you do a muscle buster, so two break or one plus two break, you're going to bust through the floor. So that makes his one break, which is normally one of his best throws, even better. So that giant swing now is very, very viable because it could be that uh, Oracle's trying to make sure he doesn't get hit by the muscle buster. Mm, well, true. Oracle's kind of. Oh my god! Oh my god! Just close my from hell. Just... <laughs> Oracle oh. wasn't able to get away from that wall. They were kind of putting themselves against the wall, and then Batty was like, cool, you're going to stay there? Take this unblockable. See you later. Good night, Irene. He had uh, three seconds left. I hope someone clipped it, because that was an unbelievably easy choice to make with that time left, with that health. That was incredible from Batty. Perfect. And that Oracle literally answering back in 20 seconds with a perfect. Them seven perfect golden moves. Moves. Having none of it. Oh, are we missing a full break? Oh, it's been one so far. It's been one full oh. break, yeah. Again, the second one. There's one. Third one. Oh, third one. Nah, I'm just, I'm all over the place. <laughs> I was taking a cue from you, Dragon, and I got it wrong. <laughs> nice. Okay, interesting choice. Does he jump over? Could do that. Oh, he went for the hot knee. Okay, two rounds apiece, no floor to be broken now. Oracle doesn't want to be clowned on anymore after that unblockable high close line. Oh, that was sick. Aside from the shenanigans, I can tell that Batty's been doing a lot of um, uh, information uh, mining. He's gathered a lot of information about his pony. Either way, I think he might be looking good here. He's done a lot of stuff to work out what his opponent does in certain mix-ups. Oh, oh wow, that was cool. Nice. I mean, that, is he gonna that was throw? a really good opportunity for side switch, but now Oracle is just kind of put him back in that terrible position. Yeah, but Batty was unfortunate that while starting two two didn't get a wall splat. It was very close to getting it. Finishing. Oh, oh, good jagger step. Oh, no. handle slam. Oh. What does he need to go for the chain grab? Oh, whiff the grab, but there's no whiff punish. <laughs> oh my god. Batty, what are you like? What's that? Is that that's what running exploder? Is that, that that's cool? <laughs> that was sick. Interesting fact about okay. that. Okay. Interesting fact about exploder is that it actually goes through uh, fireballs. It, it's invincible to fireballs. Just, <laughs> really? Yeah, it goes right through it. That was very, very, very nice finish from Batty. Did some really interesting things then. I wonder. I wonder why he didn't go for the chain grab after that um, Jaguar step two. That would have got, if he got executed the chain grab and he didn't get broken, he would have actually just won it there and then. Uh, yeah, interesting. Go ahead. Uh, he's styling <laughs> and doesn't care. <laughs> I think the fact that he was able to hit with that unblockable gave him all the confidence that he needed to just not go for anything really that optimal. Just like, like you say, he could have gone for the chain grab, could have finished it off in two or three grabs. But why not run at somebody in at range four to finish it off after you've styled on them two rounds ago? Like, I don't know. I think that 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 would be me. I think if I'm if I have that many mental frames, that's what I'd be going for. 
Yeah. Not many at stake for that. Any any normal online tournament, I'm with you on that one. But this bit this this prize pot is really starting to edge up now. That could be taking decent money. Two hundred and fifty eight dollars so far. And yeah. I know for a fact that we haven't run out of coupon codes because we would have been told in our ears that we have. So mm. there's still some to be used. Head over to that Macharino page. Use that coupon code. What is it, Abominable? <laughs> ICFCEUPRE4. Hey, let's go. Very nice. Post-it notes around the screen. You've got to have the code on the post. <laughs> Special commentator, guys. I've got a whole extra uh, monitor just for that one code. Just to make look sure we can look at it real quick. Look at this. He's actually oh, picked it. Pick forgotten realm. This is the kind of guy who wakes up in the morning, beats himself with a stick before he even goes down from <laughs> oh the <laughs> Beats himself with a stick. Beats himself with a stick. He opens up the windows in the bathroom, has a cold shower, goes oh, downstairs, <laughs> adds four flakes of water, and then starts. Amazing. <laughs> Gives himself damage before the day starts and then starts right. his day. Wow. Dawn Jaeger said in the chat, he'd probably fear more Anna on Forgotten Realm than uh, King. I can kind of see what he means at times. Yeah, Oracle not playing around this time. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Good reset to neutral. Nice, nice. shot. Oh. <laughs> Take the elbow. Oh, okay. Right. It's the there. When he did the show, I think if he did one plus two one, he would have got a wall slap. So he could have something a bit more optimal there. There are some players that, like, other than seeing them, you wouldn't want to play that character. But watching Batty right now makes me want to play King. He's amazing. King's an amazing character to watch. And he's got so many way different ways to be played. Mm. Yeah, I agree with that. It's just like the edge of that hurt box on Oracle. Oh, just try us. There's a whole collective in the UK that are dedicated to, to King, and you know, he's <laughs> one of the best characters to watch. Running power bomb. Nice break. Oh, didn't get. Oh, slaps. Going downstairs. Oh, the wall break from that. What the hell was oh, that? Oh, tracking. Harada, please. What's he going for? Interesting. That's a good pickup, doesn't it? Actually, follow up with anything. Oracle now. Okay, I'm very confused oh. about the decisions being made here, but it doesn't wow. matter because oh. they're going to get punched in the Run. gut. Nice wake up bar from Batty. <laughs> The chat's like, I hate Warcraft Down 4 2. He's like, yeah, Clip here that. we again. <laughs> oh, interrupts in case judgment. Batty poke game on point right now. Shove is so scary, especially at the wall. You can convert into a wall bounce, get an absolute chunk. Oh, with punish on the grab. Oracle not inherently looking a bit shaky. Oh, very oh, nice. Oh, there you Counted go, Jack. You get what you wanted. This should be it. No. Nice. Batty. Oh, he is sick, man. Batty is sick. That was he's pretty nice. He's so enough. unorthodox, but he's so good. He's just so good. Oh, sickeningly good. Well played from Batty. And what an interesting choice from Oracle. He's like that. I don't care what you say. I'm going to pick this stage again. <laughs> Didn't work out from that time. I think he did get a lot of the wall, the floor breaks. Yeah, true. I mean, that uh, was the first game I think Oracle managed to get uh, most of the floor breaks to, and take the most advantage of them. But Batty just manages to come out on top. Like you're saying, he looks really unorthodox. I mean, I'm not 100% familiar with every king ever, but it looks like when Batty plays, he plays this kind of... To me, I'd kind of expect him to play Lei more than I'd expect him to play King because he's very, very stylish. He likes to press these buttons that I guess not many people would press. And then he gets in your head and he mixes you up and then you don't really know what's coming next. Definitely very unpredictable. There we go. We got the Macharino, $258. Make sure you head over to that Macharino page. Use that coupon code ICFCEUPRE4. 
four to add a free 50 cents to the prize pool. Don't forget, you can also direct donate if you have any spare change hiding down the back of the sofa. Maybe you got it in the cistern, in your loo. Um, who knows where you've got any spare change hiding? Make sure you add that to the Matcharino pot to make sure we give our competitors something to fight for. Go a quick look at the people that have been donating so far. We've got the coupon codes, the 50 cents. Bass and Cough with the $5.50, the Orophil with the two direct contributions, I believe, the $50, $50, and the $27. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas to ICFC and Tenno. Uh, Swolius with the 50 cent, <laughs> the 50 cent <laughs> coupon code with the comments. I can't read that without laughing. Thank you very much. Uh, VP Mark UK, boss man himself, or one half of the boss men, I guess. This Tekken is good ass. We're yet to get Abominable to talk about asses, Dragon. I think we need to make that happen before this tournament. I think he did say something earlier about it, but I, I didn't, I'm did. i not sure. Oh, we may have lost it. Again. Lost to the ether. If somebody remembers, go back and clip it so that I have it forever. Too classy, way too classy. <laughs> now, who, who hides many in the cistern of the loop? Have you watching too many Guy Ritchie movies? <laughs> I, don't, I reckon you're one of the guys who like goes into the into pound shop and fishes out all the UK gangster movies and just like settles oh, down with a big bag of popcorn and just watches them all. You know what? <laughs> there are some. Of your loo. There are some actual <laughs> god tier English gangster movies. Don't don't hate. Right? Lock, stock, two smoking barrels. Absolute classic. Green Street. Absolute classic. Horrible acting, but absolute classic. Um, what else is there? I'm not sure. Those are the two that I can think of on the top of my head. It's a good way to vicariously feel hard. <laughs> oh, stop. Uh, Rich, can we please kick a vulnerable off this? this well, he, didn't, voice call, he wanted him to talk about arse, but he got, he got... That was the wrong that. direction. That, not the direction I expected that to go. Big 4-0 oh, says so Snatch is amazing. <laughs> snatch is uh, true. Snatch is pretty sick. Very, very, well, very nicely done. Good double entendre there. GGWP. Nice <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Stor versus Fergus, let's go. Ireland versus Italy. Yeah, yeah. You mean the UK versus Italy, right? Yeah, UK and Ireland. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No punish that. Yeah, against the wall spell. That was, that was dangerous to do that against the wall. <laughs> He just got perfect because of that. Fergus, Fergus speed running right now. After losing on stream once, he doesn't want it to happen again. But he's managed to get to top eight, and that's really all that matters right now. Yes. Nice work. First Sabina, though. Another character known for really good movement. Arguably the best movement in the game, right? Yeah, I definitely... Um... Maybe... I don't know with Kunimitsu now. I think Kunimitsu has a ridiculous mm -hmm. backdash and sidestep, yeah. but... Yeah, very, very True. strong movement. They say her movement's like Tekken Tag 2 movement or, or Tekken 6 movement. Like, she's so really so good. So versatile. Yeah. Mm. No, I can see that for sure. Fergus not allowing that Zafina and Mitra Storm any kind of movement opportunities, though. Two rounds down so far. Fergus looking pretty spicy at the moment. Haven't seen many, uh, many parry attempts. Fergus trying to play that very solid neutral game. Look at that down to me. Nice! Oh, oh, there we go! Crystal. You can sidestep some of her scarecrow, but he you know just parry and get the damage. So he goes to the low. Oh, oh the side ball! Oh, nice. What a good conversion. Fergus looking so good. Well, was that a new season three or four move? I am not familiar, but either way, now you can see the other component. When the, the wall is to her left and she has that um, that combo, usually you don't want side walls, but you can get a side wall, and because of how she is, you can get a full combo off of it. And I've been seeing him use that quite a lot in this match. So, if anyone can let me know, was that new move from season three or four? Because that, that move has been doing a lot of work for Fergus. Let him know in the chat, was it a new season four thing? Healing away like that very much like a Tekken 4 thing. Like, there, was that, there was some real problems with Tekken 4. Maybe some beautiful combos, but you could just peel people off the walls really, really easy. And they have solved a lot of that with the new Tekken. You haven't got an answer yet, Eternal Dragon. Um, okay. But you, it's still still achievable. And, and, and it's you can literally go wall to wall to wall in some situations and do ridiculous damage. The oh, nice. donate button is going to be 
uh, the contribute button. So if you type in exclamation mark Macharino in the chat, you'll be able to get taken to the Macharino page where there'll be a little button that says contribute. You'll need to sign in and then you can either use the coupon code ICFCEUPRE4 to add a free 50 cents to the prize pot or you can direct contribute with some of that change that you find down in the system. Nice work. Okay, so season three, down back one, two. Thank you, chat. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of uh, usage of it. So I always thought about Tekken. As the game developed, I was thinking if they had a, a system or a move where everyone has a move that works if you get back to launch so you can cash out your damage, but it spikes him in the ground because there's so many times where you launch him. I've got the launch, but the wall's too close. Why should you get penalized because you launch them? You made the read, but the wall happens to be close to you. You know, that, I don't know. It feels a bit weird, especially if it's back turned as well. Yeah, back turned when they hit the wall, you literally get virtually nothing. And it can be frustrating. Lei has some combos where, you know, he puts them into back turn as part of the combo. And if you get the wall, you just get nothing because it makes them invincible. Very frustrating. Mistress Tool has gone to Nina. As you would expect, this catch there gets the wall. This should be it. Fergus managed to, managed to get a wall splat earlier on, but wasn't able to convert it to anything. And then Mitros sort of just kind of oh, ran look with that. The two fairy, such spacing. Should get the wall quite easily. Does. Oh. We'll get a mix up. Is it down two? No, it's not. Nice. Oh, here comes the carry. Rapping bird. Whatever it's called. <laughs> Something about bird and wings. Oh, no break. Crazy chicken. Oh, nice. Round three. Fight. Looking around to Mistress Storm there. Yeah, he's looking very good. Mm, like you said, his Nina is just so clean. Sweet. Wipe the floor. Nice work. Look at his pressure. Sweet oh, again. Wipe the floor. It was wow. looking all Fergus in the previous game, and now this one. <coughs> Complete reverse sweep. Very nicely done by Mitrust. I don't know why he doesn't just... I know that he's won, to, like, won events and, and used these other characters as part of his wins. I do know that. But his Nina is so good. His Nina is so entertaining, so good. And he seems to have carried him so far through some tricky uh, matches. So I'd like to see him just start off with Nina. Um, and then maybe mm. go to the other characters if they know the matchup. Yeah, I mean, it would make sense. That's more like character adap adaptability and player matchup adaptability as well. You know, sometimes <clears throat> it's very easy to get bogged down onto a character that you main because it's your main character. It's the one you spent the most time on. It's the one that you're more confident with punishes on. But sometimes it can be wise to switch to a character that your opponent may not be that familiar with because even if you aren't as up to speed on it, if your opponent knows even less, you're still at an advantage. So sometimes you have to weigh those up. And it's also if you use that, that character first, you've gathered all the data of their play style with the character that you that's not even your main, but you switch to your main, and eh? you have that round three rounds of data gathering, and now you say, Well now I can do my stuff and you have to learn all this mm -hmm. all this stuff that I've been gathering up and I've got more rounds to kind of work out their play style. So yeah, it's always that dilemma, especially Tekken's never really had seasons like this. So your character was your character from day one. Mm. and you're not really going to actually pick someone up later on down the line. And, wow, we got the law battle. The sisters are about to kill each other and just go to war in the Howard estate. So, yeah, we get a law battle. Anna versus Nina, the wedding and the funeral outfit. Okay, let the intros rock. Yeah. Nina. Yes. Nina. Round one. You let if you let the, the intro rock in law battles, you, you know what's up. Exactly. Yeah, you have to man, don't be skipping that. Nice what a whiff finish. That was so good. It stays on the ground, avoids uh, the OK there. Bat bat booty! Nice damage. Very nice done by Fergus. Oh, nice. there we go. Straight away in with the, the couching mixer. I love her start, man. Ooh. Just on one leg. It's just, it's just sick. Oh, no. 
I think I just put a second forward one. Uh, use a homie move to stop him side stepping out. Oh, very nicely timed. I don't know if that's not no, he's matter. dead now. He's dead. Did you get it? Yeah. That armor. Lovely little moves, I don't know if it worked in his favor. It took a lot of damage and then ended up one combo with the wall. <laughs> Killing him. Not a great whiff punish. Single hit. Oh, no <laughs> hit the wall. Throw. Oh, will he adjust? Uh, will the wall... Oh, no, he oh. doesn't get it, but he gets more than what he could have got. And he still gets a grab anyway. Mitra Storm Run. one round away from taking this 2-1. Oh, that's right. He's poking away. Good block, but he doesn't get anything off of that. Oh, it doesn't convert. It would have been devastating if had the wall being where it was. <laughs> Them heels. Burger's looking pretty spicy right now. Doesn't get the wall, but managing to keep up with the pressure. Fergus pressing more buttons. Good armor crack. Nice. Final round. Fight. Final round between these two sisters. The loser of this is out of the tournament. Oh, the Ooh, Corona missed. <laughs> corona missed. <laughs> wow, satire and Tekken all in one. <laughs> Oh, oh nice. Nice. Yeah, there. Fergus oh, in the no. best position right He's now. Dead. He's dead now. He gets it. Oh. Yes. Nice. Oh. There you Beautiful. go, Fergie. Nicely done. Representing the UK with the Anna. <laughs> UK is it? Oh, God. Yeah. At least say UK in Ireland. Yeah, mm -hmm. like... I feel, I feel, a bit, I feel like a, a UK newspaper when they claim like, you know, S Scottish tennis players is UK and stuff like that. Like, yeah, right. He's, <laughs> well, he, he's are, Irish when he loses. He's British when he wins. Yeah, yeah like that. <laughs> <laughs> now Fergus knows I love him. He knows I'm joking. Very, very nice from Fergus. Looking, wow, that was a hell of a game. I would just love to have seen those guys go at it. For a, lo a long, long set, they looked very, very evenly matched, and both playing away fuse as well. And I think that that came into the matches between them. They knew each other's characters reasonably well. Absolutely, yeah, it was a really good match between. I like seeing you don't see that many Anna and Nina's always a treat to watch. So yeah, it's really good match. And Fergus actually showing that he's um he's always known for using um, Anna, and I know initially she wasn't very good, so people were reluctant to use him in tournaments. So him pulling her out this late in top eight and getting the win. Great to see. Nice work. Macharino once again. Looks like we've had some more input. Let's have a cheeky refresh. Thank you very much to everybody using the coupon code. Someone needs to dethrone this Chris CEG guy, whoever that person is. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the Gaga guy. That's a great name. Salt Mine League. Thank you very much. Uh, Nicholas Ramachiotti with the $50, 50 cent coupon code. Thank you very, very much. Don't forget you can use the coupon code ICFC EU PRE4 to add a free 50 cents to the prize pool. Can we get to 300 before the end of this tournament? Can we get to 300 with coupon codes, direct contributions, and anything else that you can think of? Remember, Guys, if we use all the code, we don't think it's been used up yet. That's three fifty dollars. There's four hundred and almost five hundred viewers. You know, go and use that code. Get as much money in it because the um, Asia tournament earlier raised one hundred twenty-seven dollars. So EU, we've already raised more than Asia. Excellent work. But you know, the NA, they're always there with the money. They're always raising the most. Sure. So we need to get, we need to start get it up to three hundred. Use that free code. This is all just pre. Um, pre-season as well so when it comes to the main thing and everyone's kind of see what it's about i want to see eu 300 dollars every single day every single stream we can do it Don't forget please do stay go ahead go ahead Dan. no you you go abominable you go oh you're such I, a I gentleman see, i see the floor twitter.com tenno media youtube.com forward slash tenno media and guess what patreon.com forward slash 
Dramatic pause. Even longer dramatic pause. Techno media. <laughs> I knew there was, a re- there was a reason you were picked to do this at Vulnerable. You, you got that flair, man. You got that. You got the timings down. You got everything. Thank you very much indeed. Oh, and we've got some. Good, so look, let's have a look at our top six now. Chris in our top six. Kalak versus Super Akuma in the winners final. What a match that will be. DBP versus Fergus. That is looking spicy. And Crossfire versus Batty. That's a really decent mix of players from all over Europe, and I, I just can't wait to see who comes out on top. If you, so I I like to do this. I'm not sure if this is allowed, but <laughs> <laughs> what well, you just you sound like a bit like a predator. Or something. Like I like to do this. I don't know if this is allowed. Like what? so, um, I'm gonna make a cheeky bet with you two right now, and that bet is gonna include. Um, a food dish of your choice. Uh, who do you think is going to take? Who do you think is going to be in the top two spot? Who do you think is going to be fighting it out in grand final? My prediction is going to be uh, Fergus and Super Akuma. That's going to be my grand final pick. And if I'm wrong, the person who gets it right, I have to buy a, a, a food dish for, whether it be Dragon or Abominable. I'm putting that out to both of you right now. Dragon I, I think I think just looking at who we have so far, so I'm gonna say I'm gonna go with Kalak. Mm-hmm. Say Kalak, and I'm gonna say I'm gonna say DBP, just mm-hmm. because of uh, how he's been playing with Bob so far. Yep. I think I think he's, he's going to be those two. And I'm also rooting for Kalec to do the double, to be the only person to win two tournaments. So I'm going to say Kalec and DVP. Okay. And you, Abominable, what are you thinking? I'm going to go with the 10 ounce fillet steak with <laughs> triple <laughs> triple fried chips. <laughs> are we? Is it just meals on just eat as well? So we always like any, no, any 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 provider. But I live near a really nice, expensive place, and I'm just looking right now. <laughs> He wants me to buy him right. a full three course meal. That's so what he wants. I'll go with Super Akuma versus Betty. That's two. Okay. okay. Big up the Kings. So, yeah. All right. So, the person who gets this prediction right, I will buy them like a dish. Like, I won't I won't just buy 10 pounds worth of delivery for you, but I'll buy you something. That's like minimum, a dish. minimum order. Just a dish. <laughs> just a minimum complete. order. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it got to be that. But yeah, this this top eight is looking. This top six, I guess, is looking so damn stacked. That fight, uh, that Fergus managing to bring it back on the brink of destruction, just about managing to clinch it with that switch reversal of the side, managing to get that wall splat into the low. Man, that's kind of why I'm thinking Fergus is going to take this. He's going to take that victory, the one that was so hard fought, and he's going to run with that adrenaline and that victory until grand finals. Uh, yeah, noticed um, Doug from Paris noting this as well. When we've seen this in a lot of these tournaments recently, France really dominating in Soul Calibur, always dominating, but yeah. have done really well. Can't even say recently, they're always doing well. But we have um, Calica Super Kuma in winners' finals, two French players, and and then, and again, Calac is uh, on track to be a, a two-time winner for all this so we're seeing france a super strong region always representing as well mm. and um, just having the spread of the countries batty representing poland as well crossfire italy dbp germany fergus uk so you know good spread good spread of characters as well oh yeah for sure for sure if, if i'm being honest there are a couple of characters that i'm disappointed i didn't get to see um noctis kunamitsu horang uh, I, I'm, glad, I'm, happy, I'm happy I didn't get to see some Armor King because just for the fact that I really love Armor King's design. Um, but you know, I think the character diversity, <clears throat> excuse me, the character diversity that we've got here really speaks to how good each character is in Tekken and how balanced that kind of tier of character is. Yeah, indeed, it's a really good mix. And uh, I would like to see. Yeah, with all of the, the the buffs the characters have had, I think I would have liked to have seen Armor King get a little bit more. I don't know um, if you saw JDCR kind of ask about playing Armor King a bit more. They kind of went off the thought of it 
as 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 he was looking at the character more when as he couldn't really see any inspiring players. He's a character that's kind of gone cold a bit in the community. But I'm with you. I think he's got really cool design. He's really fun to watch. Just think he could have done with maybe a better rage drive or a, a different rage drive. And, mm. and being slightly less linear would have helped him a lot. I, oh, my Lord. Bring <laughs> it on. Oh, my God. Bring Let's it on. Go. So, so I get none. I never get my main on, on stream. And, and Abominable gets both of his in the same match in nearly every game. One way to get your main on stream, win your matches. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Round one. Oh, man, that was right in the heart. Oh. First game of the stream, we being told. Batty won it. So Batty's already one game up. Okay. I see. Okay. So Batty's already got that confidence going into this second game. Oh, that was unfortunate. It was a nice block there. And that 4 4 neutral 2. Now I think it's only minus 14. Oh, get the ball here. Side wall. Oh. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, 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 oh no. no. <laughs> Can I change it today? That is doing some <laughs> mad trigonometry right now. He's a Pythagoras theorem around the stage. <laughs> He's got his compass out, <laughs> trying to find the perfect optimal angle to start doing these crazy mix-ups. Get him again, Moon Salt. I'm never avoiding that. I'm gonna call that, that. No gonna call that the Batty Salt from now on. Round three. My God, this is a this is straight up domination. There's like there's nothing that Crossfire can do. He's he's not breaking anything. This is crazy. Rock bottom as well. Oh, neutral jumping. What a mad lad. Does, isn't able to get a perfect on this round, but that's okay because Batty doesn't care. He just wants to style. Boy, this is big. This is big. Oh, he's this, dead now. This could be it. Went for the big boy combo. He went for the big boy. He would have killed him. Doesn't oh. quite get him. That magic pixel, but it doesn't matter. Goes for the cheeky low. Oh, is it? Is it? It's done already. Like, is it? Yeah, that's no, done. I mean, yeah, because <laughs> first game was played off stream. Batty just dominated 3-0. Done. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Literally a speed run. Wow. Yeah, right. We'll have to, we'll have to clip that. Put it, up, <laughs> put it up on speedrunners.com. Most brutal one. My God. Right. <laughs> what do we do now? <laughs> Just kind of expecting a game. But uh, okay, so I'm allowing one change. If you want to change to Batty Dragon, that's okay. I'm allowing you that change. If you'd like to change it to... Uh, Kalak up. and Batty. I'm loading it up on Stu Eats and Deliver Stu. Um, it's all there. <laughs> Got a big order coming in, mate. Big order. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna stay. Like, I'm gonna stay. Right. yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay. I have faith in DBP. You know, he's been doing well with. He's got the Bob as well. He's showing how we played against uh, Super Kuma early. I think he's gonna, he's gonna do work. And also Kalak, you know, doing work with Lily. I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna stay. I'm not gonna cave. Sounds good. Sounds good. So coming up next, what is our next fight going to be? Let's have a quick look at that bracket. So before we uh, get into that, wow, I'm oh. sorry, guys, there's oh, a big no, surge. Good, big surge in coupon codes as well, which is excellent. So we still got some lingering there as well. Attila, Nikita, Jordan, oh, MJ, wow. Webb. There's Fergus. Excellent. The 50 cents coupon. Paul Paulson, Sean Anscombe with the direct contribution, $2.69. Got in there in the end. The Gold Elite. Good. Thank you, Junkstar, Squiz Jr., Belly Zato. But yeah, we still got codes left, man. We're getting close to that 300. Get ready for the next battle. battle, battle. This is the second game. <laughs> okay, so we've had we've had an intervention by uh, one of our glorious TOs. That first game off stream doesn't look like it will count, but that is a great result for us as viewers. We get to feast on Batty. Versus Crossfire again. It's a night of Batty versus Crossfire. There we go. Abominable just said feast on Batty. That's, that, that's all I need. I'm sorry, um, man. I'm sorry, like. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> oh, seriously, I had to. I've already had to contain myself once today on the stream. <laughs> all right. So um, Batty versus Crossfire once again. That last game didn't count. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, so... look, I, uh, the king <laughs> over here is a. Uh, oh, doesn't break the shot. Once again, crossfire looking pretty shaky at the moment. 
I just collected myself and then just was about to say Batty Whiff and then I thought I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> and again, Batty Whiff again. Batty but... Whiff again. Yeah, I'm at two. Bat, 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 bat. Oh, what? Tries to move. That was actually in Batty's favour there. Doesn't actually get caught out, but it doesn't matter because them seven golden letters for Crossfire. Bringing it back. Looking on even footing now as opposed to that last game. Let's get to the counter here. Takes it to the wall. Wolf. No, it doesn't go for the wolf front. Just goes for some Oki. Nice. Once again, the exploder. Nice oh, good duck. Didn't fully commit to a gut punch though. Would have killed him there and then if he did. Oh! Nice. Very nice. Quick duck. Very nicely done. Batty one round away from actually taking this against the crossfire. Nice! nice. It looks like there. Crossfire! Nice, nice, oh, nice two. Looking so one, shaky. One, two, one, two, one. Yeah, gets to the wall. Set up. Oh, oh, he tried it one more time. Not this nice. time. He couldn't get punished though because he's falling on the ground, so he's able to just do that. Batty will okay. be fine with that. Batty will be fine with that. Yeah. Made him spend it. KO. Oh, Rue can finish 1 4. Strings. Crossfire potentially about to even up the scoreboard here after Batty takes him down one game. Beautiful punish. Good commit on Doc in the throw. Bang, bang. Nice, gets it. Classic. Oh. It stays on the ground, so he needs it again. Oh, Ooh, this should be it. If he doesn't oh, he screw it, it up, which he does. Batty's got to get in there. Opportunity. Good oh, late parry again. Staying get composed. The Gonna get the wall. There it is. Goes for it again. Gets the, the momentum. Hit the momentum. Oh. Far Batty. be it from me. Far no, be it for me. To, sorry, I was going to say, far be it for me to <laughs> criticise such a top-level king player. But when he went for that moonsault, he gave away all his momentum. But mm. like, that's a great round finish, but he ends up on the floor and he has to eat a mixer from that angle. Like, if he just maybe gone for his rage drive, done, a, done a, uh, an elbow drop, he would have then had a mix up after. Unfortunate situation, but I'm more worried now about what's in Batty's head. He had that game off stream. Now, we should have had all our games on stream, so I understand that it was ruled that that game shouldn't count. But he had thought he'd win it. And you know what happens when you, when you think you've won? You release all your energy, you, you start to collect yourself for your next game. But then it's almost like having a goal waved offside. You have to almost collect yourself up back again and get back into the game. And that can be a real mental feat to do that sometimes. What you said about that situation of Wobble, when he did the um, the moon sign, he got up, he tried to go for the rage drive. And usually, get up kicks, they're always discouraged because they can get punished heavily. But the corner was there, the wall, so he had two walls, and he didn't have enough time to stand up and then do the rage drive. So great option hit him with the low and you get a counter hit and then he took it so yeah just a bit if he did chose some different options there he could have used the rage drive either killed him or got another mix-up but the fact that he was right on the floor in the corner didn't work in his favor yeah mm -hmm. very very true all right geometric plane now which actually chose this stage Will Batty be able to recover some of that composure that he had in that game where he just completely dominated? I mean, so Crossfire wasn't breaking any throws in that last game. It was just kind of easy for Batty to enforce those. And then he just stopped throwing. So Crossfire was able to essentially, without any effort, stop Batty doing his most effective thing. So hopefully Batty is able to compose himself and get out of this vortex that he just seems to be... Nice! Go, very nicely done. He did hard read the throws as well, which kind of deterred oh, him. No, that'd be dead. KO. Round two. Fight. Oh, nice start. So just jumping right at him. Hop knee. Does not want to deal with any of it. Who's it up? Wow. Nice. Grab. There we go. Once again, enforcing those grabs. Oh, he takes it. And it gets reduced the damage on that. Sweet bang. Ooh, oh, not close enough. That was caught by Punish. And he just read it again while standing 2-1. This could be it. Oh, God. 
damage and the carry just everything is not going Batty's way right now. That's why he's a bit scared from committing to throws because he's actually committing to I'm gonna duck every time I see that uh that sort of wave dash. Yeah. Oh you're gonna punish yes. Batty in a good position here, wants to try and enforce more of that wall game. Backs off, allows Crosslight to kind of... Never mind. Nice. Great oh. pressure into the salt. Oh. Oh. Very oh. nice. That, that was great. Forward. Fight. Good low. Oh, oh, nice. Grab. Very nicely interrupted. Batty looking way more confident now. Definitely changed the pace he's playing at. Slowed it down a bit. Very nice. Good adjustment on the ball. Oh! Spicy hitboxes. Surely this is going to a final round. Oh, I just do, cursed it. Do not CC it. I mean, Crossfire sitting in oh. rage right now. Cursed his own. Oh, oh no! Oh, oh, he... no. Oh, what a heartbreaker. He just gets chased down at every single option that Batty tried to press. It just got beaten. That was a That's a big rip. I think we can blame a we can blame Abominable for that. He just straight up cursed. Straight up cursed. Cursed his own meal. <laughs> yeah, that's me going oh, hungry man. tonight. Ugh. That's my local community's economy going downhill pretty quickly. <laughs> had grand plans that, for that. That one bet has just destroyed the local restaurant community <laughs> for Abominable. I'm, I'm living out in the sticks, man. And very unfortunate <laughs> for Batty, but um, mm. he didn't have put on a show, though. What a show he put on. It was incredibly oh, yes. exciting tech and he was playing. Definitely the highlight has to be him when he did the clothesline on Abominable with three <laughs> yes. So he's definitely been the... the, the you know, the highlight reel player today. So hopefully someone clicked that and we can see that, that again, because that was sick. If you didn't clip that, what are you doing? Yeah. Mm, that too, yep, yeah, very, very true. Excellent, right. Oh. So we are getting to the latest stages of the tournament. We still, guys, I, I don't think we use up the match arena code. Keep using it, keep using it. We're on $268.69. I implore you, if you do use that code or you do direct contribute, keep that point sixty nine. That's what makes a great community. So make it $300.69 and you'll be in my heart forever. Nice. All right, so next up, Let's see what we're going to have. We're just getting the players in the lobby here. So, indeed, indeed. Batty's unfortunately eliminated. He's been quite an uh, exciting player to see in the other tournaments as well. Definitely been, if you haven't known about him, which is also good because some of the other scenes who might be watching know of the big players, but Batty representing Poland, there's not many players on a, on a big scale that you see from Poland. There is some Polish players there. Um, that are legendary in, in the Tekken scene. But currently, Poland, you don't see that much representation, but well done for Batty for you know carrying the, the country on his back, representing Poland, doing excellent well uh, in this tournament. So yeah, it's always good to see. We saw a really great Polish representation in the Tekken 7 Online Challenge. They're just such a strong region. And I think in the last, definitely the winner, but the, in the, even in the last three, there were two young Polish guys like just a really really strong scene out there um and yeah just they, they, they've go back a long way you just don't there's a lot of scenes out there you just don't talk about and it makes me wonder what's the next untapped scene that people don't know about you know everyone thought it was career in japan mm -hmm. um, and then of course we, we go to pakistan and we find out that there's an absolutely thriving and really passionate and skilled yeah, second scene out there the i wonder what's out there in africa I reckon that's going to be the next scene where we find, you know, maybe Nigeria, um, where we just find tons and tons of amazing players who just haven't had the chance to get their name out there yet. It was unfortunate because Ivory Coast was going to be in their Tekken World yeah. Tour for this year, and they've been doing their things online. So, yes, it will happen. But you're right. That is also the exciting thing about Tekken is what is the new scene that's going to pop up and just basically be like, hey, we've been good all this time. Round one. And here we go. This is what I wanted. Fergus on Kunimitsu versus DBT on Bob. Now Fergus has said that uh, Kunimitsu is probably his favorite.
favorite uh, addition to Tekken 7. He's been having so much fun with her when he's been trying to get a TGO, and he's now reached that. Uh, and I really enjoy watching him play Cooney, to be fair. Yeah, I think he's one of the most well done, uh, nice. Oh, perfect. Wow, one of the slowest perfects. So. Look at the win streak 33 wins. That is scary. This has been doing work. I didn't know you were playing Fergus early in Dragon, but it's good that you got warmed up. <laughs> oh my god, that was damaged. That was so good. <laughs> 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 Oh man. But, right, I'm just gonna log out now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> Leave the call. DVP is completely dominating this uh, this first game against Fergus. Yes. Even yeah, though Kunimitsu yeah. is one, yeah, yeah. uh, one of the newest characters, or no, the newest characters for Tekken 7, still able to enforce the knowledge that DVP knows about the game. Things that he knows he can block punish and whiff punish, the combos that he already knows from Bob, all of that is infinitely more helpful than playing against a relatively new character. Bang. Oh. Still a little low there. What's the mix up now? Oh my god! <laughs> Cancel it to go into the into another role. Ambitious, I like it. This challenges it. Kenny has got a scary back turn game with that mid. And a throw as well. She's so aesthetically cool as well. She like is. She's got this really cool design. Her moveset is great. Her animations are great. Everything about her is great. And then you have Lucky Flurry. <laughs> not talk about that last oh, time. Nice. Yeah, oh, what's that block? Stay on the ground. No. <laughs> oh, oh, he did it! Yeah, he, he did it. it. I thought he was going to use the uh, the mid after that. Sweet bang. The no mix up, mix up. Just looks beautiful. Dark. Great punish. The whole state Ooh. carry doesn't quite get the full thing though. Yeah. Is smelling blood with that move. Oh no, he didn't finish it. Nice break. Oh, down forward two. Down forward two. That's a great move for Cooney. Oh, oh just, awkward. Just cancels it, but it doesn't matter because he manages to get the win over DBP in the first game. Very nicely done by Fergus. You'd love to see that Cooney travel. It's just from one end to the other, it just looks awesome. Now, in that game, I'm not sure. Cooney, she, in terms of a weakness that I've seen or just an aspect to play against her, keeping her at a distance seems like a, a good strategy to take. That was a very sort of up close battle for the most of it. So I wonder if the next approach would be let me get the damage and try and have her to come in because she has mm. to take this to come in. Her range isn't too great. She can throw the Kunai, but it's not. It's not like an overpowered projectile where they can just throw it all day and get damage. So I wonder if now if he just slows it down. Okay, let me get the damage because he he done two sweet bangs and then tried to mix it for a third. He had the life lead. Did he really need to go into another sweet bang and get launched and then get carried to the wall and then mm. be in his enemy mixed up situation? So he probably should have done two and go right now. You come to me. I've got the life lead. Then you have to come to me before I'm going to commit because then she's going to have to do her set. Uh, start mixed up and try and dash in and go for the low, which can be launched. So we'll, we'll see how he plays this match. It's the first time he might have played Kuni today, and actually, instead, her being a kind of new old character, but hmm. I don't think many people played her that much in Tag 2, to be honest, and, and, and before that. So you could basically say a new character of how much she's changed. I think I think new character based on what I've seen versus Tag 2. Mm. Uh, there are obviously a lot of things there, but there's, she's. There's a lot of love being put in this character for a, a character that's been added so late into the season of Tekken, mm. into the the life of Tekken Seven. That uh, that's what I love so much about this this instance of Kunimitsu. There's, it's not been like you know a sketchy character with a few new moves. Uh, it's been a really well thought out character that's a lot of fun to play, a lot of fun to watch. Really like this Kunimitsu. Yeah. I'd even say like Leroy and fucking Rom aesthetically what they tried to do just worked out bad in terms of them being overpowered gods. Yeah, I agree. I think the their aesthetics are great. They're characters that 
uh, and fighting styles that I genuinely nice. really enjoy. Oh, oh excuse wow. me? <laughs> I think you can size that. Very fun tools. Very. I tried to step that vertical, got caught though. <laughs> yeah, PTSD. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was. I thought I was watching Tekken. <laughs> oh man. I mean, it doesn't look like DBP was at all perturbed by that sequence of events because he's about to even up this life lead, but it doesn't matter. Whoa, You're going to get up and three forward. Very nicely oh, done by Fergo. my dinner. Oh, he wants to go home and have some of that beautiful Irish food. Oi, backfist. Took off the head. Oh, nice. He tried to get the, the splat to get the full combo there. And go got a bit too early. Punished. Nice. nice. Great situation, and he just runs in, picks it with a low, classic load. Can Bob. we get Cooney for Soul Calibur, please? Should be dope. Oh, <laughs> Whiff into low parry, what a mad lad. <laughs> Cooney's hitboxes, excuse me. Does it again? Gets the throw that he got in the last game. Very nice. Finishes like he did as well. Nice. Manji low kicks. Fight. Well, this one game from progressing onto this top eight. That full crouch mix, super strong with Cooney and Fergus. One the of the. Uh, oh, oh, great he lord! If he's not dead, he's got a pixel left. So close. Nice read. Had to make that read, but yeah. still doesn't do enough. There we go. Fergus moving on. Two games to nada against DBP. One of my predictions has got through. Fingers crossed for the next one. Damn, I'm out. <laughs> do you, you want to just head off and get some food, Dragon? Yeah. Let's just, let me just log in. We just eat now. We can't go anywhere. So I'm like, just order <laughs> to go. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> exactly. Just way. take over. Just do a big round trip across the UK for all three of us to get some food. <laughs> Well but played no, by Fergus. Yeah, Fergus Good performing call. so well there. I mean, he's been playing Kunimitsu so much. Um, he's almost could be called a character expert for Kunimitsu. That full crouch mix is devastating in the right hand. Along with those weird, chunky hitboxes, Fergus just managed to, uh, to take it pretty convincingly. Yes! 300. Well yeah, this is what I was smiling at before. Have a little look. We got Abominable with the $25. Thank you very much, Abominable. And then Richie with that 15 direct contribution. $308, happy birthday. Happy holidays, not birthday. Happy holidays at ICFC. $308 and <laughs> 69 cents. Nice one, 308. I need to have a look back to see what was the biggest one for you. I think this, for some reason, this might be it. I'll have a look, but excellent work getting $300 for everyone, man. That is, that's, that's good. You know, shout out to community that's really got on board. Four weeks into a tournament series, and jumping from 58 participants to over 100 consistently and then $300. It's, um, it's a good sight to see, all online. Partly in thanks to the new net code and people having the confidence to play online with Tekken. And also thanks to Tenno for seeing that, having this and pulling the trigger. So yeah, speaking of Tenno, you can follow them. Twitter.com slash Tenno Media, YouTube.com slash Tenno Media and Patreon.com slash Tenno Media. For them to scout this and go, do you know what? This looks like an opportunity for us to do something on a bigger scale, but we need the infrastructure. And then coming out and getting this rolled out very quickly across um, multiple regions, Asia, NA, and EU is um, is a sight to, to behold. So thanks to everyone, and thanks to production as well. It's often the people behind the scenes that don't get the, the support. Like if it goes wrong, it's their fault. We don't get the blame because <laughs> we're, just, we're just talking over a game. So. Shouts out to the production and everyone behind the scenes, all the admins as well. Definitely, yeah, what a smoothly run tournament as well. This tournament has absolutely flown by so far. I'm always amazed with the TOs, as well as production, of course, who so, so made this such a smooth event to commentate. But the, the tournament just moves along so quickly. It's really great to, to see. Yeah. Sorry, speaking of Macharinos, North America in week two got $1,300. Do what? <laughs> in week three, they got eight hundred dollars. We improved on ours. We had two hundred twenty-two in week three. Now we got three hundred. But NA with one thousand three hundred dollars in week two. 
Step we it won. up, guys. <laughs> Step it up. Week, oh, week one, my. it was two grand. Week one, it was two grand. I don't get it. Same <laughs> caliber. It's literally same in caliber. Like, I don't... Do, are, are the Americans just richer than us in Europe? Is that just what happens? I don't know. Round one. No, you're oh, not yeah, careful. You're gonna get loads of EU players getting those VPNs, like pretending they're American. Like, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> French dudes faking American accents for that money. Look, <laughs> trying to get that no, money. What it is is uh, they use the coupon codes. That's what it is. So you've got to use them coupon codes. But we've got the French, uh, the French on French. Oh, sorry, my my mic was cut out there. We've got the French on French action. Super Akuma versus Kalak. Kalak showing off to be uh, an incredible competitor throughout this tournament. Super, super strong, even Ooh. with Lily. That was clutch. The way you that was that. so clutch. <laughs> Level 3 focus, he would have been dead. Oh, that was oh break no it. break on the ground. That's where Kalak, like I said, he was the champion last week. Can he become a two-time ICFC preseason champ? This stack tournament. Side there. I, bet this, I reckon this isn't too bad for Lily. I mean, I don't know the, the full detail, but decent sidestep, good, good high jab. You'd think that this might be pretty good for her. And also her movement as well. Nice. Nice. Yo, bro. Nice. He's got no meter. Oh, oh nice. trying to jump again. This is what this is what has been stopping Super Akuma from actually doing jumps on jumps on jumps. I mean, he was having trouble against the Bob. Now he's having trouble doing this against Kalak. I mean, you've got to play more of a neutral game. Stop trying to get them jump ins and then oh. rush ins, and there's a oh. on Big big damage incoming. Oh, look at that! Oh, wow. Look at that! No oh my God. <laughs> No! He jumped because like, I'm going to jump even higher than you. <laughs> that was BM to the maximum. Let's go. Love the meter charge and just chipped him away. Nice. Kalak, <laughs> yes. Kalak looking very oh, strong. Very strong. Lord. That was sick, man. You don't see much Lily action anyway, so seeing this kind of level is uh, is really good. This, that was sick. He jumped. He was like, well, I'm just going to jump higher than you. Yeah, so, literally. Whether if it was a reactionary jump or if it was just uh, like the timing at which he was going to try and jump, it was just perfectly timed. Perfectly timed. Oh man. So what do you do if you Super Kuma? What adjustments do you make to your playstyle? I, I doubt you're picking a different character, so let's jump stop. to how you play differently. Stop jumping, I guess. Like straight up just stop jumping, try and hit more of those down twos. Uh, maybe more down fours, try and trip her up. I mean, there's not been a lot of them. I think Super Akuma's tried to maybe outstyle. Uh, but if, I guess, you just slow down the game a little bit more, you force Lilies to make mistakes, and then you just kind of exploit them. I mean, Akuma's super good at that anyway, so, you know. Kalex's movement, and using Git Lily and his movement generally, is really paying off in this. And I like at the end that little um, interaction because Look, he had EX meter to do the Shoryuken, so he had the invincible mm. wake he wanted to. He used that submissive heal with Lily. He just waited a little bit. Super Akuma's not known for being so EX heavy when he's down on life. I'm just going to mash it, you know, wake up mm. Shoryuken. So I like that stagger approach to yeah. just kind of wait before and then I'm going to do it. So good work from Kalak. And Doug's saying in the chat, when he's in the zone, <laughs> good luck. So <laughs> like I'm getting... Actually, no, wait. If if we one of our players get into it, do we get like half? Of no, it, it has to be it has to be the exact double. So if Super Kuma doesn't get in, but Fergus does. I'd lose. Okay. Round one. Fight. Right. Immediately starting off back step into focus. <laughs> Gonna punish that. He knows this matchup so well. Half a bar. Oh, nice. right. Look at that sidestep. Nice. Oh, the sidestep. Oh, wow. I'm seeing it, man. When he's in the zone, like, good luck. Oh, Look at that. Acrobatic. That was the definition of in the zone. Fight. 
Man, never really Super did this. Like, Super okay, Kuna okay, okay, kind of like stuck, like how to break someone down and approach. Yeah, he's looking quite lost. I mean, he's trying to enforce his game plan, which was working for him previously in the tournament, but Kalak not having any of it, just shutting down Super Kuma at every single instance. Did, did, oh, good break. Oh, moon. Okay, no, it doesn't get a good splash, so not, not as big a damage. Launch! Oh, the wall! Oh, he's got rage now. Using that jump to keep him out. Yeah, punish. Punish. Oh, no. Yes. Oh, no. Super Akuma is one round away from being... Oh, I've just seen actually his first of three winners finals. Uh, right, this is winners finals. Of course it is. First of three, never mind. Wow. Look at this, it was all in Kalex's favor. Mid, now it goes low. Now it goes for the throw, back against the wall. I'm starting to look at that position now. If you get comboed with Akuma in the back end tool, you're not getting a wall to wall death combo, so. <laughs> yeah, you're not. Yeah. And he's dead. But he does have one more to come back. It's not mm. the end. Not the end at all. And if there's one thing you know about an Akuma player in general, is that if they if they get given an inch, they'll take a mile. So as long as Kalak just plays consistent, plays defensive and punishes when they're supposed to, should be all over for Super Akuma. Could well be, could well be. Whatever happens, Kalak's not changing his game plan now. I mean, why would he change a thing? He has absolutely nothing to change about the way he's playing. Super Kuma's, he's got to do something. You know, does he Does he commit that he's a good chance he's going into losers and then he decides to just gamble it all on a different character? Or does he completely and drastically change the way he plays? He's, he's got to do something drastically different now. Very true. Like you said, it's mm. what happened. Nothing's working so far, and it's kind of like Kalex, like a, a, a solid wall, an iron wall. And it's like, how do I? It can really be disheartening to break someone down and think, you know what? I try to go low, and he's always ready to read the low, and I'm I'm getting launched, and I'm seeing a bit. A little, maybe he's getting a bit faster because one one round he was close to taking it. He did two unsafe moves. And mm. Kalik punished him perfectly both in a row. One was a jab punish, one was a launch. So it's kind of like he has to probably dial that down in terms of using those moves that were unsafe. But I'm not an Akuma specialist. Maybe it's the case of he had thought, let me take a risk because I'm playing too safe and defensive and it's not working. But, you know, I'm interested to see how, you know, Super Akuma is, a, is an EU champion. You know, he's EU champion, won many tournaments. Um, so let's see how he deals with this. Indeed, yeah. indeed. I think it is definitely definitely an opportunity to actually just adjust a play style there because it's just not working out at the moment. I think you're gonna have to maybe reevaluate how aggressive you are, reevaluate how defensive you are. If there's something that just isn't working, don't try and push that game plan because if it isn't working, you're just gonna get even more punished if you try and enforce it further. Um, I mean, I'm not like like Dragon, I'm nowhere near an Akuma specialist. Like, all I know is what I see. Uh, but it looks like he could do with a little less aggressiveness and possibly try and hold himself back and maybe be a bit more poke heavy to try and uh, to try and poke Kalak out of these really good reads. And he's made his decision. Cape of Enlightenment. He's got to change the way he's playing right now drastically. How is he going to switch it up? Is it going to be something that's, that's quite visible to our eyes? Let's find out. Hmm. <laughs> Right. So we get into, we've got the alchemy break, so we've got floor break on this all in play. 11 wins in a row. Wow. Oh. Hello. Throw it out straight away. Good block there. Jumping jabs. So he is playing quite. Yeah, and way more defensive. Good back steps. Nice, them long legs of Lily just catching him no matter what. Look at that sidestep, man. Her movement is just so ghost like. Round two. So very smooth, yeah. Good job. Oh, nice. 
got him to duck. Now we'll go into this with a ch with some bar to use if he wants to use it for a mix-up. Doesn't. Oh, the jabs! Now we. Oh my god! That's we go it. through the wall. We do. <laughs> Where are you oh going? Oh, heels. Submissive heels. Where are you going? Oh, and there's another bar ready, locked and loaded. The carry. Good state now. Oh, oh. Round three. Now Liddy's got some pretty nasty floor break stuff. Okay, he doesn't get a pick up from that though. Good step up on that punish. Super Kuma, Super Kuma playing way more reserved now, just trying to poke out Kalak. Oh man, just not quick enough on the punish. Can see Kalak getting slight little bit frustrated trying to press a few buttons oh, but that's a beautiful a duck into punish very nicely done by Kalak. oh no oh, it doesn't look sweet again awkward oh, oh the wall has it saved him no oh. he picked up straight up to the ground great pick up that fight the music going crazy <laughs> This is the beginning oh, of the turnaround. Oh, the snipe. Now, you should break it now, surely. No! Punish. Yes. Both of these players just waiting for an opportunity to break that floor to get some extra damage. Wow, Super Kuma. Oh. God, that was some absolutely solid neutral play. Just a great poking game. Super Kuma may be listening to the stream right now. That more defensive play poke heavy play managed to net him a game and i hope we kind of see more of that because i love going down to uh to 2-2 that's so much more exciting i like what you did there because he was using a down forward one series because kalak ducked the uh the high version and launched it so he was mm. like all right i'm gonna keep doing it because you're gonna want to duck and he was just keeping against the wall down forward one, down forward one, single down forward one, single down forward one, then into the mid version. Single down forward one, into the mid. He was messing up his <laughs> timing. So now, you don't need a combo. You've hit that, that mix up three or four times and you've lost a lot of life. So great adjustment. In terms of, like you said, are we going to see it or not? I was thinking, I haven't kind of seen it so much, but that one interaction, so okay. He used his um, good reactions against him because he was ready to duck that. So I just keep using single down for one, single down for one. And that's what we see at high level Tekken where it does kind of get boiled down to a more simple game when you get to higher levels. Yeah, it definitely does. I, I noticed um, that he, he didn't win by getting some crazy big, big ass combo that, you know, took him across the floor and like, you know, just but bagged in the win. He had to grind his opponent down. Hmm. I think that's, that's you know, long set. That is the kind of win where you start to build momentum. You know, where you really do start to you, you win so many scenarios, so many situations. And yeah, that, that was a close game, but it was night and day with the previous two games. Night and day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I think definitely grinding down is the correct term to use because it has been, uh, it's been a long day. We're coming up to about 11 p.m., just gone 11 p.m. here in the UK. Uh, so for the people who are further in, in the time zones, it's going to be even later. Um, so when you start to actually grind down on perhaps maybe lack of sleep or you've been like treading through this tournament for the entirety of the like almost four hours that we've been doing it you will start to make some very silly mistakes and make some weird decisions and i think super kuma is able to exploit those weaknesses with his character because he just understands timing so well absolutely right and so we've gone to an infinite stage actually selected infinite stage not random round one fight well it's all that space to move around oh that was actually quite spicy good step into that move that's why you picked infinite azure right so that you can see the moon and launch him to it oh, and oh. again Sent him to the Oh, oh, nice. <laughs> that. That's Round a cheeky two. backhand if I've ever seen yeah. one. 
Uh, it looks like Super Akuma just couldn't get any momentum in that first round, and now it looks like the same thing's going to be happening again. Kalak just making all the right decisions at the right times, chasing him down, giving Super Akuma room to breathe, trying to get another jump, jump. <laughs> Punch her in the oh, booty. Days, oh. he can't do wrong. God, oh. these sidesteps. Super Akuma. The sidesteps is what the sidesteps into punishes is what's killing Super Akuma. He needs to do uh, more homing moves, more what we would call horizontal moves, just more moves that will catch the Lily stepping. Otherwise, he's just going to keep dying to this sidestep, and it's going to be a bad day for him. Oh, no. No. oh, that's the thing with Matagorn. You pick the wrong thing, and then they, you will get launched for it. Oh man! Unlucky man, Kalak. Doing really well, one round from progressing into the grand finals. Very good. Oh my god! Oh. First one of this first one of this uh, set of three rounds. Kalak looking pretty good right now, but there's a focus attack into the armor. Super Akuma's got almost two bars into the demon. Boo. I like this choice. 14 seconds left. He hasn't got a lot of time to use it, so might as well use it now. Mm -hmm. He's still got work to do. He's going to have to use his bar. He does. Oh, and he gets in. This Kalak may still pressing. not be enough. If he can get the life lead, though, which he has done, he's going to be trying to... Oh, he's actually he moving it. forward. And he actually gets a round after pursuing Kalak. Just getting completely rushed down in that last 10, 20 seconds. Absolute godlike performance from Super Akuma. But now we're resetting it. He jumped over the fireball like he was Street Fighter 2. <laughs> <laughs> Good low block. I can, I can feel the surge of energy coming from Super Kuma after taking that round. Yeah, I <laughs> <slightly> don't. <laughs> okay, yeah, never mind. <laughs> Oh yeah, the momentum's in there. You can feel his chain, something's changed. Yeah. Oh, Super Akuma just with the KBDs. Getting caught with the lows though. Nice flow. The launch doesn't get it. Not long left though. Super Akuma could make one mistake and then suddenly he wouldn't have any time to gain it back. Nine seconds. Oh, he's still got a life lead, not anymore. And he's got the flow. This is going to work. He's going to get the demon. <laughs> He's living on an actual prayer. Who's been praying for this man? Because he's living on it right now. This has been the the closest set we've had all tournament. And it's the hypest at the same time. Oh, man, this is so close. Zuma Kuma definitely did some study. Oh, nice work. Again. This Get was up. looking all Kalak, but now Super Akuma about to even it up if he manages to take this round to 2-2. Two -two. Mm. It's starting to look a bit shaky now for Kalak. Oh, oh no. no! Okay, go for the next up. Things. Yeah, just uh, throw out a few Matterhorns now. <laughs> you need it! Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. get caught stepping. Super Akuma brings it back from the brink of death. Two games apiece. Very, very well done. Damn, we want to be reverse sweet because. If anyone was going to do it, it would be a Super Akuma. Like we said, he's he's won multiple tournaments. He is a, a EU champion, though. He's mm. um, and I like that you said abominable. It's we're not seeing a. He just got a lucky death combo. We're like, oh Akuma. Huh? We're not we're not saying that. We're we're seeing him break him down, work at his playstyle, and he's also capitalizing on the sort of mental damage because now Kalex a bit a bit more reserved, a bit more shaky. And we're seeing him really get in his head. He's running with momentum. So this is the mark of a champion. This is showing how, you know, I'm down two games. If this was versus two, I'd be out. This is the championship era um, round and, and situation. How am I gonna come back? The fact that he's brought it back to 2-2 two, two now, he's done the work. So Kalak is the one that's gonna have all that pressure and stress on him. So I wonder how we're gonna see Kalak adjust in this one. Do you know what? I'm gonna say it. If I was in Kalak's corner right now, I'd say mm -hmm. don't change anything because Super Kuma had to pull about three or four rabbits out of a hat to win that game. <laughs> and if he, he has to do it if he has to do it again, then good luck to him. Like I think Kalak did enough to win the game many, many times over, but Super Kuma just 
played amazingly. I think he should just go at it again. Mm. But let's see but if he does. But you've also got to, you've got to recognize the first game where Super yeah. Akuma completely dominated. It was like it was a completely different Round person. One. So, you know, I think Fight. I agree though. Kalak should do nothing except play and adapt. Like, don't change character, don't do anything different. Nice. Just do what you're currently doing because Matterhorns like that are going to be the deciding factor in this set. I didn't see if he chose the stage, but he picked, he went to, he had the choice of picking the stage and he's gone to the stage that he lost on. He did, he did pick the stage, but yeah. He's doing well right now, though. That's good interrupt he into the throw. The he did, he did choose the stage and losing it before, but he did have like defeat snatched from the claws of victory a couple of times. I just think. True. Yeah, it was a weird game. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, in football when uh, a team has been crazy pressuring you and they've just missed every single and goal. And he's done it again. He's had it okay. snatched away from him again. It's I literally, it. yeah, it's literally like. <laughs> I hate to say this, but it's like it's not deserved, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, like, Kalek is doing so much work to actually get uh, Super Akuma Fight. down to a pixel of health. And then he's just, he's one button launching and then into demons and stuff. Like, Super Akuma is a beast and he is absolutely deserving of these victories because he's reading everything well. But, you know, Kalak is just doing just as well, just not able to close it out. His final moments, he's whiffing the big moves, just giving him the chance to get launched. And it's not even with Shoryuken, it's with like his other slower launch moves. Wow. Will Kalak be able to finish this round off? Gonna end it? Yes, oh, there we go. <laughs> round three. Fight. Oh, doesn't launch it. Yeah. I'm expecting him to launch every whip at this point, he's playing so well. Yeah. Okay, he doesn't bring the regular through. So used to looking for the command room. Kind of thing, See. very reserved, not overextending. Very nicely done. Cheeky little poke. Good nice. interrupt. Scale damage, but still gets it, drops a combo to reset it, keeps him close for the Oki. This isn't going to kill, but it's going to do a hell of a lot of damage, and he's only got 22 seconds left. Yeah, he's oh. in rage now. He's got no EX bar. Oh. Wow! Sidestep rage drive. Yeah, the cowboy. Very, very nice. Seen that too much today with them covering the distance with Cartwheel. <laughs> he just slags her in the face. <laughs> Oh man, that's what you get for sidestep raid drive. You oh, get palm. No, we got it. Try to, but just unlucky. He needs if he's Kalak is going to lose this round. He needs to do it by making a Kuma spend spar. He doesn't. Now it's looking rough. Two rounds apiece. Final, final round. I can't believe this. He's working on the reverse tweet. Oh, good oh, options. Down to. Fireball. And he's gonna build another bar. No punish. Oh, great punish on that one. The jumps, the jabs, the pokes. Uh, Super Akuma looking spicy for a seven gold and let a win here. All he needs is he's down for one snap. He doesn't need to do anything. He's just gonna. Nice. Oh, sweet. Oh, oh and again. God. Two in a row. Completely fair. Low. GG's to Super Akuma, and we go immediately to the Maturino page. $319.19. Let's go. Are we? I just, I just need to very quickly ask uh, the people behind the screens. Are we out of coupon codes yet? Not sure. So that means no. So definitely go back to the Maturino, hit that coupon code. You can see it on your. You could have seen it on your screen. ICFC EUPRE4 for a free 50 cents to the prize pot. And if you can, please direct donate to make bigger contributions so that our competitors have something incredible to fight for. Indeed, now I've got to do it. Super Kuma, dude, that was amazing. That was and that was amazing, dude. How yeah. you turn that round, I don't understand. And you did it on an infinite stage and there was no crazy massive combos. You just kept grinding it. And that was sick, man. That was sick. Yeah. 
didn't give up, stayed composed, pressed the right buttons at the right time. And that's essentially all you need to do when it comes down to it. I mean, look, let's not take away from Kalag, right? That right. dude did so well through the entire tournament. I mean, he's not out yet, right? He's into a uh, loser's final while waiting the other people to finish. But yeah, I mean, big props to Kalak for actually getting this far and for holding his own against Super Akuma. But he's not out yet. He could get two grand finals for the rematch if he manages to win in loser's finals. So. Yeah, I've, I've played Kalak in tournament and he is just a beast. He is scary mm. to play against. Just unbelievably good. And I know that he's. There's still. I reckon there's still a twist in the tale of this story for sure. Both of these guys mm. seem to know how each other play. They seem very evenly matched. And uh, Kalak, of course, is going to be waiting for Fergus or Crossfire. And we're going to see this uh, game coming up. Fergus, who's had some massive clutch wins coming through this tournament so far, been an absolute pleasure to watch. And I'm really surprised. I'm surprised twice, actually. I'm surprised to see Fergus back with Asuka. Mm. And Crossfire's using Armor King. We're going to see some Armor King today. All right, look, I said I was disappointed that I didn't see any Kunimitsu and Armor King. And I've now I've seen both. I'm satisfied. I'm happy. So, um, could you, either of you, shed any light as to why Fergus has gone to Asuka? I mean, I assume it's probably because of just old main character familiarity feels more confident. But Kunimitsu, he did just as well on her, if not better, than his Asuka games. I, I wouldn't say there's anything. I think, how can you say what is best to play against Crossfire in the matchup? Because Crossfire's picked about four or five different characters this tournament. <laughs> Very true, so, yeah. I think... He, he either thinks that Crossfire isn't as good against his uh, Asuka, I assume they've played. I don't know, I mean, he, he's always committed that he is an Asuka main, so m maybe that's it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, go back to the character you know, right? That's that's how you can do your best work. But I'm impressed with the level that Crossfire plays at with so many different characters. Doesn't go for the wall splat version, goes for the throw, dumps yeah. it. Goes to the low. Oh, dark upper. Fergus on the back foot right now. Pushing him right to the middle of the stage. Rage Drive goes for the frames. Oh, three. Oh. Again. First frames on that. Round three. Fight. Talent in the air. Oh, oh so I said two steps. one. Nice. This will do a good chunk. Nice. Power bomb, let's go. I like <laughs> it. Goes into stance tackle, then stance low. That stance now has a high, which is really, really useful. Nice, he ducked, but then punished it. Oh, oh but, wow, look at that domination. You win. And remember, this is the first of two, because it's loser semis. Fergus only has one more chance. Mm. I, I guess that minimum one more chance. Uh, but yeah. It looked completely dominant at the moment. I'm not entirely sure what Fergus was thinking. Perhaps he was, uh, like you were saying, Abominable, that maybe Crossfire doesn't like the Asuka matchup that much and mm. is weaker to his Asuka. But if that's the case, we didn't see that at the moment. I wonder if he's maybe going to switch to Kunimitsu. Just to, like that character unfamiliarity, perhaps the mix-up potential is more in his favor. I'm not entirely sure, but, you know, we'll see. Maybe no, it wasn't no. about picking Asuka. Maybe it was about not picking Kudamitsu. Oh, maybe he thought Crossfire was... Yeah, sorry to, to jump in there. Mm. Maybe he knew... Maybe he's been playing him because based on what you see of Crossfire, he seems to know it. a new character. He's played most characters. Mm, okay. I had a similar thought because there's some of the players who have been using Kudamitsu day one and, you know, as much as Fergus, but then... They know the character, so you don't have that, oh, I'm going to use this character against him. And knowing, you know, Fergus yeah. played a lot of people in the EU, he's probably played before and probably knows that, ah, oh, he knows Kunimitsu. So we will see in the next one who he picks because that's also um, a factor where he hasn't played yeah, Kunimitsu as long as he played Asuka, no matter what. No matter if you've been playing your, your, your day one. So you can't go wrong if you're your main. And like um, Ron will said, he seems to be a character specialist. But he's gone to Kunimitsu anyway, so not a bad choice mm. regardless, I, I feel. But he is a TGO as Kuni, so he should, by default, beat Crossfire, right? <laughs> well, let, let, let's be straight about some of Armor King's weaknesses. He's stubby in some areas, he's linear in many areas. These are things that Kuni can exploit. 
Like, if, if Crossfire whiffs a bat one, Cooney can launch with an forward two, she can step so much of his stuff. Very scary. Down going for the uh, the two 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 strings. Fergus, no fear. Nice. He knows not that the back turn mid -solid. He didn't want to deal with it with that low mid, so he just hot kicked. Get up. Oh my. That is a brutal throw. <laughs> yes. Just ground up out of Back that into is your head. so brutal. Treat count power, very nice. Shoulder, nice. Yeah, it's such a treat to see these characters that you don't really see in tournaments. No punish, nice. Stance is a little bit more viable now. No back turn throw. Decent damage. Though. He tried it oh, again. Not falling for that again, yeah. Step two, very very nice. Damn, the, the raw sets. Nice! Look at that Quarter slender. circle forward one. Very nicely done by Fergus there. Beautiful timing on the Kunai throw. I mean, why would you not pick Kuni? You got 35 wins, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? That alone is mental advantage, just seeing that on the other person's side, yeah. Precious, they're very precious. Oh, Shining Wizard did it across the screen. Very good punch by Fergus, though. Nicely done. Hopkick. Very stubby hopkick. Set two. Very nicely done. Oh, low parry. Rage drive. Rage art. It's such a sick rage art. You would say that. Got loads of playing and blades. That's my, that's what I, I'm playing. Everybody's got a flaming sword. Everybody's got crazy lightning effects. It's great. Basically a soul charge to combo that. <laughs> yeah, right. That's why we need Cooney and, Ka and Calibur. She'd fit right in. Delete oh, tacky. Oh. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, Fergus on the back foot right now. After that dominating win in that last round, he seems to be, never mind, up 3-4. Very, oh, but he dropped a combo. Not going to be happy about that. Staying composed though, pushing crossfire to the wall. Oh, nice. Oh, back there, bro, dead. I like the fact that Fergus is realizing that he's, when he goes back turn, he's trying to hop kick it or doing something. So Fergus is consistently either picking the fastest option or he's knowing, rather than just going back turn and himself guessing, I'm going to go middle or low and just throw it out. He's actually saying, Last time he hop kicked me instantly as soon as I went back turn. So this time I'm going to pick the fastest option. I'm going to pick the option that I'm going to go into back turn in plus frames where he can't interrupt. So I'm always mm. going to win. So I like how he's really, you know, he's seeing the game and going, right. He seems to be, his reactions are so good. I can use it against him. He's, as soon as I back turn, he's trying to hop kick and just do these hard reads while well, I'm going to stop that. So it's just the, the sign of really intelligent play. Up kick can be used as a panic button by some Armour King players, and I feel mm. that when you when you start to bait that out, that you actually are taking so much of their mind game and their risk away, because they, 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 a nice, quick, short, uh, stubby little uh, low crush uh, mechanic, and you just say, no, 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 I know you're going for that crap. I'm, I'm going to slow down and keep changing my pace, and it just takes them away from the opponent. It's very useful. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're getting right back into the next game. Wonder if we'll see a character switch from Crossfire. Marduk, there it is. All right, Marduk. So we're going to the Twilight Conflict. Switch to the Marduk now. Abominable, you said earlier, like in terms of matchup and the grappler characters and characters well, crushing, this might not be a good option, man. Look how tall he is compared to her. It's not great, but he's got a good range in his down forward one. And she's got a lot of buttons, so I think you should always be looking for that. Um, but I, she's not been around that long. A lot of characters are still working out to be yet. I don't mind Marduk versus her. You've got to be aware of your weaknesses. She can backdash out of a lot of his stuff and step a lot of this time too. You just gotta be very careful how you approach it. Oh, that was a beautiful whiff on it. Just knocked her across the arena. Nice set two though. Down 
jab. Punish into the nice Valley Tudo mix up. Is he going to guess right? Of course he's not going to guess right. Too many options to guess right. Nicely done by Crossfire. Oh, oh but but he's low rising. Four. Very nice. Not going to be enough to kill. Get some more wall combo. Oh, oh my whoa. god. I said he's dead Duh. now. <laughs> yeah, he's dead now. <laughs> Nice. This is gonna hurt now. What's he gonna do? Is he gonna go for the? Oh, okay, he didn't get to go for any of the throw ground mix-ups. Dominating there. Wow, that was good. Really, just absolute lockdown there. Oh, good break. Nice. 50 from set. Very nicely done. Using that one just to keep her out of it. Useful. Now back two. Oh, God, the massive oh. knee. And he's spacing it perfectly on these moves. No break on the grab. God, these. God, I love Cooney's animations so much. They're so sick. Get caught in the air. Not getting a full Oh, that could, it. that could be it. Let's go, Fergus takes it two to one over Crossfire. Fergus moves into a loser's final to fight Kalak. Whew. The streak is still continuing. Honestly, I think it's, is it 40 wins now? 40 or something? <laughs> something like that, yeah. Jesus, the Undertaker would have loved that. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's crazy. So just okay. So just think, Kudamitsu comes out very recently, might I add. Fergus plays the hell out of her. TGO enter. This is like the first tournament he's entered where he's actually played her as well, and is now in losers final. I think that progression is incredible. It's good going. It's good going. And mm. I think you, know, you could say, oh well. The opponents don't know the character that well. I don't think we've really seen that. I think a lot of his opponents at this level, they have looked at the character. I mean, it, it, these are top level players and a lot of them have used her as well. Mm. You know, and a lot of the players he's played against are also waifu players. So you just assume they're going to have some knowledge of the player. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, he's done, he's done really well. I think there's also the way that Kuni was made compared to say like Leroy. When you played Leroy day one, in fucking rum, it feels like, well, I just can't win. When I played Cooney, <laughs> it, it feels like, okay, so she's got her strong areas, she's got her areas that she's not too weak at. So even when I didn't know any Cooney, found and ranked, I sort of developed a game plan. I felt like, okay, I can still play better than my opponent and win. So like you said, it's not like um, the opponents haven't known the matchup or, or known so much. Fergus is able to still overcome that because they've been shown some excellent reactions that you know, dealing with back turn stuff, knowing how to punish moves that are launch punishable as well straight away. So you can see these plays have gone, how do I punish this character, you know, fairly quickly, like you said, Dan or I, not many people have always sort of neglected, the people have neglected learning new characters so quickly, but these top plays have shown that they have done it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, we're not done yet. We have $319.19 still in that match arena. Let's have a little cheeky refresh. Yes, we do. Thank you to Nijota Esports with the 50 cent coupon code Eternal Dragon. I have a feeling you may have something to do with that. Um, let's have a little look through some of these. <laughs> so through some of these messages. Hallway Raptor with the 50 cent coupon code. Fergus Fighting indeed. Diego Ocampo with the 50 cent coupon code. Let's go, Fergus. Uh, and then scroll down some of them. Uh, Paria form with the 50 cent coupon code. Uh, here half an, an euro. I'm confused. Uh, Coalmine underscore Canary with the 50 cent coupon code. Less than three Fergus. I agree. He is less than three. Uh, of course, Richard Denton with that $15 direct contribution. Happy holidays, ICFC. Abominable. The GOAT, $25 direct contribution. Merry Christmas, you filthy animals. Sean Anscombe, two dollars sixty-nine direct contribution got here in the end. The Gold Elite, the Gaga guy. Someone needs to dethrone this crazy G guy. I think that's going to be almost impossible unless uh, Orathil decides to donate another like thirty-three dollars. Uh, Swallows with the Scrup, King Aggie, Merry Christmas, ICFC, Omnide with Yes, <laughs> uh, 
Uh, VP Mark, this Tekken is good ass. Uh, noob Numbers, GG. Rexu, thank you, Tenno Media, for organizing this. Indeed, indeed. Zanetsu, ready for some good ass Tekken. And Liam Frostman with the smiley face. Perfectly sums up Tekken, in my opinion. Nice. Excellent list of, of you know, generous contributors. And everyone, if you want to find out what's happening after the preseason, because this is preseason, the main, the main meat of it is coming next year. Make sure you follow Tenno on Twitter, Patreon, and YouTube at basically slash Tenno Media and all of them. Exactly. It's not difficult to memorize like the ICFC EU PRE4. It's literally just slash Tenno Media. It's great. Here we go. Fergus versus Kalak. Oh, so actually, I another, sorry. Another law match again. Lily and the Oscar. This is so, a law match. So as a commentator, I need to be unbiased. <laughs> but as somebody who's made a bet for Fergus to be in grand finals, you better win, Fergus. I swear. Yeah, Kalak, come on, Kalak. Oh yeah, this is my guy versus your guy. Yep. Uh, my wife again. <laughs> Our girl versus your girl. My my person versus your person. There we go. <laughs> All right. So Mishima Dojo, Lily versus Oscar. Will we have actually two French players in grand final, or will it be Ireland and France? Who knows? I mean, I'm you know of course. It looks like Kalak has been put, like outperforming most players in this tournament. Like, I mean, wow. look at that. How Perfectly does he know to that do hole. that? Nice. Kalik in a great position there. Wall behind Fergus. Excellent step. Damn, loads into mids. Fergus special. Oh, so close to dying. Get hit by that cheeky low. Kalak taking the first round. First blood. No whiff punish. Very, very unsure of himself at the moment, it looks like. Oh, oh, caught oh, too dark. No, it's over Fergus, he's trying to crack Kallax's defense, but the only way he's doing that is with these really small damaging blows. Yeah, indeed called it very well both the movement between the two of them is really fascinating they're really moving very very well around each other the walls becoming a, an obstacle between them in a way that there's a lot of just kind of very tentatively moving around each other and not going fully in other than the old matterhorn from kalak it's been a very awkward game between the two of them punish that nice oh he could have punished that because it didn't actually get blocked it was weird but a bit too slow Oh, brilliant step. Great step. Not a massive punish, but you know, sometimes you just got to take the damage in the frames and be happy with that. Now, Fergus is looking like he doesn't know really what to do. I hate to say it, but it looks like his Kudamitsu is probably better than his Asuka at the moment because it looks... Fergus seems to understand his Asuka more, but he can't create great openings with Asuka at the moment. It looks like he's just... Oh, never mind. Oh, oh no. That was so many emotions in the like those two oh, seconds. No. Oh, he's dead. He's dead. And he's dead, yeah. Kalek has been making good use of the wall position. Not always getting the wall bounce, but we've seen that wall bounce more than any other characters today. He's always been knowing, right, I'm going to place you right here. Mm. And this one you, you least expect it. Lily's long legs, wall bounce, and the damage that she does off of it, it's... You don't see wall bounce that often, so for him to hit it at such a high percentage is great. He gets massive damage in the OT after it is, is good. Yeah. You know, I, I would observe that I, I know Fergus over the years to be an absolute monster at whiff punishment. This is going to sound really harsh because I don't think there were that many opportunities, but there were opportunities for him to whiff punish there and launch Kalak. Kalak did throw some things out there and they were half chances, quarter chances. But, you know, it, I was surprised that he didn't take any of them because Kalak was pressing buttons in, in air at times. Some of it was a bit baited. You could tell that he almost made it so difficult for it to be punished you can follow up with something else just to see if he could actually catch him and count it. But I was surprised. I, I actually felt like Fergus would have punished with one of the two, two fairies maybe and just got in there a bit more. But he wasn't ready. 
No, I, I, can, I completely agree. There were times where he just didn't look ready, like you say. He was just a li little bit nervous. Maybe his brain wasn't computing as fast as it normally is. I mean, it is 25 to midnight right now. Um, so you should kind of expect a little bit of degradation in performance. But compare Kalak to Fergus. Oh, I mean, but that isn't even even fair because the last game, Fergus completely dominated when he switched to Kunimitsu. Maybe the time has nothing to do with it. Maybe I'm talking out my ass. I don't know what I'm talking about. Somebody stop me. Interesting. He has actually gone to Kunimitsu. And he's gone to Anna um, in this matchup, which uh, I'm me. unsure, you know. Fight. He, um, I guess maybe because his first of three, he's got another game to work with. So he wants to try the Anna. Yeah, uh, I guess that might be right. I mean, perhaps he that. doesn't bounce. Look at that, all the bounce. 50%, more than 50% gone. So, in terms of matchups, um, does Lily do better against Anna, Kunimitsu, or Asuka? Because I have a feeling if Fergus loses this, he's going for Kuni. I don't think there's a lot in it. Especially the way Fergus played. Honestly. Yeah. Okay. It's hard to say. I mean, it definitely didn't look very easy for Fergie when he was playing against uh, playing with Asuka, that's for sure. But between Anna and Kuni, I'm not sure. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I mean, right now he's looking a bit more confident. Um, maybe that's matchup differences. Maybe he's confident in frame differences and move differences. Or perhaps, you know, he took that one L in the first game and thought, yeah, I've got to come back harder and stronger. And um, that's what he's doing at the moment. Nice, right. Oh, that's the horn. Yeah, he launches it. Good work from Fergus. And we're, you know, as he's saying, why didn't he pick fight? Can he miss you? But here he is, two rounds up. Nice. Two rounds up on Anna, yeah, for sure. I mean, oh, okay, here we go. He was listening to the stream, listening to Abominable, and I was like, I gotta start with punishing. Here we go. Nice. Oh. Good, good. Good judgment. Mix up with the low. Booty. Whoa, that, that move has done that a few times in other games with camera angle change. Yeah, punish that. He's lucky that he didn't get slapped, but he still takes it anyway. Fergus did that move that was quite punishable. He get hit, but luckily the wall splat didn't really work against him. Oh, punish it. No, didn't quite get him. Gets him with the full crouch. Oh, nice counter hit. Oh my god, these wall side walls, man. Just... Messing up their combos and the momentum. Okay, Kalak intentionally putting himself against the wall because then he's able to maneuver himself right back out of it. Good grab. Oh, so Fergus gets out of it. Nice while standing. And Fergus is going to take this with a rage art. <laughs> Bazooka time. I've, uh, I've never understood this rage art. Perhaps it's lore. Um, massive overkill. <laughs> that's yeah, sure. that's exactly what it is. It's a throwback to the Tekken 5 intro where they're fighting and she shoots the, the rocket launcher through the car. Ah, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Fair play. But yeah, good job to Fergus managing to somewhat pull himself together. He had some great whiff punishes in that set, or that game. Like, it was complete night and day. It's like he just turned on his brain or something. You'd love to see it. Love to see them kind of comebacks. Yeah, and he was using Anna. Like I, I was feeling the same vibe as you guys. Wasn't sure about the pick, but it worked out from then. Really, really solid. And these are these are matchups you don't uh, tend to see all the time. You know, Daniel, you're rightly asking what's the better matchup. I'm thinking, when have I seen Anna versus like this is this is not matchups you always see. So it's it's great to see both of them going at it at this level. Well, with the, with the character diversity in Tekken, how many characters have you got? 50-something? Yeah, I mean, there's so many characters that matchups will probably vary by a few degrees, right? So you've got you've got your 5-5s, five your 6-4s. Uh, very rarely will you have a 7-3. Um, are there any 7-3s, maybe even 8-2s in Tekken? I'm guessing maybe the bears are kind of in that category, but other than that, is there anything that's that dominating? There's a few situations where... Brian 
can uniquely punish things, you know, because of his jet upper, that sort of mm -hmm. thing that makes matchups very difficult. But you're right, you can, it's Tekken, everyone has about a bazillion moves. <laughs> the game's very, very complicated and very deep. But what that does allow for is a lot of options to get out of scenarios and just to express yourself. Uh, and it, yeah. it can make, make for an even game. I think, because of course, no, maybe, on, uh, sorry, early Gigas matchups would have been people's kind of kind of picks to be like, you know, what, this is just, and it's weird because I don't say unwinnable, but Gigas always had Come like good here. damage, but tools, he was always lacking of something, and I could see people struggling to kind of really use him in a competitive situation. <laughs> Can we appreciate what just happened? That's one, tough. one, one, two, low parry. Like, <laughs> Come on now. Oh, beautiful. Nice, just okay. crushing that light. Kalak is Sonic right now. Gotta go fast. Oh, Speed running, Fergus. Oh. You the low parry. LP me out, LP you. Oh, just a combo. But it doesn't matter. I get slapped right down. Get punished. Oh, but a great side step from Kalak. The thing that we love to see him do. Get hit by the rage drive, though. What a good option to do after the, after the heal. Mm. Really nice. Fight. Stopped anything. He tried to use the down jab, but that can always be a downfall. Good break. Get off me. Damn, the spacing. I don't care about your spacing, Kalex says. Just take a one. Take a one to the face. Use of the jab here, just so dominating. Mm -hmm. nice. nice. Use the homing move as well to stop any movement. Fight. Boy, just stomp. Okay. Fergus is looking to be in a pretty bad position at the moment. Oh, oh really great size. Step. Can we? I'm sure there isn't something made for this, but can we just give Kalak the best sidestepper award just like after the tournament? That would be great. His sidestep is so good in the Kuma matchup as well. His Lily's sidestep is also good, but the way he's placing it is just amazing. Stomp. All jumped over the full crowd. <laughs> Oh, very nice. Oh, no, he drops it, but he gets a combo anyway. Final round. Final round. He's going to take the upper hand in this first to three and lose his finals. Oh, nice. Goes for it this time. Run up, surely. Go for another one. Oh, yeah, no. why not? We haven't seen this too much today. Anna, just run go. up in your face. Just crouch. Perfect. Damn. Oh. Fergus is in Kalak's brain right now. Nicely done, going 2-1 up. One more, and Fergus puts himself in that grand finals. Ooh. He played beautifully in that last round. Just so good. Didn't get stuck into going for another full crouch mix. I've actually just stood up and, out and just out poked him. It was so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's in the driving seat, guys. He's in the driving seat. He really, really is. That switch from Asuka to Anna somehow boosted his confidence and his skill level went up it's like he went super saiyan his power level just increased tenfold and he was able to whiff punish so well block punish really well and even when he wasn't punishing anything he just ran up and mixed up kalak and then he just had, he just won he just won that's it we need to get some sort of older references cartoon references in here for me okay uh, all the references oh god okay he uh went so he was uh he went Power Ranger mode. He he put the suit on and he powered up from civilian to Power Ranger. Is that old enough for you? <laughs> Power Ranger mode. Just I was go, gonna go say. a bit further back. Go a bit further back. Be okay. Uh, uh, Beetleborgs. I, what do they do in Beetleborgs? I don't know. Uh, put on <laughs> a suit. Uh, Sonic when he goes. Chaos mode, chaos control. How far back do you want me to go? You went supersonic. Supersonic. That's supersonic. Yeah. You went supersonic. He went supersonic. I was gonna say He Man when he takes out the sword and he's like. Oh, that's old school. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's that's a good stuff. 
He Man's yeah. a good stuff. Thundercats. Oh god. Biker Mice from Mars. Biker Mice from Mars. Street Sharks as well. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Altos, yeah, beautiful. <laughs> Making the TOs feel old. Amazing. It's because you are old. But anyway, uh, moving on to the potential final game of Losers Finals. Fergus versus Kalak. Kalak sticking to Lily, the character that we've seen him th uh, play throughout the tournament. I can't wait to see what happens. Fergus staring through the Iris Thundara. He's looking at victory. Just needs to close this out. Wow, it all will work in his favour. Such a good situation because he's got the confidence of Anna starting that round with a perfect, and he's also got oh. Kunimitsu in the back as well. So this is going to be a great situation for him. You see how the pace has changed? Oh, okay. That was big. He's like, you want some of this? All right, I didn't think so. Nice. Great whip punish. Pace has changed a lot. It's a lot more aggressive now. Oh, oh no, he doesn't get it. But anyway, picks it's it up and just like low. One more, and Fergus Fight. takes this hit, takes himself into grand finals, and my prediction comes true. Oh, they both trade on the lows. Watch that. This will be close to done. Quite though. Fergus is going to be feeling this off right now. Run up, mix up, and there we have it. Fergus takes it 3-1 over Kalak. Your grand finals game is going to be Fergus versus Super Akuma. Ireland versus France. Ooh, I'm excited, boys. I'm excited. Well done, Fergus. So we are not having a two-time champion, but we might still have a second win for France. But either way, we're getting a new champion every single week in this preseason showing the diverse talent and skill across the eu which is which is great mm -hmm. guys sure, did you sure. at home drop drop the clapping and just clap for Kalak. i mean how well did he do yeah, yeah. He, every single set he played in was super hype and he just played his heart out he played well enough to win a tournament he came third today because his opponents just played so well and you guys do still do have time someone has donated to make it 69 very <laughs> nice <laughs> We have 31969 in the pot. Please do continue to donate. Use that promo code ICFCEUPRE4. Please do just scroll down and see what maybe you want to buy. There's other things down there that you might want to donate and have, have a look. So please do. We've got some great donators down there. Chris Seg, Orathil, DP Mark UK, my good self, King Aggie. And everyone else who's donated, thank you so much. You have a Merry Christmas and please do continue and do stay connected. Twitter.com, Tenno Media, YouTube.com, Tenno Media, and Patreon.com forward slash Tenno Media. Tenno Media indeed. So before we do get into this grand finals, I personally would just like to say thank you to everybody who's been watching so far. Thank you to everybody behind the scenes because without you, none of this would be possible. And thank you to the people who are genuinely carrying this commentary, Eternal Dragon and Abominable. Uh, it's been so much fun. We've got one more set to go and I have been so excited from start to almost finish and I can't wait to watch this final game. It's been a pleasure. I can't wait to do a Soul Calibur stream with you guys. One day, um, Abominable. Or am one I invited? Day. Of course you are. Nibs yeah. is invited. I, I'd rather invite you to be fair, Abominable, aside from Nibs, but you know, we, we won't say that live on stream. <laughs> You do know he plays Astroth, though. I know. That's why I like him like 2% less than I usually would. <laughs> Minus 2%. Great. <laughs> Let's go. All right. Fergus versus Super Akuma. Grand finals for ICFC preseason tournament four, wherever you're week four. Oh, yeah. man. Two players that actually qualified for the Tecmo Tour as well. So, you know, if you want to get top of the top EU, you've got it right here. Oh, oh, that's the first. Can we appreciate that's the first time a person has actually beaten Super Akuma at a fully charged uh, focus wow. attack? She did not care. She was like, You're charging that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the jump over. Fergus not falling for that one, like the people before him. Oh, no, didn't you say as well? I used to play Asuka, like this matchup. Is their standing fault quite good at stopping him? Or just her jabs as well? I, I studied it because I, they played each other in the World Finals, I believe, one time. 
and Fergus was having trouble dealing with the jump overs, but it was very early in tech, the days of Tekken. And I think I did find that the magic ball was useful, but I mean, who knows now? That was many seasons ago. I don't, I don't think it's a great matchup for Asuka, to be perfectly honest. Oh, get jumped. Fergus ain't going to be happy with that, but it's only 1-1. One, one. Way more to go. Remember, Fergus does have to reset this. Three games if he wants to win this entire tournament. Oh, nice, great nice armor pro. Oh, no. They've got nothing off of it. It's just so... A lot of drops here. What is going on? Super Akuma playing hopscotch with Fergus, but ain't no child play here. That looks too ugly in Tekken. I'm sorry, I don't like it. Punish. <laughs> <laughs> nice! Oh, God. <sighs> it does. It's the jumping over, man. It's no, I, I get it. Good, I get it. It. <laughs> it looks so dumb. <laughs> it looks really silly. Right, two bars, but no walls. He's going to spend it. Nice. Damn, Super Goon. That's a lot of damage. That's a lot of carry, but unfortunately, there's no wall to actually stop that. Doesn't jab him out of it. Wow, just backdash that down for the one. Oh. I don't know if this will kill. Maybe. No, maybe just a pixel there. Oh, oh no, worth punish, but Fergus just out of range. You have to be very careful not to lose this round, but if he does, he still has one more to get back. There we go, down. Oh. At least he made him use all his resources, albeit he is close to a bar. Very true. This is anyone's. Another one. Fergus looking to be on the back foot a little bit here, but oh. the tide could turn at any time. Severely delayed that, and Fergus tried to punish, but got hit with the uh, homing. Once again. This is not looking good for Fergus. He's in rage, but... Nice, no perfect this time for Super Akuma. No seven golden letters available to you, but that's a beautiful whiff punish. Jumping galore. What's Fergus going to do here? Super Akuma's going to just a cheeky low. That's all you need. Never mind. Cheeky punch to the face. Very, very nice. Yeah, this matchup did look. <sighs> just It didn't look like it was um, in her favor at all. I'm not saying um, it couldn't be improved on, but there was nothing that was standing out. Just thought, oh man, you know, it's going to be a bad day for Akuma and Asuka. It just looked like it was a bit scrappy at times. Kind of hard to really break down that game just because of the jumping. But Super Akuma played that well, got the life lead and kind of was just content to just kind of resort to down forward ones and jumping back and jumping away. He was jumping a lot, a lot. Just jumping back, jumping back, jumping back. It was... Uh, Probably because he's not fearing the fact that she's going to do anything kind of damaging to catch him out of the air. And um, yeah, this jumping mechanic is stupid. They should have had a... They advertised it like having everyone's got a mechanic to deal with it. But yeah. then in practicality, only... No one has a real like way to deal with like 2D components of the not game. Really. It's just it's just weird. They had a trailer which showed Kazuya jump, jumping the, the, his crap that free, jumping over here, but that... That doesn't work. It doesn't work. You have to sit there. So I'm not saying fireballs are the be all end of the Kuma, but you have this 2D character, which we know the story about it. I'm not really good. Just hopefully it's not taking it. A very quick shout out to Orithil with the $24 direct contribution, Ooh. putting himself $1 above Chris. <laughs> Here's to a good grand finals. Exactly. This grand finals is set to be amazing. The first game was already nuts. Fergus versus Super Akuma, Grand Finals, ICFC, preseason, week four. Let's go. Thank you indeed for that donation. Now, interesting, Fergus doesn't switch it up. Okay, there we go. First time we've seen the jab out uh, this time. He's able to correctly anticipate it. Nice, good use of the power crush though, but he sacrifices some damage and he's not really in a good situation after that now. Oh, nice Such a good move. Wow, complete turnaround. That was me talking about not in a good situation, but Fergus completely reversed that. Well, he was in the lead, remember, in the last game before uh, Super Puma turned it around. I wonder if the same things are going to happen now. Ooh, no. Oh, no. 
if that was in the back, he probably could have got the full launch. Boom. Soccer kick. Bike. Oh, just boots him. Just like trash. Round three. Fight. Oh, just a swift round half kick to start off that third. That game. was swift. <laughs> Great up. Fireball's coming in thick and fast. The first time Super Akuma has used them to great effect in this tournament, at least Ooh. that we've seen on stream, but that's a great... No, that was a gift from the gods and he dropped it, but that is an even better gift. Oh. No bar, no bar. I'm gonna have to carry him on this endless stage. Oh no! Raise drive, work with the plus frames, tries goes for a grab, good break, but there we break. go. Super Akuma actually manages to get that round back. Putting himself on the board. Clutch, clutch break. Please jump. What a jump! This is what he needs to do. Doesn't you don't get much for it, but you need to do it. Oh no. He opts for damage, gets the running charge, and he just absorbs all of that. Look at that. Yeah, literally, with one armor move, Super Kuma has taken the lead in life. Jump over. Oh. Good sidestep. Goes for a... Okay, interesting decision. Goes for... Oh, chase oh, Wow. Gets the knife out of the air. Sky's protected. Ooh. Oh, that was... Oh, Ray Drive. Eek, so you can know. Oh, oh my God. God. Beautiful with punish. Where are you Fergus going? Was, <laughs> Fergus was on the tiniest bit of health and just decided to chase Super Akuma down to the ends of the earth into the best with punish I've seen all day. Oh. Doing that with that pixel is... Uh... Obviously, you just make, you can't make no mistake. When you got low life, you might think oh, I can take one little, you know, down four or down three plus four. But you hate nothing. And Akuma can jump back when you think I'm going to do a mid or a high, and he avoids mm. it. So the fact that Fergus kept that composure and chased that down, that was just beautiful. It really was beautiful. Just played that so well. It was right in his head. Oh god, there were so many clutch moments there. That was really, really good. And that was a lesson to handle, how, handle some of the shenanigans that an Akuma player can get up to as well. Using that perfect time, perfectly spaced two fairy just at the right moment. And don't forget that Fergus does have a hell of a journey in front of him. He does have to reset by winning two more. And even then he's got to win three more to win the entire tournament. Super Akuma only needs to win two more games. It's a crazy feat, but the best of the best can do it in the blink of an eye. Let us know in chat who you think is going to take this. We see a lot of Fergus stands in here, and I completely understand that. But Super Akuma has been dominating this tournament so far. So let us know in chat. One for Fergus, two for Super Akuma. Who do you think is going to take this grand final? And who do you think is going to take this $300 plus prize pool pop? All right, so super kuma has picked a geometric plane um quite a few times so i guess he favors this sometimes he has gone infinite stage as well so geometric plane walls are in play more on this one, Round one. Mm. seeing a lot of twos 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 hot says one sadly two <laughs> super akuma getting a lot of love in the chat at the moment i can un completely understand why nice gets the cross up that is cures 2d stuff for that completely on the I'm gonna say completely on the offensive until that blocked uh no oh the jabs nice, nice. parry great use of uh that's good mechanics from fergus understanding the matchup pretty well to get that in oh no with finish oh, oh nice. can can let's go fight Nice. There we go. Fergus on the attack. Oh, get stuffed, Akuma. Fergus ain't scared of your focus attack. Wow. Perfect. Seven. No, not yet. Unlucky, Fergus. That was a good low parry, though. He one hit away. All you got to do. Cheeky. Yeah, I was about to say. I was literally about to say cheeky 2K. I almost went into caliber mode. <laughs> 
you came, bro. That's what it is. That's, uh, Fergus is playing so good right now. He is. He really is. But, and with Asuka, like, he hasn't always played well with Asuka in tournament, but now he's really putting it on. These Tekken hitboxes, man. They're great to watch. In the corner as well, not just the wall. Oh, Fergus, stop pressing buttons. You're getting mashed into. Oh, this is brutal. Nice, good comeback by Super Fuma. Round four. Fight. Nice jab, perfectly timed. The thing is, Asuka has kind of one of the worst jabs, but in terms of the anti airs, he's doing really well with it. Totally oh, agree. Perfect Brilliant. timing. Oh, oh the can come into the. Okay, it was a good whiff punish by Super Queen. We'll oh, see if it's going to be, but he drops the combo. Jumps into, jumps into, jumps into. Shoulder, get you launched. Very nicely done, Fergus. One more game and he resets the bracket. Chat, what are you thinking right now? Because this is looking pretty spicy. Wow. Fergus is, um, he's leveling up. He's He hasn't been like, from, from the first match, oh, he's the favorite to win because he's played the best. He's been just playing so well. And this is where he's coming off the back of a great performance with Anna. And he hasn't had to use a Kunimutsu, so he's got these other two characters that he's built the momentum with, he's got the confidence. But, and you can use all these characters, but you're really destroying them with your main. And it's Asuka when you've kind of gone back and forth. This is going to be a major confidence boost. So, Super Akuma again is in that situation. What does he do to come away from this? You know, what's your thoughts on this, uh, Danarai? Uh, well, I <laughs> just about thinking about that, I was about to put that question to you two as well. But genuinely, <laughs> I think Super Akuma needs to stick to what he's doing or what he has done previously. I think Fergus, all Fergus is doing is getting in Super Akuma's head. I think the mental frame advantage that Fergus has right now is extraordinarily in his favor. Super Akuma, even though he was able to get like complete rush down during I think the third round, he just bottled it and was able and Fergus was able to bring it back. Super Akuma once again slows it down, doesn't let Fergus get into his head doesn't pursue him too much i think he's got this but same question to you two i think abominable what do you think about this what what could super akuma do to bring this back and what could fergus do to essentially just reset this entire bracket i think he should play way more defensive and not keep trying to chase a win i think that that's a if you actually see what he's doing there he's staying on the ground i commentate his curse but he's just trying to poke and not win that's when he was doing well, but then he whiffed there, as you can see, forward to to be very for Fergus. And Fergus now looking in a very strong position to, to reset this racket. I mean, yeah, we were literally just talking about the fact that he should stop jumping and stop trying to be so offensive. Perfect example is that Fergus had him against the wall when he tried to jump and got completely murdered. Nice. I mean, oh my lord, that's so good. Oh, what a conversion. The forward two is to catch that low um, ground hit as well. Yeah, Danaway, that was sick. He just... Scooped him up like, nope, you're not getting out. Oh, <laughs> that was sick. Oh my God, Fergus is, he's too good. He's, he's powered up now. I think if Carlos oh gets this side. Okay, I'm going to stop talking because I feel like <laughs> we just need to experience what's happening. Oh, wow. Perfect timing to... Poking, but oh. getting caught pressing buttons well, and Fergus is one round away from resetting the bracket. Here we go. Oh, this is actually to behold. He's playing so good. He's just progressed with the tournament, playing better and better. And right now, he's on fire, but he does need to close this out. I'm getting beaten all around the ring at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> Oh no, Miss Low! Yeah, right up. Low. This is important. Cheeky, Fer Fergus is definitely a confidence player. He needs to just get this job done, get the reset, get into the next game. Doesn't want to play play this food too much here, he just wants the job done. That was a good duck by Fergus to avoid the grab. He's now on the defensive though, getting caught pressing buttons. Super good, we're gonna get that crazy carry. Oh. Oh. Yep. 
Kick him in the chin. Ooh, wow, the, the toe kick hasn't used it at all, so you know, good option to just get that pixel away. Good punish. Yeah, he tries to press the button after that. Black combos, all that damage. Oh, no good read. Wow. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, oh he, he dropped the combo. Who's it? Who's it? Oh, can can This shit. could be it. Is Fergus going to reset the bracket? Yes, he does. My lord, he gets game. away with murder. All right, chat, I think you may have to reevaluate what you're thinking right now because most of you put two for Super Kuma and Fergus has just reset this bracket. <laughs> I'm drop into death. Oh, oh man. Spicy. That was I sick. I love that. Schrodinger just types deserved. I love it when someone just types one word like <laughs> deserved. <laughs> deserved. Easy. Oh, man. Okay, so now we've got a reset bracket. The first person to win three games takes this tournament. Eternal Dragon, Super Akuma is going to be on the back foot right now. What can he do to bring this back and take the tournament from Fergus? Well, I agree with um, Abominable about playing super defensive. Um, he, he did stop jumping so much because there wasn't a lot of like anti-airs after that first round. After the first round, it was like, stop jumping. Mm -hmm. So it is kind of like... Um, just have to keep playing, uh, get the life lead. I'm not saying run away, but make him come in because now when you're trying to commit, because Akuma, him jumping is exposing himself. So you can get not even just like with punished by the sidestepping, which he's been doing. It's also that. But Fergus is, is playing in a complete way. He's not sticking to one game plan. He's not just saying, I'm going to anti air with throws. He's using punch parries. He's scouting lows with hard reads and doing can can. So it's kind of hard for me to say exactly what Super Kuma needs to do because Fergus is covering every facet of the game Round one. and he's playing, he's winning Fight. and he's playing better. It's true. It is very, very true. Fergus is trying to now outpoke Super Kuma. Very kick poke heavy. <laughs> I think one thing you might have noticed is that with Akuma's range being what it is, Fergus can probably throw out a few more buttons than, than Akuma can. We noticed before that when Akuma, Akuma's like one, two punish and a few other things, they don't actually have the range that is ideal for a lot of situations. You need yeah. to be very careful. I remember Super Akuma block was it Matterhorn and wow. wasn't able to find it properly. That was a great parry and Fergus taking that first round. I'm seeing as well, when he when you can't punish a move, obviously you go low because they're like, oh, the move's unsafe, or I missed, I'm going to go low. Fergus is scouting that and he's getting these low parries when he knows he can't punish me because I have a whiff that a weird range or I blocked oh, him. Excuse me, did he just DP into a wall into a combo? That was horrible. Fergus is almost dead. I feel so sorry for him. All right, he's dead now. <laughs> okay. Round three. Oh, man. Fight. Okay, man. Okay, so right. sends it. Gets his combo video. Oh, coming. in the back. Oh, no, he doesn't get the full combo. He, even though Fergus texted, he got the dive kick in the back. Nice, it's one plus two. Nice, he's oh. doing down two at the ball really often. This time he mixed it up. So he was trying to close this out quickly by running towards Super Akuma, but oh, that was the no. worst idea that he could make, but that's a beautiful yes. counter! And he doesn't check him as well, like, he did not expect that. That's the first time Fergus has done that, on stream anyway. <laughs> that last bit's a low. Perfect. Takes him out of the power. Jesus, now he knows how it feels. <laughs> power crush, wall bounce. Oh my god, he's just getting banged up all around the map. One more hit. Oh my god. Okay. Is Super Grimmer gonna let him hit him one more time? Oh no, he's god. not. This oh is my god. god! Okay. This is a this is this is a slaughter. This round was just disgusting. Oh, no, it's not over. Toe tap hit. Oh, oh my god! Do you know what? Do you know what? Do you know when a Super Grimmer done that big combo in the Tekken World Tour finals? That's and good. he got up. <laughs> I don't know what Japanese player it was. Was it Chikorin or something? He did the low kick. 
I think Fergus might have thought about that situation and just did the mid because after that situation, people tried to do the low kick and he low parries it. So I think Fergus was like, I'm just going to go mid then. Straight up, <laughs> just Super Akuma did all this work and then Fergus just wakes up with one button. <laughs> That's it. Someone said it was, was it Cherry Berry Mango? Was it CBM he did that against? For God's <laughs> sake, Fergus. <laughs> oh, that was sick. <laughs> That was a ridiculous round. Like, we was all like, oh, he got beaten around the ring. The, the mm -hmm. chunks on that. The fact that, as you said, Abominable, he done the, um, he finished in the can can because it ended in a low. So as well as eating all that focus damage, he had the regular combo damage. Man, Fergus is just, he's playing too sick right now. He is playing absolutely unbelievably. Akuma makes it very hard to commentate as well because you're like, oh, he's outplaying him. He's beating the crap out of him. Like, you know, oh, he's about to lose. And then you're like, oh, yeah, the other guy just won. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> like, it changes the narrative completely, but oh, <laughs> it's fun man. to watch. Wow. Wow. Well, now Fergus is for the first time in the lead in this tournament. He's now the favorite. Uh, what, is he? Chat, is he the favorite? You lot were voting Super Akuma before the reset. Let me know now. One for Fergus, two for Akuma. Let us know, because right now, I couldn't call it. Fergus looking completely dominant. However, Super Akuma is Super Akuma. He managed to destroy Kalak on the back foot. So, all right, we've got one, two, one, 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 seven. Of course, somebody, somebody timed that man out. I was going to say, like, what two, was I seeing? <laughs> what was I seeing about milk in the chat? <laughs> <laughs> Twitch chat sometimes is incredible. Love you a lot. Fergus is the only person who has not been afraid of these focus cancels. He's just running up to Super Akuma and contesting. It's great. Oh, life battery. Yeah, he's made him scared of that down two. He's bashed in so many uh, Chew Shine lock down twos that now he's getting these mitts for free. <laughs> no, <you don't. laughs> okay. All right, Fergus. He's feeling himself. No block punish. All right, stays on the ground. Doesn't want to get hit in the back with the tech off the wall. Nice. Doesn't get much off it though. Oh, punish. Fergus looking composed. Oh. Never mind, get swift roundhouse kick in the face. <laughs> Very nice and done by Super <laughs> It literally looked like it did. The sound effects on it and the camera angle is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Love it. Good whiff punish. Downstairs, are we going? No, he opts for the O key. Yep. Yeah. That's Good it, whip yeah. punish. One round away from going 2 0 up. Oh my lord. Super clean right now. I was going to say whip punish. Whip punish with a, with a focus attack. Sorry, with a power crush just in case he threw something out. That's the Giga Brain strat right there. Oh! Good. So much work is. He's getting so much out of that move. Nice, he was oh. ready, he was waiting for it. He was just like, you know, whatever you're doing, I'm just gonna wait for this. Chase him down. Nice. Oh. Slap one. one. Slap. <laughs> oh, oh, the castle. Get out of here. Let's go. Oh my god, Fergus is just unbeatable at the moment. Oh my god. Okay, Fergus is one game away from taking ICFC preseason tournament week four currently we are at 343 dollars and 69 cents can we get to 350 for either super akuma or fergus because both of these players deserve some of that cash Let's head over to that page hit the coupon code icfc eu pre4 the number four out of 350 cents to that price but only a few more of you need to do it and we hit 350 which would be insane it would be a great send-off to tekken in 2020 moving into 2021 to the proper full-on tournaments for the icfc let's get it popping everybody if you're enjoying the tournament 
let us know in the chat. Let us know what your favorite part has been so far. Your favorite part may not even have happened yet. It could be Super Akuma reverse sweep from a reset after Fergus has done that. It could be a game that happened in the middle of the tournament. Let us know. Um, and of course, don't forget, you can also contact Tenno Media and follow them on all them social media platforms. You've got twitter.com slash Tenno Media. You've got youtube.com slash Tenno Media and patreon.com slash Tenno Media. Oh, that's right. It's been a really good day of action. Thank you, 568 viewers, you know, for joining. Um, Dan and I, Tunnel Dragon, Abominable, it's been good having all of us on. It's Tunnel Dragon. Did dude, you see it? There's a dude on chat who says they're playing the ad now because they know it's the last match next. And then you're like, Stu, it's been really nice commentating with you. Dan, really nice commentating with you too. This guy's like... Guy's like <laughs> <laughs> I'm so done. I was like, do I carry on? Do I carry on? Like, wow, I'm done. <laughs> this guy's flat hurting. <laughs> right, here we go. Oh god. <laughs> All setups doesn't work out for him. Super Cooper coming out of the block so hard, he's got so much work to do. And he's decided to go out all guns blazing so far. Oh, great wall combo. Some really good pressure. Ground pound. Let's go. Oh, Super Akuma, a good interruption. And another one. Round two. Super Akuma just too busy pressing buttons and Fergus is just staying composed. Beautiful tech crouch. Nicely punished by Fergus. That was a wonderful backplay with the focus attack. Very, very nicely done. Super Akuma going to work the advantage with these wall combos. Are we going to get full carry? Oh, no. Damn. We all wanted to see it. Be yeah. honest. Oh, we of did. course, yeah. <laughs> we see it slating it, but we actually want to see it. I think in Grand Finals, you want to see it, right? Because it's like the most disgusting thing that can ever happen at the final stage. Well, here of the we go, guys. Here we go. No. Oh, he goes the wrong way. But Super Akuma brings it back. Round three. Oh. Fight. Nice sweep. Getting so many of these floats and pickups from Super Akuma trying to jump. <laughs> no fear. Absolutely no fear. Oh, jump over it. Oh, that's going to hurt. Back throw. Oh, oh. Sorry, the challenge hit wasn't a good option. Oh. Fergus has some work to do now. Good block. Oh, but he drops the combo. Fergus is not going to be happy. Oh, my God. Excuse me, what? <laughs> oh, that was horrible. Nice. Great start for Fergus there. But now he's going back against the wall and he's just going to get full combo. Nice. Goes oh, my combo. Lord. That pickup, that reverse pickup. Good dice. Nice. This is all on Fergus to finish this off now. Good throw. Good whiff oh. punish. That is Fergus. a crazy thing to do. He spent it and he's now got no bar. Final round. Fergus could take this or can Super Akuma bring it back? Put himself on the board with one game in the grand finals reset. The wall's there. Oh, he's going to get launched. Yes. Great. Oh, there's the jump over. Everybody in chat. Let's get some hype for both of these competitors right now. Will Fergus be able to take this? Good sweep. Super Akuma on the attack. Double. Sweeps. Oh, no, he's... Oh, he got lucky there. I knew he could punish it. He just went low. Gets caught. Trying to back sway. Here we go. Fergus on the attack. He's feeling himself now. Good Too grab break. Oh, oh, scuffs it. Scuffs it with 12 seconds left. Oh my god. He's got no meter to work oh with. Oh my god, he's, he's, he's going to be it. He's going to hit the wall. 
let's go! Focus takes it three games! Oh my oh god, my that god. was amazing! Yeah, he definitely deserves a round of applause from that, man. That was a... That whole series from his top oh. eight journey we saw was amazing. Fergus, wow. We have a new winner every single week. And we have a new winner that represented a different region every single week. If that isn't a perfect start to the mm. ICFC that in the preseason, I don't know what is. Absolutely. I mean, such variety of characters, such variety of players. Oh, what a top eight we had. Just such crazy, crazy action. <laughs> there you are. Absolute top eight. Absolute incredible top eight. I mean, Fergus taking that. Okay, what? <laughs> yeah. We all was like, what the hell? Ten dollars from Eternal Dragon. Thank you very much. But Space Control with the fifty-six dollars and thirty-one cents. Congratulations to Fergus. Four hundred and ten dollars exact. Not happy about my sixty-nine cents being taken away, but even happier for Fergus. Oh my lord, what an incredible tournament. Oh, that was sick. That was sick. Oh. If you think about Fergus's um, run, so he got into top eight, loser side, 2 1 against Mistress Storm, 2 0 DBP, 2 1 Crossfire, 3 1 Kalak, and then 3 1 Super Akuma, then 3 0 oh Super Akuma. That is an amazing run. And look how stacked this tournament was and Fergus oh. taking it and not just like from day from the first game oh he's the best winning we saw him come back from adversity switch characters he done he didn't do so well with Anna at the start he worked with it Anna was doing sick with him he he was oh my god it was a, like a perfect run in terms of a story of oh you know I need to come back I need to um take this comeback like he got in the lead the first time in the set as well against mm. Super Kuma, EU champion. That is an amazing feat. And that Kunimitsu with the ridiculous streak as well. <laughs> I mean, today, three wins or something crazy. <laughs> today will be a day he won't forget for a long time. That is, you can't ask for a better tournament performance. And uh, just congrats to him. And I'm happy for, for all, the, all of the Irish uh, guys out there as well that have been supporting him and each other. That, that's a great scene and it's well deserved to them too. And I can't wait to see who wins it next time. Last thing I'll say is, oh, I just saw that Fergus lost <clears> to Kalak <throat> to get into top eight 2 zero. So to come back and, and beat him in losers and then to win the tournament, that is, it's, it's, oh man, it's amazing. It's very well done to him. And like I said, to represent him in the Irish scene and himself, it's amazing. Yeah, definitely. Man, well. I mean, I guess we just have to kind of uh, wind it down here, right? I mean, it's been an incredible tournament. We've got $410 in the match arena. Um, one of the hypest top eights of any fighting game that I've seen in 2020, online or offline. Um, <clears throat> I mean, personally, I just want to give a big thank you to, to Tenno and people uh, at VP just for hosting this and putting this on. ICFC is going to be <laughs> amazing as it heads into 2021. Um, everybody behind the scenes, all production, it's been great. Everything's run smoothly. But of course, I want to give a one, uh, another special thanks to uh, ED Eternal Dragon and Abominable for smashing it, basically, and for helping me through this tech and commentary, which I am very new to. So once again, thank you very much for uh, being awesome. It's been an absolute pleasure, Daniel I and Eternal Dragon. It's been, uh, it's been great to be part of ICFC. It's a great addition to the Tekken calendar. And I assume, Eternal Dragon, that we, we're going to have uh, the US coming up soon. Yeah, um, we had Asia earlier. It was EU's turn now. We had an amazing um, tournament and it will be NA. And um, one of the main stories I've seen is um, Glaciating has been really dominating. And I think he's won two tournaments there already or maybe come first and second. So, <clears throat> you know, it's not finished. There's one more tournament. If you guys can stay up to watch that. If not, check the, the VODs uh, tomorrow. And no doubt we're going to see uh, NA with like 5k, just, you know, people having like payments for houses and just like winning tour <laughs> online tournaments. So, <laughs> the, yeah, the last thing that I want to say is shout out to um, Tenor Media and everyone for having us on, the guys behind production. Like I said, they don't get the love when it goes right and when it goes wrong, it's their fault. So follow them. Make sure you follow them on Twitch, guys. Look, Twitter, twitter.com slash Tenor Media, youtube.com slash Tenor Media. Um, patreon.com slash telemedia as well shout out to Dan and I 
done really well. Not a tech and commentator, but honestly, most of the occasion. Now. Yeah, now. <laughs> yeah, honestly, most of the occasion, and he's um great commentating. You know, with with all of you guys, good to be with my boy Stu again, Abominable, back on commentary, and yeah, man, this it's been great. I uh, love you all, and yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna just like sign out here. Hopefully, someone can get us to four twenty. That would be sick. Four twenty on the. On the on the thing, I'm gonna start rambling now. Anyway, <laughs> climb down from bed now, please, dude. Just come down. Come down now. Anyway, just come into my square. Oh, I wish Go. I could. I wish I could hug both of you right now, but you know these lockdown restrictions, mate. Guys, it's been an absolute pleasure. You guys take care and have a fantastic Christmas and enjoy the US coming up soon. Thank you all and take care.